Hey, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bourbon Neophyte. I sure hope you guys are having a great new year. And being that this is the first stream of the new year for me, I just want to make sure I wish everybody a happy new year. And I just want to start off and say thank you to all of my subscribers, supporters uh, for this past year. Um, I was over there kind of lurking on uh, Livewire for about the last hour while I was uh, setting up. And, um, you know, truthfully, just like Mike was saying, and I was listening to him while he was he was going on, myself or Livewire, you know, we can't do this without you and these people that help us do what we do all the time. And um, you're all just terrific in how you help us. And just with your contributions as far as your palettes, how, you know, we all interact with each other and also the support, like he was talking about, even from the other channels. And some of you I know don't actually uh, come on live, but you're in the chat and you are as important as anybody else here. So I just want to start off and say, really appreciate you all. Thank you very, very much for being here and supporting this channel. Also the others on Whiskey Tube. Really do appreciate you all and thanks. So you may have seen the thumbnail that uh, I'm actually going to do a review on the release from Barrel Bourbon, the new year 2023. I have never had a bottle like this before. In other words, I've never purchased one of theirs. I've had different samples that people have uh, passed on to me that I've gotten to try, which I thought were okay, but I just never thought uh, they made me want to run and buy it. Like I've tried the seagrass and uh, I've also tried the uh, uh, limited release one. Uh, I forget the right name for it. And I actually had stuff down, but my uh, iPad decided didn't want to cooperate. So some of my notes are missing. So I have a backup. So every now and then, if you see me staring up, I'm looking at a monitor where I have other notes that's above me. So I am going to be looking at that from time to time so I can keep track of what in the heck I'm doing here because it gets confusing. Because, you know, if I had Shane on here, you know, it'd be easier to keep track of things. Yeah. So I do have people lurking in the uh, back. I'm going to leave them sit there a little bit. I see Shane's there. He's just, you know, he's ready to go. He's got a drink in his hand. That's right. I could see him in the background. So I'm just going to apologize right now to all of you that are in chat. Shane will be here. I'm just telling you right now, he will be here. Um, I don't know if any of you had anything from Barrel before, if you liked it or not. Like I said, I've had a few. I didn't think they were terrible, but I just didn't think it was, uh, I got to run out and buy one. But I got this as a gift for Christmas this year from my wife. She got me that. And you might see another bottle over there that uh, I got, which I'll be doing a review on. Some of you may be looking at it and going, I, I know what that is. That's the that's the Glenmorangi Tale of the Forest. Uh an extremely unique bottle, not only with the juice that's inside, but the artwork that's on it. So we'll get into a little bit of that and probably next week or week after next, I'm trying to plan that one out. But tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to get into uh, this particular bottle that I have right here. Yep, I had to make sure I had the correct one because I just thought, oh, I hope it's not that barrel pick. So you may have seen it, you may have not. I've seen a few things pop up on Instagram lately that people have uh, been trying this. And I definitely tried to make sure I didn't look at anything here over the last few days. Um, but yes, there is some missing because I was drinking this uh, on Big Vic stream last night, this morning, uh, also on Scotch Down Under. And I found it unique in its flavor. Does that make sense to you all? Very unique. So, and I know Cheech has this and Cheech, did you open this last night? I, I missed that beginning part of your stream. I was in and out between that and Big Vicks and then also taking care of the dog because she was not happy with all the fireworks going on. That's for sure. So, you know, really appreciate uh, uh, the feedback here. Let's see. 
Let me just get something up here since I do not have my, except for some reason the iPad just decided to freeze and I just did not want to play around with it. So let me just pop something up here. So with this particular bottle here, some of you may know, some of you may not know that it is a uh, range of different aged bourbons from five to 10 years being the oldest that's in here. It has a distillate from many states. So Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Wyoming, uh, New York, Maryland, and Texas. So when I saw that just before the stream, that triggered something in my head because of what I was tasting before. So anyway, it's 113.5 proof uh all aged in American white oak barrels. So we're going to give this thing a, a shot here in a minute. I'm going to pour some and uh, we're going to see really now after about my fourth pour of this since the, the uh, New Year's officially at midnight, uh, I'm going to let you guys know what I really think about this. Let's just see. Okay. That's what I want to know. Unique is a very good word for this particular bottle because there were some uh, there were some notes in there that I couldn't quite pick out. And one, well, there's actually probably two that surprised me, but one I did pick out. And when I say it, I want to know if you picked it up, uh, Cheech. I'm not going to say it right now until I get a little pour going here. Um, but I'm going to... So there is some in here, and I forgot I poured this in the wee hours of the morning, and so I actually was drinking some of it this morning on Scotch Down Under. So this is it here that it's been, it's opened up well. I mean, it's really opened up well. So time in a bottle, I will tell you, is going to do this wonders. But I'm going to pour uh, a little more just out of this because... And we're going to give it a shot here for a second. Let me just get this in there because there was a, there was something that it, once I read what I read to you and learned where some of the distillate came from, things started to, started to come together for me. I was like, oh, okay, 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 okay. But let me just switch and say this, that unique Unique is the word, that's for sure. Unique is the word. So let me just say, it, it really is your your what you would expect of a bourbon. In other words, when you first take that initial nosing on it, you've got vanilla, you've got caramel um, right up front. It's there. There's There's no doubt about it. Um, but there was a very, very slight, but I caught it right away, wisp of smoke, not peat, smoke. And I wasn't sure if I had washed this particular glen out good enough when I was drinking some peated scotch. So I frou fruit it and it's like, yeah, no, that can't be. But I had it in a totally different glass after this, because I forgot about this sitting on the desk and I got it again. So I was like, wow. I mean, there's, there's tons of sweetness in here and a creaminess that I just can't uh, quite, I couldn't, you know, at first could not quite put my finger on the, the smoke note on there is what kind of got me. And I'm like, holy smokes, this is, this is something else. I mean, for sure. Yeah, it is something else. So on the palate, though, was really what kind of set me back a little bit on my heels because I was like, there's something in there. What is this? What is this? So then when I found out about the Texas, like I said, I'm like, aha. So what I'm going to do, too, is, is that's why I brought this over. I'm going to pour a little bit of my... Uh, Still Austin, because there was a very strong similarity to some tasting notes in there. 
So that being said, let me let me take a sip of this and, and we're going to we're going to move on here just a tad to get into this. Mm. You know, it's you you they call it cast strength. I don't think 113 in my opinion is cask strength. However, I think it's a good proof for this this particular bourbon. There's definitely your classic caramels. There's there's vanilla in here. Um, there is smoke. Believe it or not, it is in there. You don't really have to search hard for it, but you, you do got to look a little bit for it. But it has some smoke on there. Um, a cream to it, and I don't know how to say it, but there's a creaminess to it, and I just can't figure out the flavor. Um, that it was, but it, it's very creamy and 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 balanced well with the sweetness, the cream. Um, uh, there's a slight cherry note on this thing. I like the spice that I'm getting on the finish. It has some viscosity to it. And Cheech, I don't know if you caught that note of smoke uh, when you were uh, sipping on yours at all. I'm not sure, but uh, I'm like, man, this is this is very, very unusual to get that on this. So I'm thinking it's it's just from the char because I can't think of what else is going to give it that 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 smokiness to it. Um, the other thing that I picked up on there is a is a dark note, like a a dark cherry, something along that that line. Uh, it was just it's different, but. Overall, I, I think that this is a good whiskey. I think uh, if you can pick this thing up for around, I don't know, I don't even know what the price is because I didn't buy this. So I'm going to say it's under a hundred bucks or it's probably a hundred bucks. I don't say 89 bucks. I, I would tell you it would be a buy. I think it's, I think it's pretty darn good. And with some time in the bottle, um, it's really going to, uh, I think it's really going to do well. And I'm impressed with it, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this opens up here over the next few weeks whenever I just kind of leave it just relax there in the bottle for a bit. Um, I think it's a good pour, but like I said, there, there's, there was a few things in there that I, I just couldn't quite put my, my fingers on. So hold on, I'm going to highlight this because Cheech... Under there. So it definitely has something much older in that blend. I don't know. I maybe it is minerality. Now that you mention that, and I'm thinking about it, maybe that is minerality from there because I was leaning more towards the taste I was getting is almost like an elderberry or something like that, kind of like something or a juniper berry, kind of like what I was getting out of this. And the only reason why it came to my head was because of the Texas whiskey that was in there. So, okay, I, I can I can give you that now that once you mentioned Dickel, because uh, I'm thinking about that. And yeah, there could be some minerality to it, but it's quite unique. But in this class here, I'm going to go ahead and do something I don't normally do in a minute because I'm going to bring a couple of people on here shortly. I'm going to add a couple of drops of water to it because... The things I'm hearing, and you all know I don't generally put water in anything unless it's in this glass, but it's supposed to really open up some good fruit notes in this. So we are going to try that, and I do have a special device to measure that appropriately to uh, see if it actually does bring anything out in there. But while I've got these guys sitting there and I got one stuff in his pie hole, I could see it right now. I'm going to bring him up first because he's been waiting the longest. <laughs> hey, I'm see, just he, got his, coffee, he, got his, he got his old man Joe shot glass right there. <clears throat> what? That's right. That's right. And then we've got the we've we've got the other half of live wire whiskey. Mr. Shits. Cheers. The, cheers. Usually, cheers usually a sleep hat. What's that? 
the normally asleep half by this time. Well, I think you've been on a roll lately there, Adam. Let me just say. I mean, I mean, I try. I try. I mean, other people may not notice it, but I notice it. Thanks, Anthony. Appreciate yeah, it. I, Dude, I I'm it. impressed. You've had some high proof shit and you're still conscious. I'm impressed. Dude, I did have a hazmat thing tonight. Sure. Two hazmats. Two hazmats for sure. So that's what I'm thinking, Cheech. The Texas whiskey is the influence that I am getting that's giving it, and let me just, just use that term again, the uniqueness in this pour. Because I'm getting, in my mind, on my palate, some of the notes I'm getting are very reminiscent of the notes I get on a Texas whiskey, particularly the Still Austin and the Iron Root. So that being said, once I saw that it had Texas distillate in there, then it started to make sense on the couple of pours I had before this one you see me drinking now. And so like I said, I have another one in there and I have my measuring device and I'm going to put a, literally when I say a couple of drops of water in this baby, I'm going to put a couple of drops of water in there and see if that fruit pops like I'm told it will. So I, I don't know what we're going to see here, but overall, um, I think it's a, it's a decent pour for the money. I would recommend people, uh, if you can get a pour of it somewhere, go ahead and try it. If you want to take a leap of faith, I'd go ahead and buy it. Um, once this opens up a little bit for me, if I like it, it'll be on the list to consider to get a backup because once these are gone for 2023, they're gone. It's not like you're going to. So this is, this is the uh, barrel, right? The barrel. Yes. This is the barrel, their New Year's release. New Year. nice. Yeah, this is nice. the New Year's release. I got it for Christmas. My wife uh, had gotten it for me. And like I said, I, it wasn't even on my radar because some things that just, I don't know, they were good. But eh, until I got the barrel pick that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago from Total Wine. And that was just a cherry chocolate bomb. And like I told Shane, I compared that with Christmas from Storytime. I mean. Christmas had way more chocolateiness to it, but wow, this one, the the pick, shit, that was good. Yeah. Bottom line, that was good. So that kind of changed my outlook on barrel itself. So anyway, that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pour a little uh, water in here. I've got a special bottle here and I have a very scientific right, Kentucky water. Pardon me? Is that Kentucky water? Uh, <laughs> hold on. I think it's close. I, I think it said Los Angeles County. Yeah, oh, that's, Los Angeles that's super close. Dude. Municipal Water Authority. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I have, this, uh, I have this special device to measure water with. Yeah. Yeah. Works perfectly. Because I don't know where my pipette is or even my my dropper. I, I have no clue. But I am literally going to put just a, oh shit. Well, so much for a drop, but I'd say there's probably about three drops of water in there and that little bit that might be too much, but that's okay. It's sitting in that glass that I just poured. Put this back on so I do not spill it everywhere because I will. Cheers, David Bass. And, and uh, we're going to let that do its thing in here for a minute. Uh, let me just set that right back <laughs> down. I'm going to save Andrew, a little bit in here. I know where you live. And if you've got Flint water, you specifically hunted that down. <laughs> he did hunt that shit down if he's got that. <laughs> and it will work. I guarantee it will work. That will give it a note that no one will believe. That's for sure. And I'm going to pour a little still Austin in a glass just because, one, I can, but two, I just, I just want to see. And then I, I'm going to use a, a special Glen I got right here from Deathless Dogs. I'm going to use mm -hmm. that thing. And I will have to agree with Dan. I did try the Gatsby and it was all right. But I'm glad I turned my bottle down. I had a chance to buy one at like 250. 
I think I think that's the one I sent you the text on, Adam. I talked to you about it. I said, hey, what do you think? Blah, 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 blah. And you said, it's good, but eh. Yeah. And I'm so glad now after I actually tasted it, I didn't get it. I mean, it's not terrible, but I found it to have a bitter finish okay. is what I found on that. It had sweetness overall on the, on the beginning. I, I, I was like, I, at first it was okay. The nose, the nosing was good. It wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't like, wow, it was pretty much what I expected. The finish just, just wasn't, just wasn't, wasn't there on that Gatsby. So I'm, I'm thankful yeah. that, uh, he saved me a couple of hundred bucks and, and sent me that and speak of the devil. Bam. <laughs> there he is. Yes. And over on LiveWire, that's exactly why I said I bought the bottle, was to send it out to people so they don't have to spend that you fucking know, to much. Put the money into it. That yeah. It, that it's going well, to. I don't know if you heard, but when I had a chance to get it, I text Adam and says, hey, what do you think? This price, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You know, and he basically said it's good, but eh, not worth the price, which I yeah. was already thinking that too. I mean, the Remus 5 is a thousand times better. All right. 800 times <laughs> right. but um the yeah this just it's okay let me just say this I, right I, it's okay if it if it's your wheelhouse if it's your jam if that's what you like hey go get it <laughs> you know yeah it's help. definitely not bad whiskey it's just not worth the hype and, and money and, and you know i've said this before hype sometimes gives us false hope so you buy a bottle thinking, oh, my God, it's going to be Nirvana. Yep. You know, your foot's going to tap. You're going to be living large. You're going to be happy. And eh. so I really try to avoid that hype and ask people or talk to people and, mm -hmm. and get an honest opinion without that fluff. So right. in here... I uh, poured some of the, the barrel and I added some water, which more than the two drops, I'm going to say it's probably three, maybe four. But they said there's supposed to be a lot more fruit notes. So this is the one that's probably 24 hours old sitting in the glass. So it's had some good time to open up and I've had quite a few sips out of it. Doesn't seem to be different on the nose. Let's see the palate. Hmm. Well, I will say it got a little thinner, but I know that's the water. Um, I'm going to say yes on the fruit. I'm going to have to have another sip, but it did get thinner because of the water. Um, I added more than I wanted to by accident, but I, I think, yes, they are correct that that fruitiness is, is, is coming out as becoming a little more prominent with a splash of water. Hmm. Let me put it. Let me just put a little cap on that sucker and let the original glass sit along with that. I may like it without the water better, but um, yeah, it, there's there's definitely change. Everybody knows it does change. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not one to say if it's better or not, but. As far as the legs go, and I'm looking at the two, they still seem to be consistent, even though I added water to one. They're thick. They're slow going down the sides, evenly spaced. So, I don't know. I, like I said, overall, I, I think it's good. My opinion, uh, the water may have helped it a little bit as far as bringing out a little fruit note. But in general, eh. But I'll get back to it here in a little bit after we chit-chat with the people here on the stream and in chat and so on and so forth mark glad to see you can make it over here hey anthony so uh 
How'd your grandson do with that stogie? He's doing okay. You know what? He's a college boy and learning his way, but uh, we learned the rule right off, right? Hey, listen, man, I got uh, 126 bottles on that shelf. Don't you dare put water in any of them. <laughs> what you want? Yeah, listen, if you sneak them when I'm asleep, don't you dare put water in them. So I think we're okay. Did he, uh, did he, didn't turn green from that cigar, did he? No, I, I think, uh, I think he'll be all right. He, he enjoyed a, uh, a Macadudo. He also enjoyed a, uh, crowned heads. So something light, uh, both Connecticut's except for the Macadudo of his Maduro. Um, I, I, I thought we talked about that was, that was the, uh, real sweet. Maduro. Yeah. 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 So yeah, he's coming right along, but, uh, you know, it's kind of an unusual deal to be, you know, uh, I'll just say this. When you get my age, it, it's just unusual to look across the bar here and see your grandson sitting there. And <laughs> mm -hmm. A cigar and a glass of whiskey, but uh, there you go. <laughs> it's what it is. Oh. <laughs> 124, Mike? Wow. Okay. I, I honestly do not know the price on them. Um, they could be a hundred dollar bottle. And then of course, yeah, that's right. You guys got 20% tax. Wow. Jeez. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. still low tax compared to us. Well, that's nothing compared to you. Yeah. <laughs> nothing compared to you down under. That's for sure. That is for sure. But I'm going to sip mean, a little bit of this, uh, still Austin. Just, well, just still... our import taxes uh about thirty-two dollars for an eighty proof bottle now. Because it just went up yesterday. Uh yesterday. Yeah, it's yesterday for you, it's today for us. Goes up goes up the first of the year and goes up the first of July every year. Oh really goes up goes up twice a year. So it's now probably about $94 per alcoholic per liter. And those people are still in office, huh? <laughs> we changed government, but they didn't change the tax rate, rating for it. Or put a stop to it, at least, so it doesn't go up. I'd just like it to actually come back down to where it used to be. It's not much different than America. We started here in Indiana to pay for the Colt Stadium 11 years ago. <laughs> they said three years ago taxes to pay it would uh, satisfy it. We're still paying it 11 years later. Yeah. So well, that's hey, cheers to Chris, cheers to Dan, cheers to Shane. Hey, spe hey guys, happy new year! <laughs> happy new year, Mark. Cheers, Mark. Yeah, it, uh, they uh, basically, if I think that it's bad for um, alcohol, tobacco taxes, even worse. We get it the worst. Oh, no, 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 no. See, you guys pay, what, $5 for a pack of, say, 25s or 50s? Cigarettes? For cigarettes? Oh, oh no. Hell it's, no. <laughs> well, that's what we saw in Kentucky in, when we were there, it was like about $7 for a pack of 25s or something. Chris, you're not wrong. You know, no, Chris, you're not wrong. There yeah. are certain substandard uh, sweep off the floor barrels from uh, whatever, and they pack those up. And, that, and those do sell for six yeah. five, six fifty a pack. You're right, right. Yeah. But that exact same product here is sixty five dollars. Mm. That's that's why when we came back into Australia with the excess alcohol, they just went yeah. See ya. They're more interested in the tobacco tax. They make more money on that. Hmm. Wow. Well, and, and they generally get people coming in with more because it's uh, the free uh, the tax free level is two packets, whereas it used to be two cartons. So ten packs in a carton. Mm -hmm. So they then dropped it down to two packs. So fifty cigarettes. It seems the last four years America's been feeling the pain around tobacco and whiskey on uh most specifically on on uh, youtube but you know we seem to be weathering it fine with our lobbyists here and there but 
it's uh, it's gotten outrageously expensive and very inconvenient as to what you can share, what you can do, what you can say in there about whiskey. I think you know that though, Chris. You probably you probably pretty gonna, much right. You go yeah, there today. You know that it gets to be a pain in the ass. Uh, to be honest with you, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, big cigar smoker, and you know cigars haven't haven't really. Uh, uh, done any damage or 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 um, harm to anybody that's uh, smoking cigars on a regular basis, but they they feel they feel for the kids and the young people. They so they regulate them to the degree that it makes you feel kind of uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's 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 just the way society is is moving in general and. Um, I was listening to another channel around the holiday and I, I, I don't remember the name and, and for some reason it did not say, well, I wasn't on my iPad. So, um, but one of the discussions they were talking about were the taxation uh, of different spirits, different tobacco products and its effect. And yes, to a degree there's health effects, but also, there's other ill effects, uh, you know, to the whole thing. But I'm still a firm believer moderation is is the key. To oh, just I was going to say overrated. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Hey, Anthony. <laughs> moder- no, you're right, Anthony. Moderation is the key. Uh, that That is how you balance it out. But you got to have enough people to uh, convince the government that that moderation is honest. Well, it's it. It usually people think it's the majority that for that move the needle. In most cases here, it's the minority that move the needle, but the majority doesn't want it. But the majority isn't the loudest voice. A lot of these kids that buy cigars today, they want to be as cool as Dan, right? That's yeah. What, yeah. Right? They yeah. want to. Cool like Dan. So they yeah, keep trying. Uh, that's right. They smoke a cigar for all the wrong reason. They don't <laughs> and it. They can't discern any of the flavors of it. But they're smoking a cigar, and uh, the young folks today are dictating what it is that uh, some of us are adults have to deal with as we balance out this generation and probably future generations as to what we're able to buy and smoke. I get it. It's, but if I go back to my dad and my granddad, same shit, right? I remember well, Dan when I was 19, right, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same shit. Yeah. It, well, you know, I don't consider, I don't consider the, the uh, Swisher Sweets a cigar. <laughs> that most I see these kids go to the store and buy in the in oh the yeah they're putting they're, they're just putting in weeds in, they're putting weed in those that's, yeah that's exactly well here in Vegas you don't have to do that no they but still do it they still like rolling really. blunts and yeah you know. exactly they 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 yeah. don't do that but yeah but I'm uh, in generally you you get the trend of that and I get it that's the trend mm-hmm. it's not made up of two of five people on this chat it's mm-hmm. it, I'm sorry, on, on this live stream, it's made up of hundreds of thousands of people and how they're impacted by cigar. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Good on you, Mike. <laughs> but, you know, that's it is. It's just the way things are going. And we have to let somebody else on because, you know, without her, this would not be the stream. Michelle. How are you, Michelle? Michelle. Hey. Oh my gosh! How wow, are you are you outside know? the bar. I don't You're think I've ever yeah. seen this. I am. View. I was looking okay. at that. I'm like, where did? Where are you? Okay, so here's the. Can you hear me? Because I'm on my phone. I'm not yeah. usually on my phone. So you guys got a new no. vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. So Will is in the bar, and I came out here because I just wanted to say hi. Oh. I'm actually in my garage. Yeah, we can see that because <laughs> we don't it. think you'd park the car in. in <laughs> With the bar, so what, that's not what, even my car. Where did you guys trade in? No, so actually, my daughter got in a wreck, so she has my Cadillac, and oh. I'm driving a company car. Fair so, enough. Fair yeah. enough. Well, aren't you so nice to her? That 
Look, <laughs> what kind of mom is that, right? She's like, hey, you drive my Cadillac, like, I'll drive the Kia. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, she came all the way from Twin Falls, which if you don't know, it's about two and a half hours from where I am, in an I ice know. storm. She made it all the way here in four blocks from my house, hit some black ice and wrecked her car. Oh. It, oh. And she had to be back at seven o'clock in the morning for her brand new job at the firehouse. Oh, so I'm no. like, just take my car. That is wow. so sweet of you. I hear that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, what that's a, a mom thing. Mom. Like, I'm not going to let well, her see, ruin her new job. You get, a, you get an Uber. Fuck it. <laughs> so, she's go. not old Uber. enough. She's not old enough for an Uber. She's 19. <laughs> what? She's all good. I mean, your daughter's all good. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't get hurt. Right. Her car is fucked, but she didn't she's get hurt. Yeah. Ah. That, she's 19 strange. years old, and she's saving lives. And, I mean, if anybody she's else bad. deserves my caddy, it's her. So, there you go. so what, what, what's, she, what's she doing? She gotten into the fire department. So she's an EMT right now. She got a full-time job as an EMT. She's in her last semester of paramedic school at 19 years old. Great. Wow. Yeah. Super so, proud mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now my other two awesome. kids are assholes, but she's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've all got those. And hey, one out of three ain't bad. Mm -hmm. Right? You did all right. We're grading on a curve. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're going to tell your husband that he's got to contact Lil. Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone's trying to uh, start figuring out this year's trip. Oh, oh. okay. That's right. Fair. It sounds like this Lil. is this year. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. She just she turned around to me and said, "We're adding Utah and Colorado and." Yeah. And, and Basically, it's going to be a yeah. two month long trip this time. Right? Let's now do it's going to be a two month long trip. Okay, well, then I she shouldn't. I, I basically said we could always take eight weeks. Well, she shouldn't contact him then because he doesn't plan shit. She shouldn't contact me. Yeah, I was going to. I think it's funny that she would want to contact Will. <laughs> well, we I'm can't exactly third, contact I, Michelle I, about something which is supposed to be for Michelle. Uh, <laughs> I don't know oh. why, based on experience, I'm absolutely certain. So I hope you're coming to South Carolina. Maybe. That's all I'm hoping. We'll see. We it got real quiet. That's awkward. <laughs> when, 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 <laughs> awkward. <laughs> no yeah, shame. No, when, when no not, shame. We're not, flying, we're not flying to Charlotte again, that's for sure. Um, Shane, <laughs> you're coming to Idaho, and then they're coming to Idaho. I, I, hey, I will do that, too. Shane does not go to Idaho anymore. Those yeah, I love well, Idaho. that is why Will gave his room away. I'm just saying. <laughs> Will just said oh. Shane is the hoe. Yeah, no, he you give away. Well. Shane is the hoe. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put the hoe in Idaho. Let's go. Shane is Idaho. <laughs> How do I know that's true? Idaho, no. Shane the hoe. Yeah. Shane the hoe. He's the stupid hoe. <laughs> okay. I, I gotta tell you guys, I'm sitting I'm sitting out here in the garage and, and I can hear my husband on a back stream with someone and I just keep hearing my name. I mean, what the fuck, right? Yeah. <laughs> is he on with is he on with stall right now? Um yeah, he's on the the, the back yeah, yeah. stream because Michelle, he's, Michelle, you're kind of a big deal. Big deal. I know. Yeah. He's, I you know what? When, right. Okay, Adam, when when Stahl said Michelle will come on, everybody got so excited about William that like my feelings got hurt. <laughs> we can work on a bit. Come on, here, Michelle. So. You know, look, know they shouldn't get hurt. For will just we I mean my, my husband's we, a big deal. He's, he's a big deal. Pretty, he's a pretty amazing dude. He's pretty great. Yeah. Well, well he, he does have he does have quite an exceptional deal to height ratio. <laughs> he's he's got good choice in women, I'll say that. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, you might be a big deal. <laughs> I'm kind of an asshole, so if he puts up with me, I mean you I know think you're kind of a big deal. Don't cut yourself short. <laughs> That's right. I mean, you're already short. Just don't you're saying you didn't need to fuck that up. 
I'll be honest, my husband puts up with so much shit with me that um, I got to love him. However. Yeah, that's why Will and I get on so well. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to lie, though. Honestly, Chris, you might be onto something because the medical stuff, it's hard for the man, right? And I mean, I, I, my I, husband I, I, put I, I, up I with. From somebody. I mean, look, look, look what she did to me, you know, my name, uh, my yeah. name. Oh, I yeah. didn't do jack shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. But we're, it may. We're fixing to see a beat down you get off yeah. stream. on live stream. It's yeah. going to be awesome. Mel, I'm really <laughs> hoping yeah. that you kick his ass so I can live vicariously through you. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, it's pretty much about yeah. the only time that she'd be able to. I'm just I'm just waiting for a shoe to come flying in and hit you in the face or something. No, she'll just do it right there. She's right next to it. What is she? Is she George Bush? Yeah. I can, hey, can, I, can, I gotta I can, say I, this. I can fend her off. Anthony. Not my you got kind. a shillelagh? You're ready to go. <laughs> Anthony, yeah. can we do one thing? Yes. Before I, I jump off the stream, I want to do one thing. Yes. I, I met you in Vegas. I got to know a lot of people in Vegas. Most of them are on this stream. A lot of people know my history of 2022. Can we all raise a glass to 2023 with good health fuck and yes. lots of fun and fuck this shit? We're going to have a great time. Yeah. Well, yes. 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 I don't ever want to have to see Will sprint across the room and catch you again. Don't ever want to see yeah. that again. <laughs> Me that was either. terrifying. Don't bottle chug uh, hazmat. Terrifying. No. No, um, Shane, just so you know, you are the only person in Whiskey Tube that ever saw that. And I felt so bad that you had to no, watch no, look, that. I felt bad. I felt bad because I was like, wow, no one should ever have to experience that. And thank God you've got a husband like Will who yeah. on the fucking spot had you covered like i've never seen you move so fast and so act i was just we were just talking next thing i know will's like boom got you i was like that's that's hmm. unreal never seen the that stress way. the stress that that man endured for so long just always waiting for me to pass out without any warning um like a year of that was he for loves sure. me. He loves for me. Sure. He's great. I wish I wish that kind of love for everyone. For mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. And cheers 2023. Not having to deal with yes. that shit no more. Bring mm -hmm. that shit in. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. On an upper note. On an upper note. <laughs> well, and that's where Lil got really good news for the end of 2022. So hell yeah. Yeah. Well, so on that note, uh, Chris. I'm going to have to talk to your wife about uh, hair and boobs. We're going to have to talk about it. Can I be in that yeah. conversation? I just yeah. want to listen. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to participate other than I just want to listen. I just want to listen and or what? Was it hair and boobs? She just wants the visual aid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah as long as it's not hairy boobs. No. Yeah, I have you hairy <laughs> boobs, hair and boobs. Oh, then I'm, I'm out. Did, did she say let me, no. <laughs> let me <laughs> just interject. <laughs> let me interject and just warn everybody: I am not responsible for where this stream goes. <laughs> I'm just, the, I'm just the host, you know. <laughs> These I'm just, are being sorry, sorry, Anthony. This just, just Anthony, crowd on this stream. just happens. My people. apologies, buddy. Okay, it, it so Anthony, happens. the the reason I, I I jumped in your stream was from uh, Las Vegas. I freaking had so much fun with you in the little bit of time we had. Yeah, I met so many time. people. Awesome yeah, we didn't it really spend too much time. time with Anthony. I met I so many people, and there was so much going on. And there really Anthony was. was there really was, and there Anthony really was. was like, "I feel for you. Can I do anything? Uh, let's go have fun." And he was just like, "I really love your aura." I mean, not to be like one of those aura weird people, but mm -hmm. I loved your aura. Oh, you mean like your sign, you know. That guy is fucking. Please, weird. for the love of God, I, I just, don't bring I up signs. I just sign. thought it was great that Anthony took us to a um, a liquor store in Vegas that had a uh, an, an an open uh, yeah shop out. I didn't get upper. to go. 
No, I didn't get to go. No, Fuck that. You were, you were at the pool. <laughs> I was. Yeah, I get. I get what you mean, though, Michelle. I feel like Anthony has a very calming presence when you're. I. I. I, It's one of those people. Like I didn't spend a lot of time with Anthony, but it's all of a sudden you feel like you missed out. Mm -hmm. I missed out on getting to know him better. Um, We visited a little bit at the bottle share, and but I just feel like we we have to meet again. Like, but we spent a heap of time in your your hotel room. You mean when it's not as hot as Satan's asshole? (laughs) Yeah. Mm, Well, I don't. I don't mind the heat. I I was in Vegas. I miss you, Vegas. Now, don't you, Michelle? That goes beyond the statement. Michelle, Michelle. Next year we're doing like end of October, early November, probably. There you go. Well, yeah, we were on. I lived in Vegas. I'm Vegas anytime. I don't care. That shit was like 110 degrees in yeah, the Michelle shade. Michelle was at the it's pool dead. just fucking partying it up. Yes. <laughs> getting, getting my hey. fiance drunk AF. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All day over 100. All day. It was it was oh. 115 for three of the days. That what we the there. hell are you drinking, Dustin? Arctic Panzerwolf. Dude, right you back on that again? Wow. Props wow. to Dustin. He was he was live last night and this morning with Ken. Like he was he was he was on that Vic stream that jumped into Ken's stream. Fucking Dustin was partying it up for New Year's. Yeah, the, the sad thing is I was actually I felt sober enough to actually go drive and get breakfast and then get on Ken's stream. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I literally I was like, enough. I feel pretty sober. So I went walked to my car and like which is not that close because I live in an apartment, so there's a parking garage I had to go into. And I'm like, I'm not, you're not wrong. And Someone I was like, you know, Ginger Wolf was not doing their job. I'm good. Like, I'm good. Enough. I'm good. <laughs> if okay, you don't know, like to... you got pushed Wait. in the balls after drinking that. Then it doesn't live up to its name. The key is. Can like, I ask a really out. stupid question? One drink I'm a, I'm a, not actually getting you drunk. Always, Michelle. You oh, don't I have, have a stupid questions, Michelle. Michelle, hey, go I ahead. Have, um, I've never like honestly. I know this sounds like stupid, but I've never done this from my phone, and I can't see chat. So oh, yeah, how no, do that's I? That's not unusual. No, you've you've got to go generally to the mm-hmm. more icon down in, on your, your thing to switch to chat or, or press the chat button Yeah, and it'll change screen, but you can only see, like I'm yeah, on the iPad I've only got So if I hit those. chat then I can't see you guys No, that's right It's that's right. right. Oh, which is, oh, that which sucks. is an improvement It's an improvement Which, which yeah. is why I've got my <clears throat> iPad on my lap and I've got the stream up on the TV in front of us uh, on YouTube All right. Well, I've never it. done this from my phone. Like real, I'm learning. I really have a face for radio. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and we probably here all have a voice for does print. Not need, well. be, not need to be seen at all. No. 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 Whereas, yeah. whereas right. Andrew Andrew Chance has got the voice for radio. Yes. Mm. Although I will Andrew say Anthony Chance has got the voice for pornography. Print. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, who does? That's true. Andrew, Andrew Chance. Chance. I feel like Andrew Chance could tell me about Ford Truck Month, and I'd go buy one. You know, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. I was kind of thinking Dan. Like Dan is like mellow cello. Dan is you, mellow. But did you? Did you, you really have, haven't heard? Yes, did Andrew you spend Chance. time at, uh, with Andrew? I mean, I'm not saying yeah. they're a pornography. I'm just saying, like, I could go to sleep listening to Dan's voice yeah. in a platonic yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Any Andrew and I can just talk to each other. Something you're like, okay. I'm interested. Dan <laughs> has assertion is in his voice. It's, okay. Andrew has that like convincing part of his voice. You're listening mm-hmm. to it, you're like, oh, oh okay. Yeah, Dan yeah, yeah. should do voiceovers <laughs> for <laughs> a lot of stuff. I, I would love to. That's easy yeah. money. A- Andrew speaking. could convince you as to Dan. Look into that. World War II. I have a friend like, that does right. Actually. That's right, exactly. And speaking of Andrew Chance, look who pops up there in chat. That's right. No. Say their name Andrew. three times. A- oh, don't have to say his name like three Andrew, times. Andrew was holding court at one stage in, in our apartment with everyone just outside the kitchen because everyone was just getting drawn to his voice. Yep. <laughs> but in Vegas. Mm-hmm. So Dan, okay, so you guys Dan said is the hit David chat. Attenborough. Of the U.S. What the fuck? <laughs> the David right. Attenborough of the U.S. 
to talk about snails or something. <laughs> Go ahead, Michelle. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. No, I was trying to figure this out without my computer. I hit chat and nothing happened. You're not yeah, missing the, much. Yeah, you're not missing much. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah no, it, it's all good. James oh, wait, I see it now. Shit. Ben Demon yeah, Hunter. Uh, ben Demon Hunter thinks I'm plastered. Okay, yeah, now I'm here. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's all good. you didn't. You Actually, did not I've see been... the Boy Hill come out. That's when Michelle gets plastered. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've been sick for three days. I missed New Year's. Oh, that, that I went sucks. to bed at ten o'clock on New Year's. So I slept then Michelle all day. <laughs> Michelle uh, didn't make it round to our apartment. I think after. Um, the uh, trip to oh, no, she did it. Her uh, and Kathy Joe was supposed yeah. to come. Yeah. After they what? after they went to Thunder from down under, they didn't quite make it back to our place to meet hey, up with anybody. Tell it Lil. Oh no! She's, um, she's after... going to speak for this stream. She needs to make a presence. After uh, <laughs> Thunder down under. <laughs> show up. Uh, um, after Mike, Thunder. Uh, sorry. sorry, Shane. Direct message. <laughs> So Sorry. after Lil, after Thunder Down Under, uh, Will was sick. So I went home because I didn't want him to be alone. And he oh. wasn't. We were in the next room. I mean, you got to stroke the hair and be like, you got to be the wife. I, I was going to send Shane over for that. He's oh, never get I sick. He, I'm sick like, all the time. <laughs> I'm sick all the time. He doesn't get sick. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't. Either. I might, I mean, I might feel I a, little, a little sick if my girl was at the Thunder from down under, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they were hot. Oh, they were hot as Them big hunky boys out there, you know. I mean, they're I, uh, all gay, but they and, were hot as shit. And, and, yeah, but, and it doesn't matter but, where the fire gets to just where it comes home. When That's right. The, the, they found out that Lil was actually Australian, and uh, we live not probably 5K away from half where they grew up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was they didn't grow up. When I saw the pamphlet for the Thunder for Down Under, I yeah. literally was this close. No, I'll be honest. Did it move? They, they're actors. I used to, okay, for a moment, for a moment, like split second in Vegas, I did costumes for Thunder Down Under. No. Not they, a little were those wallabies or were they kangaroos in their pants? Mm, they both. Oh, wow. But uh, we always. Or wombat, um, actually, we right? always gave the oh, best costume. Oh, no. That would accentuate yeah. the stuff. Yeah, the okay. stuff. Right. And these guys came in like they swapped. They weren't always there. they swapped it out. They bigger for this. If it's a big party, I don't know. Where really? would you say those guys uh, were made of the right stuff, though? Yeah. Uh, the right stuff. I'll be honest. The they were mostly. They were most. I mean, okay. This is odd to say because I don't want to make derogatory. I think that most women that go there want to see a straight man. They oh. are not. They are mostly gay, which is awesome because in Australia. It yeah. doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. And I hear so much derogatory remarks about that. <coughs> well, Cliff all right, had I'm, a good time with it all. I'm shutting up now. <laughs> oh, I'm Cliff shutting up. Having a great time. We no, have, as we all know, Clifton, Clifton, and I <coughs> love this shit. There was penises <laughs> in our face, and they were massive. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, let, let's be real. When it comes to paying to see naked women, men pay for that. And when it comes to seeing naked men, men pay for that I'll too. I'll pay for, yeah. for both. Like, I mean, me, you're not wrong, Dustin. Yeah, I'll I mean, pay like, for both. Let's be a lot real. Of guys like packing like they're, like they're from the mid south. Women are beautiful. <laughs> yes. They have beautiful <laughs> bodies. Men are beautiful. They have beautiful bodies. Yeah, However, 
uh, some of those guys had some help. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, they weren't from the mid south. The, the woman, yeah, the no. the, uh, the middle aged lady down in front of you guys seemed to have a much better time. I would agree. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She wasn't middle aged. She was old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was. I'm middle aged. She was old as fuck. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, hey. Okay, I can say that because she was so awful. She stole our seats, and I had to have her removed. Lil oh, yeah, is like, did. yeah. Lil's like, I don't want to be rude. I'm like, I'm not gonna be rude. I'm just gonna be assertive. That's right. You probably you don't want to sit on the seat after Pay for what there. you pay for. You That's get right. what you pay for. <laughs> That's right. Oh, they were those other girls. Bitch, get in the back. <laughs> she was so mad. Yeah. She was so mad. Well, hey, your ticket said one thing. My seat. Her ticket definitely said another. She so was so really, mad. Didn't you find it seat. odd that Anthony was like front row? Like, <laughs> No. No. Anthony picked no. his place and had a great time. Great time. I love great it. Time. I would have been front row and had a great time. It's all good. I, I just like the fact that um, Tammy couldn't look at one of the boys because he looks too much like her son. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and that's that an awkward one. <sighs> and, and he thought that Tammy was just being embarrassed, so he was trying to get in Tammy's face more and everything, surprisingly, so... Mm-hmm. Okay, the best part was when people kept track of who I thought was attractive, and they're like, Michelle, there's your guy. Michelle, there's <laughs> your, your guy. guy. And your I'm guy. like, I only mentioned once that I'm and like, just record, error. he looked exactly like Will. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Could have been his twin. Yep. I mean, <laughs> it was just <laughs> <Is that Will? laughs> Will's like, oh. He's dying over there. <laughs> Just like Will after he finishes his New Year's resolution. That's right. Yep. Wow. Oh my God. I, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm going to blame all of this on this. Oh no. No, that's that's very that's not it. Oh, very Jimmy what, Fox, I, what I will say is is my glass is just about empty. I'm going to need another pour. But Donald, time I, in the glass on this last one where I added the water, and I've let it set now for probably twenty minutes. The fruit does pop on that. Okay. That's, what is it? That's that the the barrel the New Year's twenty twenty three, and I oh. put the splash of water in there. And at first, I was like, "Yeah, it popped a little bit. It's not bad." Blah. But it sat this whole time, and I just went back at it, and then went back to my original pour from. New Year's on Vic Stream, <clears throat> boom! It does pop. It just needed nice. a little more time to do its thing in Very the glass, cool. and wow! So, so, would you say the ball has finally dropped on that bottle? Oh, it's it's dropped. Yes. Happy mm-hmm. New Year! Yeah. Happy New Year! Without a doubt. So, that, and, and that, Donald, this is my bourbon neophyte hat. I wear this when I'm on uh, Anthony Streams. <laughs> Wait a minute. See, you Uh-oh. just you're looking so dapper this evening, though. There we go. I mean, you didn't now even need seeing. the hat. We yeah. knew what we're doing. I, well, it was right here, and I meant to put it on before the stream, and I just got to chatting. Then I saw Dustin had his, and I'm like, "Do I get my? Do I get my derby? Do I, what, what, God, God. And I said, Anthony is dressed, you know, straight up like 19, you know, 30s uh, man. He's like he's giving me a you know like a history professor Indiana Jones vibe. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, hey, there's a new Indiana thinking, Jones coming thinking, this year. I was thinking more a uh, a, a speakeasy uh, proprietor. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, at, at this the... point, I think I'm at the point where unless I'm forced to be in a wedding or maybe a job interview, I don't think I'll ever wear a tie again. I don't huh? mind wearing them. I got out of it for a while, and then you know when you're walking around a construction site and walking across the steel beam it's just not you know yeah it doesn't work so i've stopped wearing them for a long time yeah. unless i had to go to meetings and um i just i, I just don't like a, wearing them i hate them I just have a crevel they don't bother me they don't bother me oh, i've got a yeah. hundred so, i literally have a hundred ties i wore a tie at work for yeah years i just 
and I hated every day putting that thing on. I just hated it. You could have clipped them on. You'd have been fine. Yeah. I, I don't like having the button on my uh, my shirt closed either. Just can't see Oh, yeah. It. Yeah. But. All right. I'm out of here. It's one o'clock for me. Oh, thank you all for a fantastic 2022. I cannot wait to see what 2023 brings us. Christmas. Cheers to that. Love you all. Hey, um, Anthony, you're going to have a special bottle coming to you. So, uh, Oh, Merry Christmas to you, sir. Oh, I bet you it will be. And Shane, we'll, we'll organize a, uh, a private talk out so that we can chat about that stuff. Yes, for sure. I love you guys. Seriously. All, right. all of you are amazing people and I would not, even begin to uh, do what I'm doing if it wasn't for you all. So thank you so much. Does that include you still shine? Cheers, Shane. <laughs> Good. Cheers, Shane. Okay, I'm. I have to go. Mm-hmm. I have court. I'm suing people for my company tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I have to be coherent, and I'm not coherent right now. So <laughs> I have to go to bed. I yes. got you. Well, that's a good way to start start the new year. Go to yeah, court. in court. I mean, like, she's a crazy bitch. I'm going to sue her. Let's do this. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, hey. it's my. It's actually in in nine years. It's my first suit. So yeah. I'm ready. I'm prepared. You I just got to do it. It's business. Yeah. That's all you gotta, it's it's business. just business. Yep. Yep. I don't have to go for like. 12 more hours and I'm prepared. I have it like tabbed and color coordinated and freaking ready. Good. She's not going to know what hit her. <laughs> I mean, I've won words. Yep, just lost Adam. All right. So, all right. Happy New Year. Happy Thank New you. Year, Michelle. Happy Michelle. Year, Michelle. We will see you uh, again. That's for sure. We will. Good night. Good night. Good night. Michelle. <laughs> it's funny. I was actually just listening to uh, a rendition of 12 Angry Men. <laughs> Speaking of court. Mm. Well, so while I have one of the authors and benefactors from for my next pour on the stream, I had to clear this Glen out so I can be ready for the next one. And let me reach over here and see. Oh, where is it at? Here we go. Nope, that isn't it. Yes, this is the one. I don't know if anybody's had this one yet. It is. Can anybody? Well, you probably can't see it. Got to make yourself full screen, Anthony. Well, I am, but I'm just trying to get the camera. There it is. It focused. I was like, oh, there you go. On. The pick. Yeah. Bill weeded. No. Oh, Wisconsin weeded. Deathless dogs pick. Oh, yeah. there you go. It keeps wanting to focus on yep. me. Come on. Wisconsin weeded. Deathless people. dogs. One twenty. Yeah, whatever stupid person decided the camera should focus on faces doesn't never saw our faces. Apparently, <laughs> apparently not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pour this little gem that someone stopped by and dropped off to me. Yeah, I just killed my uh, the bottle that that sample came out of last night. So oh man, my I'll dog do a was so upset Wisconsin with all those darn fireworks last night. I mean, she was, she was right by my side. Oh yeah. <laughs> I feel right bad because some dogs like, aren't just scared of fireworks. Like it you legitimately know, it, hurts their ears. Like it's physical sure. pain. Mm-hmm. Mm. It it's it, what's funny is is you know, <laughs> thought I heard somebody call my name for a second there. I heard a cough. Oh, I didn't. Let's pour some of this in oh, here. Man. Wow. I started hitting the gym again, and this is the first time in like four days that I can actually like walk without like limping. <laughs> yeah. Well, they finally let you back in the door. I had to do a lot of work to get back in those doors. Yeah. I'm, I'm back, I'm allowed to back in there, although I may get banned because last night I let a guy in the gym. 
who wasn't a member. Uh-oh. Because uh, it was that or he was going to shit himself on New Year's Eve at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> this poor dude's, like, knocking on the, like, door. And I'm, like, on the treadmill. And I'm, like, dude, I can't let you in. And I'm, like, well, I mean, let me just see what's going on. He's, like, I'm, like, I kind of let him walk in. And he just looks at me and he goes, I got a shit, dude. Is that cool? And I'm just like, I'm getting ready to leave. So like, I was gonna open the door, and he would have. He'd walk in. I wasn't gonna fight him. I'm like, I guess. Yeah. And I'm like, well, crap. Now I gotta wait for this guy to leave. I don't want to be liable. No sure. <laughs> and the dude walks out after like 20 minutes in the bathroom, man. A good solid five minutes of cleanup. And let me tell you, I could hear the cleaning going on. And then he just <laughs> hands me a 20 on the way out. And I was just like, thank you. Yeah. I, you really didn't do that, man. He's like, no, no, no. Trust me. That meant more to me than this 20 did. It's not the gym. It's not the reason you're not walking right. It's prison. Look, buddy, Mike, I have dropped the soap numerous times. I am well prepared for that kind of pain. Quit dropping the soap on purpose, Mm -hmm. Dustin. Look, we hung out together, man. You know, I only dropped the soap two or three times just to see what your thoughts are. I I don't push it. Hey, don't up to that that's heavy don't you do it it's don't it's, it's, it's only when he gets gets arrested by bobby that he does that <laughs> no when bob when bobby arrests me trust me i know bobby's sweet spot <laughs> you have like this so, black square down here that's right i'm just gonna find out if he turned his camera on who is it We're my nephew penis guys oh your nephew oh, okay nephew. i was like Happy New Year. If that is not oh. known, do not put it on screen. <laughs> Chris, is Lil feeling better? Yeah. Okay, good. All I know is, Chris, you know, Lil's had a couple rough uh, rough patches, obviously. You decided to make the end of 2022 an absolute shit show for yourself. We're rooting for a better 2023 for both of you. Yeah, well, you know. It can't get much worse than 2022 was. <laughs> Fuck. Hey, man, you've all I feel like, is we are rooting for it to be a much better honestly year. God, I feel like 2022 was a roller coaster of life. Yeah. I mean, the, at least the, the, you know, it's pretty easy when people have asked me so far in the last couple of weeks, what was your highlight of the year? And I said, easy getting out of Australia and getting into the US for five weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a uh, full, roll, roll, full on roller so. coaster. Right? Well, I mean, didn't Lil officially kind of like get through her cancer stuff in 2022, or is that 21? Yeah, no, no, no like, like whether it be the cancer, which is terrible that Lil went through, like I just know so many people that were like, oh, things are so good in the beginning of 2022, and then it was like nut punch. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, oh, we went to Vegas in September. And then it was like, nut punch. And then it was like, oh, Christmas, then nut punch. Yeah. I I think we all forgot after 2020 and the start of 2021, like what it's like to have freedom again, that we kind of overdid it a little bit. (laughs) Kind of had a little bit too much I don't know if it's the freedom. I feel like we all forgot that life is real no matter COVID or not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, it's like so much time thought, COVID oh, once for... COVID's over, everything's or not over, but you know what I mean. Like once, yeah, COVID is not the big issue in life. Everything's going to be so much better, and it's like, oh shit, I still got problems. Like, life still just kind of your other problems rise up and go. Hey, I'm still here. <laughs> yep, yep. Your other problems are still. So my dad, when I was when I was a youth, not like little youth, but like in my twenties. I moved around a lot from state to state here in the U S and my dad. And I was like, Oh, it was always to better myself or better my situation or whatever. My dad goes, have you figured out yet? (laughs) And I was like, what are you talking about? I think I told Anthony this actually. I've heard goes from you as well. Yeah. He goes, no matter where you go, there you are. Yeah. Yep. I always say same problems, new dirt. Like yep, that's you're just exactly standing right. on different dirt. You still got yeah. the same shit. Yep, just a different. Yeah, but day. at least when we come over to the U.S., our problems are about eighteen hours behind us. <laughs> at least. Yeah, 
they're technically the they've already happened. Yeah, they're, they're in the future. It. That's exactly That's right. True. Yeah, <laughs> we've already dealt with them by the time that we were there. So you know, <laughs> yeah. When I if I go to Australia, I'll be like, this isn't even a real problem. It's going to happen tomorrow. That's it. There he is. Hey. hey, it's amazing when you follow them prompts, isn't it, Matt? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what 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 are you pouring there? I'm... Um, just just a smoke wagon. Oh, okay. That'd be crazy. Nice. No. Hell that's yeah, good. that's my I like that bottle. Chug bottle. That's a that's that, a yeah, great bottle say, for that's, the price. That's Mike's favorite drinking bottle. <laughs> so I drink it straight out the bottle. I don't know where it went. You know what, Dan? Oh. Yeah. This pick of yours, I'm getting almost like a a a, a cereal type of a note. Mm-hmm. Uh oatmeal he wasn't joking he's drinking straight out the bottle and uh <laughs> he'll be singing sweet something. home alabama all summer and it's night. like i'm trying to pinpoint this other little maybe it's not yeah it's got to be like an oatmeal cereal mm -hmm. i'd agree with that for sure uh I know I'm getting your normal vanilla and stuff mm -hmm. on it. Uh, what are you brunch. drinking? This is a Deathless Dogs pick. Oh. And, uh, yeah, it's the uh, the wheat whiskey. It's, um, I, I get like a... Yeah, just a good. Kind of a, like a, you know, a dark bread kind of note. Yes, you know? yes, there you go. I was going to say, it's almost like the sweet bread note I get on a single malt scotch, but it's not quite that. But there is a hint of that on there. Yeah. Ready sweetness. That's why I yeah. said cereal, yeah, uh, oatmeal, yeah. uh, maple maybe, like a, like a maple syrup for a mm -hmm. sweetness on here. Yeah, I, I think I... When we were picking it, I was like, this is like a toasted, you know, toasted darker bread with like some Nutella on it or something. Like it's kind of a little bit of that chocolatey nuttiness and then okay. bready, I, but I'll very give you bready. The nuts. I'll give you a nuts. I'll, uh, I can't say almond. I can't say walnut. Definitely. It's not peanut. No, it no. Not, no. <laughs> I think that's why I said new, Nutella, because that's like hazelnut, which is... Ah, you know, yes. You know, like it's a weird... Uh, it is. I mean, it's not a, in a bad way. No. It's just something that I don't normally eat, but I'm like, I've had this before. I just can't put my finger on it. What? What is this? See, what I, what I like about that one, I think Wisconsin whiskeys have like this commonality between them that I can't really put my finger on like what it is. You know, it's just like it's a familiar thing, and terroir, that perhaps? pick has like a lot of it. You know, you think it's like terroir, Dan? Like just sort of like the environment that it's in, that just sort of. Well, and and that that distillery is all the grain is sourced within like fifty miles of the distillery, and you know, it's all it's all local. Yeah. Um, and if you've had J. Henry stuff, there that distillery distills J. Henry's. Product well, let me say now. this: there is a definite chocolateness in here there's viscosity and if you sent me this in a blind i'd probably pick out these same notes if you asked me to pick the proof i would tell you right now i'd be hard pressed to put this at a hundred and i know it's 120 yeah the drink be slow. hard pressed to put it at a hundred but i would probably go for that as my default Mm -hmm. But I would never have guessed this thing at 120. No freaking yeah. way. No way would I have guessed it at 120. It does not drink like 120 at all. It, it had done, it'd be only if you were looking at the legs on the glass. If, your glass. If you were. I, I, I was looking at them, but you know what? I, I wouldn't have, I would not. I Okay. I might have looked at it for a second and went, but once I sipped it, I'm like, nope, got to be at least a hundred, if not a little south, maybe. Wow, well, yeah, hundred so, would have been would have would have been my default. I could say that. With has, has anybody noticed that where something's aged, the closer to the equator, the hotter it drinks, all else equal? Hmm. 
And the further away, the easier it drinks. And the less change global warming has. I guess I've never thought and about it. But... That one as well, but just whiskey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I but guess I've yeah. never thought about it, but that, yeah, I could kind of follow you down that road. Yeah. Fireproof scotches tend to be much easier to drink, aged regardless of age. Um, Night James, man. Thanks kind for of popping make, on. Make me want to kill myself sometimes. Hey, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is, Dan, this is, this is good. Yeah, this, man. this is Clint good. I'm like not it. saying that because, you know, you dropped this off at my place. If you gave me this in a blind and just said, tell me about it, I'd have got a few of the notes, but I'd have been off a mile on everything else, particularly this damn proof. And for for you to ask me, is it, you know, like finished? Is it a wheat? Is it a bourbon? Is it a rye? I probably would have picked finished bourbon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but would have you not picked the state too? Would have, or would have you thought that it was in Indiana? Would Anthony, not. I'm going to bed, but good night, buddy. Appreciate you. You're going to bed. I'm really tired. He chugged that smoke wagon. Um, now it's oh, time. Yep. Mike, Mike's done. He's had his smoke wagon. Well, that smoke wagon will do it to you. Matt's going to find out. Yep. You're dank. Yep, yep. You got the mm -hmm. dank on. Oh, hey, by the way, uh, Mr. Stahl, have a good night. Hey, happy new year. Cheers, buddy. And Lil said you're still number one in her heart, Mike. <laughs> He'll sleep better now. Look at him. Next, did he say something like read between the lines or something? Oh, yeah. he knew. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> I like how well, Mike's hat turns a little bit every drink he has as the night goes yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. So, so maybe. everybody knows. Let me help you all up. That's my nephew, Matt. I don't Good. blame him that he's in Delaware. That's his problem, <laughs> but that's okay. But it's all right. Well, Matt, yeah. you've got a lot of um clothing to buy to live up to your uncle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. He's got a lot of whiskey to catch up on too. We 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 chat yeah. regularly on that. But with whiskey, whiskey, you know, that takes time. The clothing thing, I think you're just screwed, man. I'll never catch up. And I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay he's with okay that. with that. Yeah. He's I'll come fine. to terms. But it, yeah. it's hard, it's hard to find somebody who can custom make everything you wear like uh, Anthony has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought but, he just I thought he just came home at night and he just stitches outfits together. <laughs> yeah, he's his own tailor. <laughs> can I say <laughs> wear some of the finest off the rack money can buy? Damn right. One of a kind. Yeah, right, right. that off the rack hat he's wearing right now. <laughs> I know. I, I like this. I one. like it. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Again, no, that's not, that ain't no off the rack hat. So <laughs> when you when you decide to come to the light and enjoy scotch. The person, well, I don't know where he is for you, but when I'm looking at you, he'd be to your left. He's got the black cap on. Yes. He has a channel, top shelf, and they have some amazing reviews, so on and so forth. So don't don't hesitate to one subscribe, but also to go and watch some. And if you have questions, go ahead and ask, because now Dustin knows who you are. Um, I guarantee you, either one will get back to you, but. Uh, great reviews and then you got dan up there in the top corner well for me he's directly over there um go ahead and watch his because i think you come on thursday night dan yeah thursday nights yeah so more closer to your time matt because he's central yeah i'm central time yeah okay. yeah but or if, you, um, or if you ever feel like day drinking just oh yeah scotch down, 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 down under well he's at work <laughs> Well, but you know, he's on the East Coast. So. Hey, maybe he yeah. takes a day off work, you know, needs to drink. Well, he has in the morning. Tuesdays and Wednesdays well, are his days off, and he's the, the whole thing is, Ken's, Ken's on most days of the week, I think. So. Uh, it's true <laughs> at any time. Yeah. Scotch yeah, Down Under is my favorite show to watch when I'm hungover because it's just like somebody's keeping it going, and I'm at work, like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wish I could have some of that right now. That might help. Yeah, I, I keep yeah. waking up uh, with the to Ken's stream with it end, having saying ended 19 minutes ago or 38 minutes ago. Yeah, it's like oh boy, I got to get back to work. Yeah, before I wake up when Ken starts versus waking up when Ken ends. And then, well, the um, number of times that I've been on his stream at the start of a stream and then 
gone to bed, gotten up to go to work and Ken's still been going. And I'm oh, jumped yeah. back in to say, I'm on the way to work now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ken's is the only stream that I've set an alarm to wake up to go drink because it was uh, when Lil came out, you know, had her first drink back. I'm like, uh, all yeah, right, I set yeah. my alarm. So it's like, I think it was a Saturday here, you know, and yeah, it was. It was I a, get up, it was, at, it's uh, like Saturday 8 a.m. and my girlfriend's like, it's like, you're up early. I was like, yeah, I got a drink. <laughs> 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 Let's go turn on the camera. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm drinking. <laughs> But that was like this morning, man. I was just like, well, you know, Ken's going. I guess I'll just uh, let me go yeah. get some food, and then I'll come back, and I'll drink. And it was one of those moments you're like, you know, Ken, I wish I could say I was so drunk I have to pass out. It's just 8.30 a.m., and I haven't slept yet. i got to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Cheech has done well because he still hasn't been asleep yet since last night. Oh, geez. He's been asleep. His eyes just didn't close. Yeah. So. He said said in the chat before to me that when before I came in that uh, it was at thirty nine hours in county. Jeez, yeah. that's uh that doesn't seem healthy. No. Well, no, no, you got to crash sooner or later. I mean, I I pried my eyes open this morning and I was like, oh yeah, Ken's on. Well, it must have been damn good French toast. That's all I can say for breakfast. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't I, have I set my goal toast. going to the gym every day for a hundred days and. I made it today at 11.40 p.m., but I made it. You made it. <laughs> it counts. Did yeah, you, I, no. did you work had, out I, for a half hour so you got, you know, today, you know, tomorrow's in there too? Or you could, I, technically, you could do a two for there. Yeah. I, that, that, it, it, it's 100 actual, like, trips to the, the gym. gym. So, like, yeah. like, for example, like, one day I did show up. Like, so there's one day I actually did two days, and one day I didn't do a day at all because I went at 1 a.m., mm -hmm. and then I went at, like, 5 p.m. the next day that yeah. still counts as two days like it's two two separate appearances yeah donald we gotta remember though beers show up sometimes fuller's vintage ale can show up four or five years late here in the states so that doesn't mean i'm not gonna see it but i bet you don't get panzer wolf in canada probably not it's a, a three Floyds, yeah. That yeah. is such a great can. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, I was kind of like, man, I can't, I kind of missed the bottles, but now with this, these cool cans are they're cool, and the price well, they're, now that they're, all this stuff's on cans, they're PBA free too. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you what, man, the price of beer has gotten so cheap now that they've switched to cans. Like it's, it's like honestly, switching back to beer right now is the ultimate like inflation adjustment you could make. Because beer's gotten so cheap the last couple of years. No, it's still good at the moment. Thanks, Matt. So, Matt, what did you pick up this week besides the ones from Philly? Well, yeah, there was um, was at the store the other day. I think I think I definitely paid a little too much for it. We've it all that. had that problem at least three or four times. I know it was just it was getting harder to find and stuff, and they can't like. I know there's like the app drizzly or whatever it's where you can order yep. some boost or the app well they don't offer that out here in delaware so i'm kind of shit out of luck on that yeah so like i ended up picking up a bottle of high west that campfire there was only one bottle between yeah. going through pittsburgh philadelphia and a couple places in delaware it was like the only bottle i could find so hey it's all right I, 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 like I told you how to do it. If you know what MSRP is, what are you comfortable paying over it? And then if you yeah. found it for the price you're comfortable with, then it's a good price. Well, you yeah, had, you had a, you had a stream a couple months ago on it, didn't you? Yep. It's, I was just drinking it and sitting right there the other night. I was just Which, drinking uh, which side west are we talking about here? The campfire, the new campfire. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. The one that came out. Well, I've almost said this year, last year. Yeah. <laughs> so there'll I be another campfire. This I year, saw some by West behind the counter at one of my stores, like for points, and I just didn't even ask about it. I'm just well. Let me just say this, and, and I, I've said I'm it on I think it's good, but the hype on the on how the smoke is on it, yeah, no. Because I'm gonna just say this as a peated Scotch drinker, and uh, Dustin, you, yeah, it's yeah. no, it's not that kind of nice, thick, meaty smoke that 
the bourbon drinkers and sorry guys i'm not picking on bourbon drinkers but who don't know peat and then when they taste that to them that's like drinking uh, mm -hmm. uh lafroig okay without <laughs> the medicinal part it's just the the yeah no it, that's not it peat is a that, weird that campfire number. isn't it I will say this. I found uh, I, I did grab myself a backup of this uh, on New Year's, which was I pretty saw exciting. that winter whiskey. Uh, yeah, this is something. This is cool. Oh, it, that sounds really good. That's the winter whiskey. Yeah, I mean, it oh. legitimately. I mean, as they're telling you here, you can taste that chocolate malt and that malted oatmeal. I mean, it tastes like oatmeal chocolate chip cookies are in here, man. Wow. Oh, wow. And just to give you like, and here's the details on the back of what they did. I mean, it's not like they used that much craziness. It's only 5% steel cut oats, 3% malt, but I'm telling you, it ain't subtle, man. You pick it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still so kind that, of a young bourbon that... base. Like, it's definitely the bourbon part of this is not an amazing bourbon. Those added elements, man, they're really good. And this is a $50 bottle. Now, is that is that distillery only, Dustin, or...? Well, it's, the, it's, it's Kentucky distillery only. So, like, I got this at a store locally, but... In general, yeah, it's a distillery only release where you know by law in Kentucky you have to send out some distribution. Yeah, yeah, so, ten percent. Yeah, I got, I got this as part of the distribution. I also got one at the distilleries. This is my backup. Um, let's see if Ian can go to the distillery and pick me up one. I can go look and see if there's more there, but I, it was a this was a um, Black Friday release for them. Oh, oh okay. And then uh, they're kind of floating around just now, showing up in other stores. So, no, oh, keep an eye out. Yeah, if I saw, I'll any, any of those I see, I'm going to buy because I know you'd want one. Ben wants one. Eric the Barbarian wants one. Um, I, I think a couple other guys I know want them. So that's where I'm I'm looking forward to getting the couple of bottles of Bell Bower and um, the malted over. Yeah, this this is legitimately my second favorite whiskey I've had from them. After that sherry rye, which is just like the most oh, yeah, delicious yep. thing ever made. I haven't even opened anything from new riff and i've got it on the shelf and i can't even remember the two i have i just haven't ever got them i've had them for about two years yeah, new riff i mean they're doing really good stuff for being young and they're charging the highest price that i think is reasonable for it yeah uh that's it's it if you're a big rye fan over the top if you're a rye fan, they are doing a lot of cool rye stuff. I'm and I'm just not a big enough rye fan to like get super excited about all the crazy ryes. Um, well, but if you're a rye single guy, barrel, their single barrel barrel proof rye is just phenomenal, especially well, when it. The one some, I've got picks, one some picks are thing. some picks aren't though. I've, I've had picks that were kind of sucky. Yeah, no, the one which I've got is one thirteen, and it's just phenomenal. I mean, I still to this day think, as far as young ryes go, the best young rye I've ever had uh, is probably the first pick I tried from them, which was when it was distillery bar only. Yep. And it was literally poured straight from the barrel with barrel, like the flakes were still in it. I mean, like they literally just poured it straight from the barrel into those bottles. I don't, I'm just like, what are you guys doing? I love it. Can I buy it like this? And they're like, no, we're not going to sell it. I'm like, why would you not sell it with freaking oak particles still in it? That's what people want. Yeah. It's one of those things like I want to own my own distillery just so I can sell whiskey like that with the literally the floating oak particles. I, I, if I even have to sell it as a non-consumable, like, like labeled as like hand sanitizer and just be like, hey, guys, wink, wink. This is made to be this you actually can drink. I'll do it. It's 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 meant to sanitize inside and out. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I mean, I'm telling you, people are going to tell you that it doesn't make a difference. Man, you can taste the difference from those like that filtering that removes those. <laughs> Which one is that, Mark? That's the Bell Bower, by the looks. That looks like a regular old pick. <coughs> That's the new riff, uh, six year. Oh, okay. I just saw that. What was the multi like, What was that? Hundred and seven proof. Or is it a bourbon that you pick that you got those six years old? Yeah, it's just bourbon. Oh, that's crazy. Okay. I have not seen uh, any bourbon picks that were that old. I know. That's why it's uh I didn't even know they were offering those up. 
also a barrel pick. It's a barrel pick. Yeah. Yeah, I think the oldest barrel pick I've got is about five years, I think. I thought they honestly weren't even doing anything over four. Like They just kind of made that a rule because they were holding back any of those older barrels for uh, future blending. So I'm excited that they're even letting people get older. They're very rare to get out. And yeah. I think older than the four. Yeah, like I said, I thought they weren't just they just weren't putting those in the barrel program. So I think it's only uh, there's certain customers I think are getting access who have who have done a lot of picks with them. Yeah, I mean hey, it's cool. I just like I said, I didn't think they were doing it. They're not even. I mean, the distillery picks don't aren't that old. No. Nah. So I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure. I think it was six years and. Seven months, but I'm not sure. On the other hand, I'm also very nervous that they're letting a, their older stock go because I really think New Riff was really meant to be a 12 year old bourbon. Because I mean, it's the MGP mash bill, as we all know. MGP becomes magical at about 12 years old. Yeah. So the fact that they're using their same mash bill, like, and based on what I've had of New Riff, it's it's a really good young bourbon. It I, is. I want it to be a really good old bourbon. Actually, it is a very good young bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I love I love what it is as a young bourbon. I, I actually like New Riff substantially more than I like P at young ages. So I'm hoping it stays on that trajectory. Mm. I, I mean, I, I'm on record. I'm not a big fan of five, six-year-old MGP. I mean, I, I don't hate it or anything, but it's like, I don't really want to pay 50 bucks for young MGP. Yeah, I can understand that. I don't, I don't have an issue with, you know, six year old MGP at all. Um, but depending, you can get that young note on the finish and it could be off putting, but if it's, if, if the other flavors outweigh it you know, yeah. and are able to tamp it down, I, I'm, I'm good with it. But like I said, if I see five years, six year, I, I at 50 bucks, I'd buy it. I think that's the thing is for me though, is like new riff is on the shelf for 50 bucks too. When I think it drinks better at four years than MGP does at six. And then, um, wilderness trail is on the shelf. You know, for me drinks better at four or five years than MGP does at six. So right here, I'd I'd rather have wilderness trail. So like, and then it's like, and then also if I can find a rare breed, Four year, nine months on this pick, and man, is it good from total wine. Yeah, you know, the funny thing with them is I don't think their stuff's getting much better with age. I don't think it's getting worse. I just think well, it's going to take I a think lot this five year mark is the key for them because uh, everything I have is right around that five year. So I, I, plus I've, or got minus. Their, I've got their eight year old, and you can tell it's getting more of those oak notes that you want. Mm-hmm. It's just not there yet. Like, it's gonna that one might be one of those brands that I mean it might take 14 years before it actually gets to its sweet spot. I mean, it's just it's one of those brands that just it's aging very slowly and it's just taking on those notes very slowly. Now, that Woodenville, I'll say this, Mark. Um, I do love the picks way more than the standard. I mean, I, you can keep the standard stuff as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. What is that, 122? <clears throat> Proof? Yep. 124. Okay. Yeah. Those those are amazing it's, as far as I'm concerned. It's a unique bottle. It's, it's very unique. It's uh, it, one of the things I like about the, the uh, Woodenville is uh, it's got a – it's got a subtle melon note to it that I really like. Might be just my palate, but it's a melon note. But in this particular barrel pick, I don't, I don't get it. But it's still delicious. But in the uh, regular uh, release of uh, bourbon whiskey, it's a nice subtle melon note, like a honeydew melon. It's really nice. I've gotten the pleasure of being part of some um, some picks with Woodenville and the range when you get those, like, you know, your four or five samples. I mean, they're, you know, you get most brands and they're kind of like this, you know, they're all in this range. Some are young, some are better, but they're all kind of pretty on profile. Woodenville, man, it's like, it's out there, man. You get, it is. 
you get some craziness. I, I could see somebody coming back having tried a Woodenville saying, man, Woodenville's garbage. Yeah, it's in the standard. Saying, man, Woodenville's is standard. standard. Like, BTAC, man. Forget that stag stuff, man. Give me that cherry on the, the Woodenville, and then they'll get another Woodenville and go, where'd the cherry go? And I'm like, yeah, that's Woodenville. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, like, I mean, we had one, we, one of the picks we did. Like we ended up having to like pass because we just didn't think it would sell at the store we were at because the price point they want that it was going to be was just too high. But they had this one man that had this freaking cherry oak note. That oh my! I mean, it was like it was like the best cherry wood note you ever got on a Buffalo Trace. But like it did, but it didn't have like this other thing going on that was not Buffalo Trace, and it was just oh so good. Yeah, I wanted bottles from that barrel, man. <laughs> Oh my yeah, God. so good. Matt, mm-hmm. did you did you buy that uh, barrel bourbon seagrass, or did you get the dovetail? I got the do- I got the dovetail. Okay, I, I knew it was one of them. I just couldn't remember because I was like, I know I didn't like the seagrass, and I don't think you got that because I don't. I think I would have told you I didn't like that. <clears throat> no, <laughs> it's the I, dovetail. I got, okay, I got the dovetail because somebody was bringing it up a little bit ago in one of your streams, also. So I started uh, is good. looking at that. I haven't yeah, we'll had it, but I know people have, and they're happy with it. That is a yearly release. It okay. changes year after year. Mm. Um, from it's my, a, it's a weird one, man. It's 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 definitely one of those you know love or hate yeah. kind of things. I bet. Well, mm. I'm telling you what this this one here is 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 odd, but I like it. It's very unique in its flavors and in how it was put together, and particularly um, the the tasting notes that you get um from that darn thing i mean uh you know gooseberry sandalwood uh smoke i mean definite smoke in that new year's 2023 from barrel and that was one of the things that i'm like wait a minute i mean it it is there and when you know what that is you you pick up on it like that um even this the uh you get i've only ever had it once and i didn't like it and i've got it on this but the wormwood note and going back and looking it up one of the things they 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 talk about on the website wormwood black cherry uh, the creaminess was cream soda. Yeah, this man. is off of the website. And these were some of the notes that I couldn't quite pick out. And I said, there's a creaminess to it that I couldn't put my finger on. And then when Cheats talked about the dickel and being that that could be some of the mixture in it. So one of the descriptions is a range of mineral notes with a hint of limestone and beeswax. I'm like, what? Mm. But I knew there was something else in there that was very unique and different. It's not off-putting in any way. It's not. And like I said, I didn't look at any of this stuff prior because I don't want any preconceived notions. But you go back and read the website and it's like, boom, that's it. That's it. That's it. Now, the cream soda thing, I knew it was creamy. I wouldn't have probably guessed cream soda. But now when I think about it, it's like, that is it. I haven't had a cream soda in so long. I was going to say, that's like. Yeah. I mean, but that, when I was younger, that was one of my favorite things to drink was cream soda. But anyway. I love that AMW sparkling sparkling vanilla cream soda back when I was a kid. But that's mm. like, that, that ain't even really cream soda. Like, yeah. cream soda is a whole other thing. It is. But anyway, very unique whiskey, very different, but it is good and, and, and worth, uh, you know, 89 bucks or whatever the hell they want for it. I don't know. I'd pay 100 for it. That's Have the problem with barrel. It's like, really, you hey. almost, you need a bad tasting bar that has all the barrel stuff before you buy it. You do. And I, I, I totally agree with you there because some of the ones I've had, you know, they were good. But at the $100 price tag that yeah. was on, I was like, if they were around 79 bucks i would think about it for sure at 69 i would buy it 
But for me, barrel know, would have to be fifty bucks for me just to buy them on un, unseen because I've mm -hmm. had a few that I just I, yeah okay. did not enjoy at all. And you know, fifty bucks, I don't like that I bought a ball I don't like, but I can live with it. Yes, you spend almost a hundred bucks on you don't like it. That that hurts. Like that yeah, literally. Yeah, no, that's exactly, exactly, exactly. But um, yeah, I'm like, wow, this, 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 this has impressed me. In other words, it's very unique. It's very different. You get notes and stuff off of the thing that you're just not finding, you know, anywhere. And what's up, Mark? Have, have any of you had this? I have a different, I have quite a few picks from that. And now I only like picks. I don't like the standard wooden bill. So the 90 proof. Yeah. You can keep that crap. Yeah. Put a couple of wooden bills on the way over. I like the wooden bill port finish a lot. Oh, well, those are from yeah, my, they're, they're really using good. really good port casks. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. like, I, I wish more of the uh, Scotch guys who are using port on their expensive stuff were using the same quality that Woodenville's are using because they are they're not sparing expense on those port casks. But yeah, Woodenville itself, I'm not impressed with the base. Meek. Picks, yes. But I really like the picks. They are good. We've been talking about This is another one that I have I have got to do a, a review on. Oh, that, that's that's a great bottle for the price. Well, it is, and then this is an older bottling, like old old, like it's the it's all um oloroso. Oh, damn, that's this pretty. one. I I I'm not sure. They'll say on the front if it's I know it. it's an older one because right uh, on Anthony, front, just go on the back and see if it says Rachel Berry or it says uh, Billy Walker. On, in the signature. Oh my God! Now you, you want me to look at that? How about Rachel? Yeah, okay, that's not an old bottle. It, it could be an old, like it could be like two years old, but it's not like it's not the old one. Yeah, this one's Rachel. Okay, so that that's gonna be PX and Oloroso. You've gotten the Billy I'm... Walker one, buddy. You would have. Well, we don't even want to go there. You would have found something magical. <laughs> I'm looking on her. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm. Yeah, if it's got Rachel Berry's signature on it, like the the the, it's the cursive signature on the back, I mean, it's not hard. To oh find. yeah, it's her. Yeah, it's, it's her. not hard to find the cursive signature. No, I'm, well, I'm not making that to see read, nobody. <laughs> but nope, it's on there now. Yeah, now if you've got if it's Rachel, then it's not that old. I mean, it's a couple. It could be a couple years old, but they're uh, that's going to be Oloroso and PX, and that's a absolute. I mean, probably one of the top five bottles under a hundred bucks you can buy right now um, in the Scotch world. Yep. Yeah. There it is. Oh, yeah. I know you I don't like that, that bottle. You don't like. It? You don't like it's sherry. You don't. You don't like sherry whiskey if you don't like that bottle. That's oh, all I there do. to do it. Yeah, it's I, really I good. Um, and they're like ninety bucks, which is very fair for what that is. Yeah, I, I didn't pay that for it. That's for sure. It was, oh, you got it for it less? less. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. The amount of dust that was on this bottle, I think they were happy to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, I, I think they. I've seen them maybe as low as seventy, but. This was 74. Oh man, that's a steal. yeah, and they only had that one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, 90 bucks it's an instant buy, in my opinion. Well, in 90 yeah. bucks, I would have bought it. Yeah, I think that's a fair price. Yeah, over over 90, and you know, we can start talking about other stuff, but at, at, at 100 bucks, yeah, I would have been like 100 bucks. It's still probably, I mean, it's still, it's definitely still a buy at 100, but like, yeah, once but you I would have looked at it for longer then just reach up and just say yeah, we, that there start being other things to think about, but at, at 90 or under, and mm -hmm. even if you're not a scotch fan, if you want to get into scotch, that's a bottle to buy. Yeah. Exactly. Don't be one of these guys. who wants to get into scotch and he buys Glenn Levitt 12 to try out. Like, dude, you're into bourbon, you know, whiskey and you bottle Glenn Levitt 12. You're not gonna be impressed. You buy that bottle. You're going to be impressed. Well, yeah. What's that look like? Can you show that up close? Uh, Anthony, can you, uh, your cousin wants to see the, um, or ne sorry, nephew wants to see the uh, Glendronk again. Okay, hold on. I was just looking for something. I was like, I thought I, I looked up the price there, what it was. Let me just see. Okay. This is the revival. Hold on. I'm 
highlighting it here. Hold on, give me a second. I gotta get this over there. I don't want to boot Chris out. Come on, there it goes. Okay. Right. So, yeah, for our under a hundred, yeah, without yeah, a doubt. That's, that's really good stuff, man. And then this is the one that uh, I'm going to get into here in a little bit. I've been okay. seeing those around. Uh, Tale of the Forest. Yeah, and they use peat in this one. And other combustible hardwoods, let's just say. And um, so it's not just peat to that they used when they were... Uh, Malting? Yep. Correct. Cool. Yep, yep, yep. And it is a 12-year, even though it's not stated, it is a 12-year whiskey. Given the price so, point, yeah. that's not impressive, but I think I'm going to pour a little of this uh, private barrel. Oh, mm. there you go, Matt. Oh, I got, I got the, uh, I got the ten year here. What's that? The nine year you have? This is a nine year. Yeah, this is the first. Uh, this is the first one of these I've actually seen local. Um, my you, it was points and all kinds of other stuff. These are unfortunately here not a uh, obtainable bottle just off the shelf. I know some places are. Uh, that's a thing, but you know, if you're in the Kentucky area, man, you don't. Uh, you don't get bourbon in Kentucky. It's the last place to go for bourbon, unless you're Chris. Yeah, yeah, but that uh, that ten year that's going for about eighty bucks out in my neck of the woods, and then the nine year, it's going for about forty. Forty. Mm -hmm. For a I, I ended up for the private barrel nine year. Yeah, it was forty bucks, yeah. so I picked up two of them. I was like, oh, but I can yeah, buy is, the that a, is that a private that's below their cost? That's below cost if they sold it to you. That's yeah, that, is that 94 or a barrel strength, the cost strength? It's a 94. Oh, okay. okay. So it's not barrel proof. That's a barrel yeah. proof. Okay. I was like, I man, was you got no, that low cost. Dude. No, no, no. no. He, Sorry he about that. Well, before he realized what it was, he he passed on the barrel proof, the, the like the 120, 124 and stuff like that. But now he knows not to do that. Yeah, that was a rookie mistake, I guess. That's okay. I, I, you know, honestly, I haven't seen a I haven't seen a ninety four pick in about in over a year. I just haven't seen them. I don't know where they're going. I don't know where they are, but I haven't seen one locally. Which one, yeah. Dust? I, I haven't seen an Elijah Craig like you know ninety four proof pick. Oh. I haven't seen one of those in a year. Well, you know Ohio, you know how they are. Well, I'm talking Kentucky. I, I oh, Ohio is uh, just a. I mean, Ohio is ridiculous, but ridiculous. I mean, we, we just put out like they put out a hundred freaking single barrels on the same day, and almost every bottle sold out, unless it was like a brand that nobody cared about. I mean, there's some Penelope, you know, toasted stuff floating around that nobody is telling you to buy. Mm -hmm. well, I ended up picking up uh, that store pick for the Redemption High Ride Bourbon. They had the single barrel. Uh, oh, select. yeah, that's good. I told you to buy two. Well, yeah, I, I bought two from the same store. There was two stores by me. One was like in April of 2016, and the other one was in October of 2016. I kind of wanted to buy one of each and see what the and difference you know was. What? Based on, like, the seasons chance. and stuff. One could be an absolute hitter, and the other one's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we had uh, we had some stores here that they did like kind of like an education slash tasting uh Experience thing that of course COVID destroyed, but uh, they used to do like where they would go and you know like say Knob Creek picks and they'd say hey look I want three barrels that are sitting next to each other barrel the same day, mm. and they'll put those out just to show you how drastically different just the same barrel barrel the same day sitting in the same spot in the rickhouse could be. You know, oh just yeah, to show you the craziness of like you know just sometimes it's just the freaking grooves in the tree of the oak barrel that can drive flavor differences. And that's what and I was telling him a while ago, you know, placement in that Rick house can mean the difference between an absolutely phenomenal barrel and a good barrel. Yeah. But it, it, it's not even just placement that we always talk about. I mean, they were literally buying getting three barrels that were literally touching each other. 
and they would taste different, completely different. Yep. Because it, it, sometimes it's just it's the oak of the barrel. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's crazy. Yep. Well, they now go and with the the people from the cooperage and pick the trees that they want their barrels to be because they want a certain caliber quality uh i don't know the word i'm looking for but tree and then they have the barrels made for a particular batch mm -hmm. that they're putting out that's how scientific they're getting well have you heard what makers mark is doing where they've actually went and bought their own like forest basically and i mean makers mark is effectively like preparing their uh their spirit for like what they're going to be bottling and barreling in 200 years from now like they're going that forward thinking with what they're investing in right now it's crazy yes it is stuff we'll never taste people making these decisions will never taste it yeah but, yeah um but that's what you kind of I mean, that's what you got to do if you want to bring these brands forward it's just what you got to do all right i gotta have another pour i mean you know case in point i mean you haven't had one of these guys but like you know they're gaelics i mean this is literally old world protected trees so that they're you know they cut protected down two a year for forest, deforestation reasons you gonna try this again mark do you want me to just boot you out of your other spot Can you hear us, Mark? I don't, I don't think, think Mark can hear us. Can you hear us, Mark? I don't think so. <laughs> no, <Ryan. laughs> I don't think you No, we've got no audio yeah. from him either. We can't hear you either, Mark. Mark, you've never sounded smarter. Uh, well, he can hear oh, us. He can hear us. Yeah, he can hear, he can hear us. We can't hear, oh, we can hear you. We can't hear him. <laughs> like Just I said, he's never sounded it, smarter. <laughs> I think he said, Dustin, you're the greatest man alive. I just That's just what I heard. That is, I read his lips. That's why I thought he said, too. Yeah. yeah. Yep, I am more of a man than you'll ever be. I heard. I, I, I agree. Yep. Yes, one 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 day you could even be as big a man as uh, T. Rob Dustin. Well, oh, I don't know about that, buddy. Yeah, I don't know about that. You you get in the gym long enough, you'll get there. I can tell you, I uh, I, I spent almost twenty years in the gym consistently back in my youth. I was I, I was a bigger guy than I am now in terms of muscle size, not total total pounds. I'm definitely a bigger guy now, but uh, yeah, I, I did not have arms like T. Robs. <laughs> And I mean, I was squatting 500. I was, I was benching, you know, 300s. I was nothing like T. Rob. That is a uh, genetic marvel of a man. Yes. Well, when you, when you spend six out of seven days there, I mean, come on. Trust me, I, I, I studied weightlifting and diet and training more than I study whiskey today. And relative to income, I was spending more money on weightlifting and stuff. And it. <laughs> Short of going all in on like just massive doses of steroids, I will never get close to that. And I don't mean going on steroids. I mean massive doses of steroids. <laughs> I, I do not have the genetics to get that big. So I have a eight-year private barrel at uh, 94 proof. I have an eight-year private barrel at 133 proof yeah. mm -hmm. i have nice. <clears throat> i have uh, man this this camera got really white on a, me. a quite tasty drop here an 11 year even though it's only a, a 94 but it's a private barrel this one is good oh yeah the 11 year but it's only 94, and I'm like, ah, oh. but it's still good because I like I like the, the profile of the Elijah Craig. But now after I had that 120, 
uh, 94 is just not going to cut it for me. So I got to get something that's got some legs. I'll to tell you it. what, I was, I'd always thought those 94s kind of sucked, you know, those picks. And then a buddy of mine was like, hey, man, check, try this one. And uh, he gave me you know, a pour of one that he had. And, I mean, it was absolutely Elijah Craig Barrel Proof kind of levels. I was just like, holy crap. Holy crap. Like, note to self, man, they, they really do occasionally put out a hitter. They do. Well, this one's a, this one's a pick at the 133. So. Yeah, I mean, I, oh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the high proof ones have also got hitters. They also have some shitters. That's the unfortunate part of, you know, gambling. Mm -hmm. you, you don't always get one that, you know, it, it goes through the pedigree of 96 and a 70. Or it goes through some true, you know, proper whiskey tasters. Here we go. I haven't had this since I reviewed it. And... Uh, we're gonna bring Mark on, but he hasn't figured out how to turn his camera on. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna pour this because uh, we're at 111 proof. Uh, so is that a 13 year bar or something? 12? No, this is the blue the, the blue, blue run. run. Yeah, but like those on age state blue run. Um, correct. Okay, yeah, I, I I bought the batch of one of blue run, and I have not bought anything else from them because. Yeah, they they didn't. How do I put this? They they didn't earn my interest. No, so I wasn't impressed with it for the money, but this was one of those gifts that I got, and I'm like, oh, well, I have wanted to try it, so now I have a reason to. I did go back and give it a quick taste before. I'm like, well, time in the bottle did it well, but but let me uh. Let me pour a little water in here. Let's get that. Ah, now I had some water. I'm hydrated. I haven't. I have not had this in a in a bit. Yeah, I don't. Uh... I'll be interested to see if they can kind of maintain like interest with the uh, blue run stuff. Cause it seems to be getting a lot of negative press in general. And I know people that go gaga over this and I'm like, why? <clears throat> I, I, they why? definitely, they definitely sell to that, to a certain market, but it, I mean, they, they seem to, what I've seen, they sell to just the people who buy everything, no matter what, um, you know, like independent so I, done a lot of reviews on those, but Joe buys everything. Cause Joe can. So I, I, I swapped T Rob a sample because he has the spring. This one's the summer. Okay. So I've got that right next to it. So one of these days where I have time, I'm just going to pour one in A, pour one in B, and see which one is better, if at all, but do a blind. I'm still getting a medicinal cherry type of a note on this. In a good way or bad way? It's not terrible. I don't find it off-putting. So bad, but just not terrible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't find it off-putting, but... <clears throat> eh. And I, I got that on the original pour a while ago. Wonder where they're um, sourcing those younger ones from then? Because I don't know. Sound like Barton? Because Barton. But I'm going to say, if this is six year, I'd be surprised. You think it's younger? Yeah, I, I'd give it six. I mean, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. It was, it was uh, bottled in in June of of last year. So Buffalo Trace and 101 are generally thought to be around the six mark. Maybe not necessarily six, but around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I, I'll give this thing a, a six year unless somebody knows something that I don't. Let me know, but 
it's good, but it's not going to make me worn out and buy the other ones in it. I mean, I think it's a nice bottle. I think it's got a nice gimmicky butterfly on it, and you know, it, it will catch. Kind of looks like a football if you were going to throw it, you know. Yeah, well, that might be better than the butterfly, but <laughs> um, eh. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of their their packaging, honestly. I, I think that whole marketing on that, I was like, this is what you think good packaging is? I don't know that I agree with you. Yeah. This, this is a, this to me is a much better looking bottle. That This just says, hey, look. I have a normal bottle shape. I got some nice etched glass. This is cool. And uh, I like the high rye. I mean, it's 30% rye in the, in the uh, mash bill. But Smoke Wagon's 36% rye in their mash bill. And it's oh, like... Yeah, the 36 MGP. I mean, and they, this they're... drinks spicier than Smoke Wagon. That's, that's a sign of youth, I would venture to guess then. Bingo. So like I said, I, I'll give it at the max six. But if somebody told me it was four, I'd be like, eh. Okay. I mean, it's not absolutely horrible. No. Can I sit and sip on this? Yeah. But it drinks like it's 110, 111 proof. You know, it's not like, holy smokes, this is 111. It certainly doesn't drink that way. It drinks more of like 97, 98. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's not the case for this one, but. So not an $80 bottle, which I think is what those guys It are. is not. Yeah, I did say that. Yeah, no, it is not. I mean, I hate to kick them in the shin, but yeah, no. What we're getting, what we're paying for this. Well, if you see the marketing they're putting out there, man. Like oh, they're, they're putting out some marketing. They're, they're not marketing for whiskey drinkers. They're marketing for like, you know, the guys oh. who just want to look cool ah. with the bottle of whiskey. Yeah, that's like that. it. The guys who, who will go to the pool in order a $400 bottle of Grey Goose that you can buy for $49.99 <laughs> all day long. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, because it, they're it, at the, at yeah, the pool. It's, like, it's the guys in, like, the Scotch world who, you know, they – I remember I was talking to these two – these couple guys once at the liquor store, and, I mean, they spent money on whiskey, but they were, like, debating if they wanted to buy, like, a Macallan 18 or a Macallan Rare Cask, and I was like, I mean, 18 is the better whiskey. Um, you know, we're talking – and they're like, yeah, man, we're just going to pound this thing tonight, and I was just like – then who cares? Like just whatever. Just fucking get whatever one looks cooler. Because <laughs> you're not yeah. there for the whiskey. Um, and that was, I mean, that was the thing. It was like it was just a, they wanted to have the status of like our night on the, the town drinking. We drank expensive Macallan. We, you know, we went to this strip club. We drove this BMW or Mercedes. Like that was our night. We we'd stayed in the penthouse at the hotel because you know. Didn't matter how nice the penthouse was, we just had to have the status. It was just like one of those things. I'm like, oh, then you guys do whatever you want, man. I, I ain't part of this. Did you figure this out, Mark? Yeah, it took a minute though, brother. Thank you, Neophyte. Appreciate hey, it. Dude. That, that sounds like a night downtown Louisville with us, Dustin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Dan, have you had any of the uh, Blue Run yet? Hey, I have. I feel like I got sent a sample of it, maybe from Independent Joe when I did that, like, sample battle with him. Mm -hmm. And I think I ranked it pretty low. This like definitely a, would not be high yeah. if it was a blind, you know, Dan, for me. Dan, what was oh, yeah. So I'm just I, like, I don't even yeah. remember. Yeah, I mean, well, let's be real. J Joe basically is a Blue Run uh, marketing uh, agent. He just doesn't do <laughs> it officially. Uh, and that's not a knock on him by any means. It's just like, let's be real. Joe is one of those guys who he buys pretty much everything. And so he's in a place to review whiskeys that no one else has reviewed. And, well, no one's reviewing Blue Run anymore because it's not very good. So Joe's put out a ton of reviews on Blue Run that no one else has done. So, I mean, and mind you, that's a real value add to the community. Yeah, because we, we had we, we had, had all the 
we had all the blue runs at a friend of ours place in Lexington when we were over. And they weren't bad, but not. You guys had their high round? Yeah. That's what that I'm drinking right favorite. now. What about 14 year? You guys had the 14 year? I yeah. had the 13 year, the first one they did. It's. 13.5 they put out, 13 point by, uh, the 13.5. Was better than the fourteen year. I think I, that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean the thing is, and no disrespect to the man, but um, now so Blue Run's a bunch of marketing douchebags and Jim Rutledge, who is a legend. But Jim Rutledge's profile of what he's been putting out is safe, boring, but well done bourbon, and that's what he's done with his cream of Kentucky. That's what he's done with. Blue Run to an even harsher extent, and then there's another brand I can't think of it that he's been a part of doing their their picks yeah. too, and he's just he's just he he's a safe, easy drinking kind of picker. Which I'm not going to knock it, but when I'm paying premium prices, I don't want safe. I want wow. And you know what? If you miss the mark, cool. At least you tried. Well, that's where it'll be interesting to see what he actually produces out of his new distillery, which he's breaking ground on. So, no, do you know what's uh, what's religious age there, uh, Chris? I gotta tell you the truth. Jim, Jim is late seventies. Yeah, I'm, he, he he's at that age where like he's not going to be around to see when his stuff peaks. Yeah, not. I had the reflection one this year. It's no good. Nobody on nobody on this stage today would find it uh, something that would be recognizable for you to mention. But at the fourteen year, the fourteen year was pretty good. Thirteen and a half, I think, was even better than the fourteen. Um, but the uh, the reflection series that came out this year, no. I bought a couple of one of the cream of Kentucky's. I think it was the 13 or the 13 and a half. I can't remember which one it was. And yeah. then I've got a single barrel, 12 and a half, which I'm told Jim Rutledge wasn't that big a part of. And I mean, I'll say this, the cream of Kentucky, those, I want to say they're 13, but they could be 13 and a half. Those were about a hundred bucks when I got them. And that was a good price for those. Like that was actually like a really good deal. Um, I would highly, highly, highly recommend those for what I paid. It was either, 100, 120. And yeah, I, I agree, Dave. Rutledge is a legend. It's just since he's left Four Roses and he's doing stuff like on his own, he's just, he's yeah. taken a very safe, conservative approach to those picks. And for the premium pricing you're getting on those things, it's just not what I want for that. If I'm paying that kind of money, I, I want. Get it. I, I get that. I want some wow. And Rutledge get is going for. Well, you know, I mean, it's pretty solid, but I'm like, man, that's not what I pay big bucks for. No, no, no. I'll tell you what, brother, I get that. I understand it in terms of the whiskey and how you pour it against others. But Jim Rutledge is who he is. I mean, he made some of the greatest four roses barrels you ever tasted. So, you know, I, I, I got a loyalty to that, but I, I don't know that the, uh, I, I can't say at the end of the day that Blue Run is all what it is. But the 14-year Blue Run, um, I, I really like it. I, I got the Reflection 1 series. I could, I could put that on the garbage barrel. Uh, but the High Rye is not too bad either. But I don't think it's overpriced for the High Rye. What, are, what is it based on what I could buy it for? Yeah, what, what did you pay for it? I can't remember what those were going for. Uh I think I paid for the high ride ninety dollars and the one fourteen. I think I paid one hundred twenty. That's a lot of money for the high ride without an age statement, man. That's that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it, but it, it tastes bad. Um, well, but I mean, like I mean, again, here, here's a nine year age stated cast strength Elijah Craig barrel proof pick for eighty bucks. I mean, I got it, I got it, brother. I got one on the shelf too, but. Here's an experimental, you know, bourbon that uses, you know, oatmeal and chocolate malt, fifty bucks. I have that one too, but in terms of the 
taste and value. I'm, you, you, you got one of these, buddy? That's nice. You got one of these winter whiskeys? What's that? You got one of the winter whiskeys? I don't. I don't have that. Okay. Yeah, th this is this is a whole other level. This is the best new riff bourbon I've ever had. I got I got, I got to run, guys. I just heard the dog wake up, so I got to go let him out. Hey, I, I egg rolls that. demanding. Oh, that that the roll the roll needs to be let out. So <laughs> say, say hi to Aaron for us, uh, Dan. We'll do. We'll do. Yep. Good to see you guys. Have Take a good day. Good to see you, man. Happy Talk New Year. Well, the, I'll, I'll be interested to see actually what um, Jim Rutledge has got uh, coming out in a, probably in the next year or two, probably, because he's got... Okay. 160, 20-year-old bourbon, you know? Well, we, 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 when we did a uh, tour at um, Castle and Key back when Marianne was still there, uh, we went round with Marianne. We've walked out of her lab. I had the GoPro on. We're walking on Lil, and we've walked out, and here's Jim Rutledge standing at the uh, the mash tubs, and uh, he was putting down a whole heap of stuff for himself at uh, Castle and Key, and uh, we've got a whole video on from Jim talking about what he's doing. He's there going, oh, it's all confidential at the moment, what we're doing, and blah blah blah. <laughs> So, I mean, is he using the same Brilliant. mash bill they're using over there? No, he, his own no, he did. It, it was all his own mash bill and everything, which is what I think he's – what he's done there is sort of what he's out to do with his own distillery. Gotcha. Yeah, I think – I, I got to be honest with you guys. I think he dumped it on the Castle and Key. It, I, oh. I, get, I just don't think it was good. That's a disappointing uh, release this past year, Castle and Key. I, I'd had some of the young Pinnocks that they were putting out. I mean, they were sourcing or they were bottling the worst freaking MGP I've ever had. Hands down, they were, I don't know who the heck was involved in that whole, how they were picking MGP, but I, I didn't, I didn't. Just because I've said I don't like MG, young MGP that much, I've never said I dislike young MGP. I straight up disliked every Pinnock I ever had. To the point where there were a couple, man. I've got some bottles. I, I, I actually gave them away. I, I literally left my old apartment and said to the, like the maintenance guys, enjoy some whiskey. And I hope those guys don't have a palate like mine because I thought that was garbage. But maybe it works well with, you know, whiskey sours. I don't know. It, it ain't for fucking drinking, man. That shit was – hey, there's Joe. We're just talking about you and being a, a kind of a blue run uh, buyer of everything. So uh, – Cheers, brothers. Happy New Year. Cheers. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to you, Joe. Cheers. We were literally just talking about you, Joe. Good to see you on here. Don't want anybody saying I was talking behind his back. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I actually ran upstairs because I, I, I just saw that he uh, – sorry, I, I, I didn't know you were on this for two hours already. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. I said I was talking I about you. Joe I said I bet like, you we could sneak in before Joe back. knows it. Joe, I was talking behind his back. I was like, because I meant everything in good in, in a in a good way. I, I didn't even hear. I didn't. What did you say about? Uh, so we were talking about uh, Blue Run, and I was uh -huh. like, you know, most people in the whiskey community have not been big fans of it, but you know, uh, Joe, who's the guy who uh, let's just say it, you buy a little bit of everything. You have bought a ton of those things, and you've done a real service to the community by reviewing a lot of them. And, you know, uh, whereas, you know, most of us have kind of moved on, don't want to buy them that we think they're yeah. priced. Well, I've, like, I've kind of stopped buying them. I, I only bought one this year. Uh, the rest of them I bought last year. Gotcha. Well, but you did a community of service. Cheers, by Whiskey of them. And, You know, you gave favorable, but hey, Sierra. I kind of looked, you know, if I, if I read behind, you know, if I read you right, you liked them, yeah, Vic. you weren't impressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To, I mean, I, I take it back. I bought two this year. <laughs> Maybe for everything. I'm not sure now. Now, now, now I'm like, I'm going to call myself a liar. I don't know. I, I forgot now. You, you mean last year, Joe? Yeah, I like that one right there. I got that one. That one's that one's good. The 13.5 for me was the best one out of them. They were. Uh, you're right. The 13.5 was better than the 14. Am I right, Joe? 13 was the first one they did, right? I believe 13. And then they, they came out weirdly uh, with the 13.5 and then, then the 14. Well, uh, Jim did the same thing with his cream of Kentucky brand. He did a 13, he had a 12, a 12, five, a 13, a 13, five. 
I don't think I've actually seen any new cream in Kentucky, so I don't know if I just missed them or what. Uh, I've seen them. I just, I've just never. I, I, I just thought the like it was kind of like you were trying to replace something like a King of Kentucky or something just, just by the name, the way it sounded. I guess. Well, Cream of Kentucky, I think, came out before King of Kentucky actually. Did it? it was, and it, it's actually it's an old. Both King of Kentucky and Cream of Kentucky are like old brands they brought back. So it's not a play on that. Although most people, for some reason, I kept getting texts. Well, from that's people. what I think. I went, whenever I hear the name, I, I'm thinking Cream of Kentucky, King of. I was like. I, I I'm telling you, Joe. I've gotten 15 text messages. People, hey man, I found one of those whiskeys, you, bourbons you love. And I'm like, nah, that's that's cream, man. I said king, not the same <laughs> yeah. thing at all. Uh, and then I'm like, but that by the way, that at that price, I'd actually buy that because I, honestly, I thought the cream of Kentucky was better than the Blue Run, and they were generally a little cheaper. Yeah. So I I actually did think those were a little better. That said, I mean, we're talking. Yeah, I've, I've had a few samples, but um, I've never really, I, it never made me like, was like, wow, I got to go get one of these bottles. So I just never did. I got a couple of the 13 years. It was before like 13 year Barton was everywhere where like it was just like a normal thing. Yeah. So I bought those all excited. And then like about six months later, there was just all this Barton. I'm like, guess I didn't need to buy a bunch of those. <laughs> But I got into like one, one twenty, so like it was a pretty good price. For well, them. that's that's yeah. because Barton had they they had a whole heap of juice from a lot of places, which had to get out. So yeah, well, I mean, hell, I mean, I think the twelve year seventeen ninety two is delicious. I wish that they was had a they had a real. rickhouse fall down for Christ's sake. So you know they had a whole heap of juice to get rid of. <laughs> but it's weird because like that's one of the only like distillers that they don't. Like all of their premium old bourbon, they gave away to other people. Yeah, they don't sell it themselves. Weird. It's weird. Like the oldest whiskey they put out is a twelve year. Like I don't get it. I have one. Yeah, I've, I've, it's, I've, it's I've, really I've strange it, never as to why they didn't yeah. um, put out a lot of high, high aged, high uh, premium stuff themselves down at Barton's. Yeah, they, they could have put out, you know, 15 years, 1792 for $200, and it would have sold just fine. Oh, yeah. I don't get yeah. it. If I'm not mistaken, the Hickory Hill is a Barton product, and uh, I believe that's 15 years. Well, I mean, you've got the 16-year Calumet. That's Barton. you got the yeah. Sam Houston 15. Are, are you just Barton. talking about their their own name, a brand, uh, on their bottles or something? Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah, they're like, they're yeah Barton never did, like, their own official, like, brand release. Oh, got you, got you. Release. Like, yeah. they never did. They, never, they, they sold it all to, like, let other people make all the money off of it. It's weird. Oh, yeah. Which is unusual for Cesarac. Extremely. And, uh, and and the other thing is, it turned out that most of that stuff was actually really, really good. Uh, yeah. Did you uh, you you guys doing some type of list or anything on on your channels? I am not like, you know, top five for <clears throat> last year, or top ten. No, but you know, like I tell people, the the whiskey that has surprised me the most because I was just dead set against pretty much anything that came out of that state because they didn't find anything I liked was the, the, you hated a whole state <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. It's still Austin. Uh, I really, really liked yeah, this. That's and a it good changed one. me to go back to Texas for, uh, to trying, you know, more of their whiskey. Yeah. Because I that's put it all in one, basket and balconies and they were all bad yeah so i didn't go back to them until that and then i had the iron root harbinger and oh my gosh the the whiskey so who, who is he um eric eric wait eric wait uh, he did a uh i think balconis was his uh, american whiskey morning or something like that Need to fix that. I haven't watched Eric's video yet, but yeah, Eric's a big. I mean, Eric's a big fan of the Texas stuff. He's been down there four or five times. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, my, Mike and I are wanting to do some kind of like. I, I'm thinking we we'll might just do like a live stream at some point where we kind of do a recap on the year, and we'll do like. I was I was telling Mike I think we should just do like 
we'll do our whiskey of the year, which will just be the best whiskey we reviewed, which I think yeah. we both are. We do both you guys have a scoring pick. thing that you guys do? Huh? Do you guys score your whiskey? Yeah, we do score. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to pick our whiskey of the year, like just one. But I think what we're going to do then is to do a top five surprise whiskeys of the year. Yeah. Like, so like the five whiskeys we reviewed this year that kind of surprised us and kind of, you know, hit above what we thought. Yeah. I think that'll be kind of what we do during the video. Um, but it's going to be a live stream. I just, I mean, it's so much work to like. Yeah. I, oh. I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a top 10, I guess, sometime this month. Um, but it's going to be a live stream. Hopefully I can, uh, I'm trying to find, uh, somebody to do, uh, like I'm going to send them the, uh, I already asked a couple of people that I'm going to send them, um, 10 whisk 10 whiskeys that I feel are my top 10 and then have them blind them. And I'm going to blind them also. Of course, they're not going to be in the same order. But see if we have the same type of outcome, and I thought it'd be pretty fun to do that. That's a cool idea, yeah. I will tell you this though: label the video top five because top fives get way more views than top tens. Oh yeah, it's one of those things. Like if you look at like the like YouTube, like you know, analytics stuff, they always say top five is what people want because they want it shorter. No. Oh. Well, it's a live, so. Hey, you know what? Just lie to the people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm used to lying to people about how great some whiskeys are. Well, if anybody's <laughs> ever watched Joe you know, do a, a blind with somebody, he is the biggest poker lying son of a bitch on whiskey tube. Who's that <laughs> lying? You man. Like I was, I was talking like it was a bourbon bar. He was just like, man. Every time I thought something tasted that way, Joe gave me some weird comment, and I totally <laughs> thought it was different. <laughs> well, I was trying That's to throw weird. him off. Like Joe, Joe's the guy. It didn't work with Dan. Hey man, I'm just saying, like you're the one guy on the whiskey tube I'm not playing poker with. I've seen you. You're too good. <laughs> it didn't work with Dan though. He didn't throw him off at all. <laughs> he just kept nodding his head and just just keep going. And I'm like, damn it. He's he's clearly seen enough of you where he's like, I know this guy's lying. <laughs> yeah. This son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time I see you pull it off, I'm just like, you know what? I have more respect for. Uh, for Joe's poker face. And then again, I'm like, wait a minute. Of course he's got a poker face. He really has a beard face. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see my facial expression. Somebody, I think it was the other day, the other day I was on one of these live streams and they're like, Hey, can you smile? I was like, cause you can't tell whether I'm smiling or anything. Cause it's a facial hairs, teen wolf stuff. I guess, I guess they don't know you're smiling every day, Joe. Every well, yeah. day. I mean, what's not to smile like, what about? Do you mean? I'm literally my cheeks hurt. I'm smiling so much so right now. You can always yeah. tell when Joe's smiling, he bounces. <laughs> there you go. You, know what? You, bounce. bounce. You, you get this little vibration through you when you get, when, yeah, when you've got a smile on your face. What am I, a bobblehead? Right? <laughs> 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 you're, you're more of a bobble body. <laughs> yeah. I did yeah, a video yesterday and I didn't put drive. it out. I, I, did a, I did a Hirsch video uh, for the, because I, I was, and I was supposed to put it out yesterday, you know, as my last video of 2022, and I didn't put it out. I'm still holding on to it because I don't know, because I, I started talking about um, people who talk about other channels on their channel and to talk about like the top tens. Oh, you know, people say they do a top 10 or they do a top 25 and they, and they started like talking bad mouth in other channels and they didn't name channels. They just said in general. And it's like. What do you care if if people, you know, do a top ten, do a top five, do a top hundred? You know, what what does it matter? You know, I, mean, I was actually thinking it. about doing like a a series where Mike and I like took other people's like lists, yeah, and like did a re like re reviewed it kind of and like said you know kind of made a label. We'll be the judge of that, like you know, best this, yeah, because we we kind of did that with yeah. um the uh, our uh, so. You know, um, Roy and Ralphie, they did their, like, um, online scotch whiskey thing. Yeah. So we reviewed uh, Victoriana, which won this year's Whiskey Ooh, of the Year. yes, Victoriana. And so I, I put Blend that little, Scotia. like, label on there, like, Whiskey of the Year, we'll be the judge of that. You know, a little. Yeah, that's like, cool. That's in fun, though. You know, oh, yeah, something. yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, I would I never do like, it. Like, taking it overboard and be like, yeah. uh, they, you know, people putting out top tens and stuff like that. I'm just going to tell you what I drank through the year, and you'd be happy with that, you know, type uh, yeah. shit. No, 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 no. We, we. 
I, well, the other thing we did this year was um, so we put out a review where we just gave a scathing review to a bottle, uh -huh. and another channel brought brought our review on. They were just like, I don't know what these guys are talking about, and it was very respectful. They were really cool. Yeah, and so so it was Kilcarran Eight, the port finished. So for Christmas. We reviewed the Kilcarran 8 um, bourbon cast from a couple years ago, which kind of is like a – it's it's a bad whiskey to review at this point because nobody can get it. It's from a long time ago, and it's from a distillery where everybody buys it up, and it's like secondary. And it's not oh. a great whiskey. That said, I thought it would be fun to do that because – so what we did is we actually had Mike and I with our heads put on like the Grinch's body. Yeah, yeah. And then we had Rob and Jeremy who kind of, you know, made fun of us a little bit. Um, <laughs> As Santa, and then we put them on a bottle of the Kilcarran Eight, like it was the sleigh. Yeah, and we're like, "Are we being Grinchy?" And then I've got Mike just saying, "Young." <laughs> so I, I hope those guys see it at some point and like you know get a kick out of it because it was intended as nothing more than just having a little fun for Christmas. Yeah, and I think that's what whiskey tube should be. Is like we should yeah, all be fun. Mean, but, I mean, you know, I I like. Slightly. I mean, it doesn't matter if I agree with somebody's list or not. You know, I'm. I mean, I don't. I probably didn't taste some of their stuff that they tasted, and it ain't yeah. that I agree with it or disagree with it. I would. I like to see the different people who drink different whiskeys and like different things that I like. It's that's that's I, what I thought it was all about. You know, just. Yeah. I mean, because that's. If everybody liked the same thing, I mean, at some point we'd probably yeah, exactly. just, be, just be talking in, in circles about the same damn thing. Exactly. You know? Everybody's right except whiskey advocate who picked it, that Jack Daniels. Oh, and they're just fucking wrong. <laughs> hey, don't, everybody don't, else, don't, is you right. don't have to tell me because I made a, I made a my five top disappointing whiskeys of the year already, and that was one of them. You know. I, that was I, before that came out. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make Mike and I do the I'm gonna make Mike do a review with me on that thing, and we're just gonna <laughs> absolutely roast the fact, and we're not even gonna reference them by name. I'm just like, and a certain magazine. <laughs> yeah. Now, from from rumors have it, these guys drink blends. They wear two polo shirts with both of the collars popped, and I'm not gonna say this, but they may have used roofies in college. <laughs> Just saying, because let me tell you, those are the only people who think this is a 97. Well, I think I upset some people, too, because of my Knob Creek review, my Knob, Knob 18 review. Were you not a fan? You know, I, I just think I think it drinks thin, you know. Um, I didn't get that. I mean, of course, the 25th, 25th anniversary was at a higher proof point. Um, I just thought it had more flavor. And then even at the 15-year at 100 proof, I thought I thought it, it just had a little bit more uh, mouthfeel, whereas the 18 year for some weird reason, I I just thought it was thin. I I don't think it's bad. I think it falls in line with that profile. Yeah, I just I, think I, for I, me, I, it's I have a the 18 thin. and 15 side by side with um, the 14 year, the 2001. Yeah. Well, it's 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 like going and just drinking a 120 proof and then a hundred proof knob creek. Well, the the the, the twenty five the, the hundred proof Dob Creek does drink thin. Well, no, I didn't do that though. No, no, I didn't drink one saying, and the other. I drank, I started off with that hundred proofer. Yeah, yeah but I, the the eighteen is is a hundred proofer, and I I, I agree. No, with the a lot fifteen. That no, but the eighteen is a hundred proof. Yeah, yeah. So, so is the fifteen, and yeah. so is like the so is the two thousand one. Yeah. But see, this is their thirtieth anniversary, which I don't get. Why wouldn't they call it their 30th anniversary at 18 years? You know, they can add that, all that stuff in there. But you call it your 30th anniversary. They could have left that at somewhat of a cast strength or higher proof point. Yeah. And I think, I it, think would it, it would have been, been a lot better, better at a higher proof. I, I agree. I, I will say this. I, I do think the 18 had some more depth and complexity than the uh, 15. Yeah. But I think the 15 just kind of worked as a whiskey as well or better. Yeah, now, for, that's for I really like that. My my wife picked that one over over the twenty fifth year too. She, now she that's like a that proof point. I, I I didn't like the twenty fifth. I thought the twenty fifth was bad. really. I I absolutely did not enjoy. That's one of the only Knob Creeks I ever. Okay, had now you're wrong. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and I, I wish I still had the twenty fifth so I could go back to it because every time I had that, I didn't like it. Now, now, do you have a 
a real 25th or do you have a 25th store pick? Because that's the other weird thing with the 25 year. No, I have the, they the, the, store the, pick. the 25th anniversary 25th. in a store pick. Which was so weird to me. I'm like, how can you have like a batched product and then do store picks for the so I'm thinking maybe all the 25s were actually single barrels. Uh, there's a so maybe they all vary because the one I had was not yes. not good, and I love it. Jogged, you jogged my oh, memory. Anthony, on I'm going to be like, heading out of here, bud. I figured it's got to be getting close to 3 a.m. for you. Yeah, I got work in the morning, so I got to head on. You're working out. on a holiday, man. Not in it's, his profession. <laughs> healthcare don't care what day it is, man. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> Mm-mm. But all right, hey, you guys have a good one. It was a pleasure chatting with you. I didn't Are say you gonna much, be off? but it was good listening to you. Are you going to be off on Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll be off. All, all right. right, hey, talk have a good night, brother. everyone. Cheers, see you later. Cheers. Happy New Year. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember the details on the twenty fifth well enough to comment, but I, maybe those were all single barrels, and if that's the case, maybe they all varied. I don't know. The one I had just let me go get it real quick. I'll yeah. tell you all the details. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. By the way, we now know there's whiskey that's not behind Joe or under him. Which no, he Joe's whiskey is even more grandiose. He has it. Oh no, he's got stuff everywhere. So, yeah, he's he's not quite as bad as Matt, but he's getting no. there. I bet you no, he's, he's, he's not. faster than Matt did because Matt still got whiskeys from when he was 22 years old. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we know we've been to Matt's house and. Matt cracks me up. I'm like, how have you? How is it you, like you don't kill whiskey bottles ever? Like, how do you manage? Like, the only bottles he kills is like pappies and stuff because he brings them out for friends and they just kill yeah. it. I mean, like, we basically were pulling out bottles for the night that we we're at Matt's, and he's climbing over cases of bottles to get to other cases to dig down in, and, and but he knows where absolutely every bottle is, although he. Did pull out a bottle going, oh, I didn't know I had a backup of that. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, Joe, it might be on the card that comes with the bottle, too. Is that not one that came with a little card? Yeah, it has one. Yeah. It might be that. It might be where the details yeah, are. Uh, well, I mean, on the bottle, it says single barrel. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Single barrel. So then, yeah. So the, the, there's, there's the issue. I just thought for a 30th anniversary, I was, I thought like, just something better than than what previous anniversary editions were. Was it the twenty fifth? Not I thought they, they were more focused on the age because it's you know the age eighteen years, and they they're selling it as Knob Creek eighteen. I I didn't even know it was thirtieth anniversary until I got the bottle. I mean, it, it says it, it has it on like the little tag there. I mean, it, it's yeah, not... it does have it on the tag, but I didn't know that's what it was. Yeah, I didn't advertise. I that didn't know it was the anniversary, anniversary bottle. Well, yeah. I, honestly, I, th- I think I, honestly, I mean, the thing is, from a marketing standpoint, if I, I'm more likely to buy a 18 year old than I am the 30th anniversary. Well, I have a few 30th anniversaries, so I, I couldn't tell you I, I would buy either one more than the other. But you, you I mean, you say 18 year old Knob Creek, and you got me excited because I've never seen a Knob Creek that old. Well, that's what got me excited. Bad. Of stuff that you haven't used yet. Yeah. Because it was um, I mean that, that said, I mean I, I I honestly think the 18 and the 15 are neck and neck, and it really comes down to what you like in your bourbon more. And yeah. Which you know, at the end of the day, yeah. when you say that, you should probably buy the 15 because it's cheaper and it's available. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I, I haven't bought yeah. a batch of 215. I haven't bought the one that doesn't come with the box. So I don't know if those have gotten worse or better. Have you tried any of those like two thousand the ones that come in a box, the two thousand one, two thousand three ones? Yeah, I've got I've got a 2001 in the other room. How, how is that? Because I I see it I see it and it's not that expensive. I was um, is it worth the purchase? Uh, yeah, yeah, the one I've got definitely was worth it. Now I know there's like a batch one and a batch two of the 2001, and I can't remember which one I have, but I, mm-hmm. I do think the one I have is supposed to be the better of the two. It's kind of like decades though, like there's two batches of decades from Wild Turkey, and I can't I think I have the one I have the lesser <laughs> regarding uh-huh. the decades. Which means I, of course, need to try the other one. Yeah, I mean, All as right, long ben. as I have one of them, I would be fine. Hey, ben. Another years. <laughs> well, one of, one of my buddies has the other decade, so we're at some point we're going to get together and try them both Cheers, side by side. If he hasn't sold it, because he did, he 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 lost his job for about he lost his job, and then he decided to go without a job for two years while he was 
he also bought a house like right before he lost his job. And so he decided to spend two years like working on the house and making it better yeah. while his uh, girlfriend worked and bitched at him the whole time for not making money. So he sold a lot of whiskey. No, oh. like said for a long time there, he was the driver for um, Coca Cola, which meant he was getting his truck off the same time they were getting the whiskey off their truck. Yeah. He built up one hell of a bourbon collection real fast. I'm sure. Like at one point we were talking, he had like now. he had like 15 bottles of 10 year and a lot B Van Winkles combined, and like he picked up in like two years. Like he's just like, yeah, I was I was in every lottery at every Kroger in the state because I was at every Kroger in the state. Well, it's easy to do then, especially when you're working and you're you're in there. Yep. Yeah. And they know who you are. Well, even like the fact they knew who he was. I mean, it was just the fact that he was there when the truck was get unloading. And he's just like, yeah, let me grab, I'll take that. I'll take that. That guy got more bottles of Booker's, thir- oh, sorry, they, 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 no, Baker's 13 year than the state of Kentucky released. Oh. <laughs> Which, by the way, Kentucky got somehow like basically didn't get any bottles. It was crazy. Like that bottle almost like there was like 30 bottles that came to the state and they sent all the rest outside. And we're like, they made it here. Okay. That's, that's the thing. It made it. And his, one of his neighbors literally was one of the higher ups for beam at the time. And he was talking to her. She's like, yeah, here, call this guy in Indiana. He can help you out. Hey, Anthony, are, are both, those Frey ranches are both those store picks right there that you got behind. Yes, you? they are. Are, are yes. they two different store picks or the same? Yes, they are. So, this one is a local. Well, they're both local for me. Um, this one, uh, Adam and Mike have it also. Yeah, it's out of this food. is from a place here in, in Vegas called Corey's. Mm-hmm. And this is just good. I mean, it's 130. Well, they say 137, but it's really like 133 because they, they can't uh, figure out 67.85 ABV, right? But it's okay. I don't care. So it's around 133 on the proof. This is real good. And mm-hmm. I just picked up another one. Here it's 124, and it's from uh, Liquor World here. Okay. And oh man, I'm I'm so happy to get this because they were blowing them out for 39.99. Wow! I know, and I can only get two. That's crazy. I know, I know, because these are normally around 80 bucks. 90 bucks depending did they did they uh, sell out uh, oh gosh gone within the hour i bought two online oh damn yeah and then when i got there i said by any chance and uh she says they went so quick we weren't sure we were going to be able to cover them yeah. but we were able to before we cut it off and said oh there's no more left which one, now what proof point do you like it better? Do you like it at 127? Better I love it at like 130, 133. I just think it it really brings out the flavor in the Frey Ranch superbly. I mm-hmm. do not like standard Frey Ranch in either the bourbon or the rye. You don't like I the standard don't like one? It. No, I, it's just not my just not my jam. It's not my cup of tea, Joe. But these proofs, or these proofs, the higher proof. I really, in the I really like the standard one. That's why I bought the uh, cast strength. These, it, it, this is my jam. This is my wheelhouse when it comes yeah. to Frey Ranch. I just, I'm just not fond of the ones. I've tried them repeatedly and they are okay. Mm-hmm. There's just, it's just not for me. No, I got you. Yeah. It's just not, I don't know. There, there's that, I call it the Frey Ranch funk mm. about them. But when I get the higher proof, that either drops off or just fades to where it doesn't bother me. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm a fan of the picks. I mean, I, 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 I say it loud and I say that proud. 
the picks or where it's at. And, Liquor uh, World. Yeah, is that in I Henderson? just wish. Pardon me. Is that in Henderson? Um, they they are, and there's one right off of the 215 and Trop. That's the closest to me. There's one not far from the strip. So I keep saying behind Monte Carlo. Well, they don't call it Monte Carlo anymore. They call it the park. It's one's right oh, so there. It, but so that's kind of a chain there. It is. Oh, okay. So, and um, but the problem with the one when you're around the strip because there's a there's like two or three. Yeah. The prices are stupid because it's by the strip. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, since we got Joe on here, Joe, I don't think I've mentioned this to you personally, but this is a bottle you need to pick up. This right here. Is that the Cannon Gate? Cannon Gate 11 year. This is Heaven Hill Distillate. That was barreled. Oh, in, hold in on, hold on. He's writing. Joe's writing. <laughs> when you say when you say you have to get it, Joe's ears perk up. Wait Can a minute. Eleven here. You can pick this up from the Whiskey World uh -huh. right now. It's available about two hundred bucks. This is Cast Strength Heaven Hill that was bottled. Oh, sorry, barreled and matured in Kentucky for a few years, and then the barrels were shipped to Scotland, where they finished aging, uh -huh. and. It is unbelievable. It's it's a light color because I I believe from what I've the research I've done is this is not technically bourbon. It's an eighty percent corn, so it's technically a corn whiskey. Yeah, it's like the minimum. Honest to God, man, it drinks like an apple forward, sweeter, less dark ECBP. So it's eighty corn, and I, I'd have to look up what the rest of it is, but uh -huh. it's um I, I'm I, from what I've there's nothing official, but my understanding is, I, well, I know for he a fact. Heaven Hill is my favorite distillery. So if it's from Heaven Hill, that's why I probably. Yeah. This is Heaven Hill. It drinks, I'm telling you, like an apple cinnamon um, ECBP with like less darkness. But like it makes up for these other fruit notes. Yeah. Blew me away. Um, blew me away. It's like 200 bucks roughly. Like when you convert to, you know, um, Euro, it pound, whatever, like depending on what the exchange rate is today. Oh, do you have? To, oh, so it's it's coming from out of state. Oh, yeah, yeah. you, you got to pick this up from uh, the whiskey world. Um, so it's going to be from the UK because this is bottled in the UK. It they aged this in Scotland for like half of its life, and so it takes on a whole different flavor profile because it spent half its life in Scotland. Yeah. So well, I mean, I I can't tell you that this is one hundred percent two hundred dollar whiskey yeah the fact that you can't get something that's got this play this this profile because you have to literally have aged the, the whiskey in two different climates what makes this thing so interesting and i i really can't say there's another whiskey i've had like it what's what's whiskey world uh it's it's a website um the whiskey world.com they're oh, great yeah. the, it'll be to your door in three days man oh really you will be shocked at the delivery time they'll charge about 35 bucks shipping you okay. pay tax like at the end of the day honestly it's cheaper to buy from there than to buy at your local store usually okay unless you're talking about like local bourbons and then you'll pay a premium obviously but every now and then they'll have a bourbon you can't get locally so eh. but if you want to buy know. scotches and stuff you'll save a shit ton of money buying off there and again i've, I've bought whiskey from california and i bought whiskey from the whiskey world and the stuff from Whiskey World got to my house a week faster than the California guys got did, to. Did you get oh, that Lagavulin yes. 12, the uh, Phoenix or whatever that is? That Dixon Deadman one you're talking about? No, no, no. Uh, Lagavulin 12, yeah, the new oh, one. Oh, 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 oh. I, I, I didn't, Joe, because... So, Lagavulin you 12, it? have you ever tried about, it? It's always been about the fact that they use what they call traditional oak casks, which are refilled bourbon casks. And this one, they decided to use virgin oak, like a bourbon would. Oh, yeah. And every single Lagavulin I've had with virgin oak, I did not enjoy. And so they were $170, $175 here. And I just said, man, I that's a lot of money for a whiskey. I think it's not going to be good. So I, I didn't pick it up. Yeah, I paid uh one sixty out the door. 
At least you got a better price. Yeah. They, they wanted 170 here. And I was just like, man, I that's a lot of money for uh, and then I would have had to still pay tax. So it would have that's been it. I'm drinking pouring it pouring it right now. You don't like it? No, I don't know. I haven't tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, definitely I'm not, try I'm, it. I'm not, you know, I haven't bought a lot of scotch. I just saw it and I saw it was a 2022 and I yeah. was like, I was like, man, I don't know if uh, maybe I should try it out. Cause I, I went to a tasting and we tried all the Octomores for this year releases and uh, a bunch of other. You know, That's cool. Of uh, Brooklotics, uh releases like nine peated scotches in one night and that i was actually turned off to it i didn't really like i was like oh, i don't want to ever drink a peated scotch again <laughs> but then i saw it and i was like you know it's not bad you know because i did like the 13.2 that, that, that's gonna be that, that the, the dot twos are always wine finishes so that, yeah, that's, that probably, really, that's probably that's probably different really from that lagavulin you could get <laughs> what's that I said the the thirteen dot two is probably as different from that logable as you can get within the world of peat. Oh, okay, so it's going to be lighter on peat on that. No, no, you're it's it's you're going to get no, no. It's not that it's going to be well. I mean, technically, Octomores are high peat, but so what Octomore does? Yeah. When you're um distilling whiskey, um, you cut the first part of the of like the the whiskey coming through and the end of it. Those are the tails. And those have like the those have like you know the parts the whiskey that people used to say would make make you blind and stuff. That's yeah. bullshit. But it has off profile flavors. Now the thing is, so what people do to get a smoother, cleaner whiskey is they cut those tails to narrow it down. Well, that's also where the peat, the phenol flavors from the peat are. So normally, you know, like you know, you're lagable and you cut like this. Octomore cuts like this and so they take which is a much more expensive thing to do but so despite the fact that it's a higher level of peat when it goes into the still they cut so much that they kind of cut some of the peat flavor that said they also that creates what octomores which is this incredibly clean whiskey that doesn't drink young despite being crazy young and it's because they took an economically ridiculously narrow cut so, um, so it's hard to compare because nobody cuts as narrow as they do, I think, for those bottles. And that's what makes Optimore Optimore. Right, yeah. Well, I'm going to drop off Anthony because uh, I've got entertainment beside me, Lil, working on a Christmas present. So. Uh, she is. Yeah, she's, she's building her police station. Police yeah, I was just going to say so. she's building her, her station house. Yeah, you should you should start a uh, channel and just have a being Will uh, making Legos. There you go. Compete with Ken. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I think Ken hey. will be like Lego my ego. I, 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 I still need to go. I, I am I am making a channel and I am putting that Derek uh, video as a short. <laughs> yeah. Well, you could you could do Derek Mid and South. Simon extracts just for a whole channel. So, oh, I, absolutely. I, I I might honestly, I think it might become the like, number one whiskey tube channel. I'll call it like Whiskey Tube After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's it's. I don't know what to do with my hands. That's Simon. I know, but <laughs> that's why I went. Mm. Oh God. Yep. Whiskey tube after dark, man. I'm telling you, that, that's what that's what we need. Hey, <laughs> that that could be. That could be the next thing. I I, I just gotta figure out what it what I, I don't know. I'll see what if it's easy to make turn a vertical video or sorry, a horizontal video into a vertical short, because that's where that thing will kill, man. I I'm telling you, men from the mid south have absolutely enormous dicks is the greatest line in it the history of the internet. It is. That that's it. <laughs> Righty, Evan. Well, All right. I'll still be in the background and chat, but yeah, my iPad's right. just about to die too. So I'll there you go. All later. Have a good one, guys. All right, guys. Cheers. See ya. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That that I uh, did you see that, Joe? That men from the mid south uh, thing that's been going on the last two nights. Um. No. The mid south. Yeah. yeah. Oh, his his comment. Derek had this comment on um, Burbin's uh, channel, 
and we've been talking about it on every single other channel. Like Deathless Dogs, he like clipped it, mm -hmm. and it's been playing everywhere, and it's amazing. And the best part is Derek can be completely blackout drunk. Yeah, he'll be articulate as hell. Yeah, and it was just so good because. And then he's hearing this clip and he goes, when did I say that and why? <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, you don't even remember saying it? No, I, I, I didn't uh, see that. And that was a legitimate three hours before he passed out that night. He t kept talking for three more hours. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, there, there is gold that night. Uh, David Bass, I have not. Uh, I did not get to get that. It's too expensive here. Um, and I'm not going to pay that. That kind of my I, although I'll pay a high price, I just wouldn't go as high as I've seen it. <laughs> you know, there's a limit to what I'll pay. Um, I've not even uh, seen that one like secondary here. Like I don't even know what the secondary is. Um, I've only seen it at a thousand dollars here, and I, oh, I just no. I just can't justify it. Two hundred dollars, David. We need. I'll we buy need it. To be buying. I'll buy it. <laughs> I mean, I think retail is 160, 180 range. So 200 is like basically like your store has to pay high taxes or something. Yeah. I mean, $200, I'll pay the high taxes. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I'm in on, I'm in on that. And the, um, the four roses buy to it. LA buy it, for maybe 400. And that's where I'm like, I'm out. Although I, did, I, I just discovered all day. I just had a couple of large expenses I wasn't expecting. So I am officially done buying whiskey for the next few months. Uh, so they, yeah, I, I think the last, I don't even remember which the last bottle I bought, but I, I told myself I'm, because I'm, I'm right now, all this is going to be gone. I'm moving this to another area and um, I'm going to have a different studio, little studio thing. Of, I'm putting it ever, ever, somewhere else. So it, it's a little bit, a little bit of a bigger wall. So I can have um, more stuff up and instead of on uh, under the table and upstairs. So, <laughs> I'm you know, so I'm way, Joe. I'm separated and it's going to, it's going to be a little bit, I, I think it's going to look a little nicer. It's just, um, I, the, the setup I have, cause I have the pool table kind of in the way. So I'm going to have to use the pool table as a, um, as a, where the camera's going to be set and all that. And I, I got to figure out how I'm going to stand or if I'm going to sit this time from now on. So, uh, like, I already got the that the the painting done of the room. So now I just gotta go and um, move everything. So um, I'm not gonna do any more videos until until that's all set up. And then I gotta do test videos and try to figure out like lighting and all this other stuff because it's oh, a different area. That will lighting not be can be a pain in the butt. Yeah, there is no doubt about that. That lighting is a yeah. But you got to go through that. I mean, yeah. you have to. And what what would probably be good is uh, not like for a private stream, Joe, when you're just kind of testing things. Yeah. So that you can set it up and say, okay, what's this look like? Da 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 da. Because I've done that before. I did this about the lighting. To you know, what's this look like? And I'm just like, oh, you need to get a little more light over here, a little more light over there. And I mean. <laughs> You, you'll figure it out. I mean, you've done yeah. it before. So, you know, I mean, because what you've got now is really good, but you're going to a whole new area. So that changes the whole dynamics. So anyway. Yeah. Can't wait to uh, figure that out. Seriously, David, if you're not going to buy it, let me know. I'll, I'll buy it from, I'll buy it from you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That price. Yeah. Not that we sell anything here or buy no. anything like that. No, no, I'm no, just no, saying. No, no. No, no, no. no. Because, he you know. expects you to give him the bottle for free as a gift. However, <laughs> he will provide you $250 for shipping. <laughs> Make sure, because you, your time shipping is valuable. That's right. Yeah. I mean, fuel is yeah. expensive. So the time he has to get in the vehicle, run over to Joe's house, drop it off. In fact, he'll probably right. do $275 <laughs> shipping because he knows that, you know, you may have a decent drive. It's possible. Right. You know, I'm just paying for gas, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your gas, it, the ship, you know, the shipping cost is high. Um, no, remember your time, you know, yeah. when you put that in the package, remember that, you know, you're a premium worker. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let me tell you, man, I will pay extra for that properly done bubble wrap. <laughs>
Has any of you ha tried in that new one that came out though from Parker's the uh, the double barreled or whatever it is? The only no. Parker's I've ever had was the double barrel rye from like uh -huh. 2019. I, I've I just I can't get those for some reason. The, like, the, the, you mean the heavy char rye? Yeah, heavy char rye. Yeah, you're right. Like they're, they're just they're freaking unicorns here. Um, I used to be I could get the four roses at least not too terribly hard here, but now I still see them. I just can't afford to buy them. Uh -huh. um, they they've just they're now like 2,500 points, and that's. I'll be honest. I've kind of cut back my spending here locally, so I don't have that kind of point balance. Just period. Yeah. Used to like last year. I I ended up I passed on the LE. I should have bought it, and instead I got a birthday bourbon. That was disappointing. Let me tell you. Oh, is it? Oh, so last year's birthday bourbon is a very good version of birthday bourbon over the last few years from what I've heard from others. And I've had, I've had like every other year. So I kind of have an idea. The problem is birthday bourbon is hundred proof and it drinks like 90 proof. Ah, and uh, so while it's a wonderful flavor, like, trust me, if you don't like birthday bourbon, at least like an, a normal average one, you don't like bourbon. Like you literally just don't like bourbon. That said, do you think it? Are you going to think it's a two hundred dollar limited release? People chase it and spend upwards of a thousand bucks for it. Bourbon? Nah, it's not that good. I agree, but a hundred proof that drinks like ninety. Disappointing. Yeah. That said, I mean, it, it it literally has a wonderful flavor. If that flavor came with the mouthfeel of. Did you say yours was the store pick? What's that? Your Knot Creek 25th anniversary? The one I had was the non-store pick, but I've also I tried some store picks. And I didn't like those either. Okay. Because I'm, I'm drinking it right now, and it's really good. Man. <laughs> I, I don't know what yours tastes like. Because I mean, this is a single barrel. Maybe it was a different It It, different it, it, was, it was unpleasantly hot to the point where – like it wasn't the proof; it just drank incredibly hot, like to the point where it was unpleasant to drink. And water, for some reason, just made it so bitter and sour that I couldn't. And I'm like, there was still like Knob Creek sweetness on the end, but yeah, it was so bitter and sour. I ended up mixing that damn thing at Diet Coke. That was the only way I could enjoy it. If 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 the 30th anniversary, the 18 year, tastes anything like this, it would be in the top maybe. Two, three, maybe four whiskeys of this year for me. Wow! Yeah, I, mm. I, I don't. That's why I'm saying is I don't know what sh, what you tasted, but this is pretty darn good. I'm telling you, <laughs> you know, so like basically, go go find your least favorite Elijah Craig barrel proof that you've seen so far, like the barrel proof uh -huh. picks, and imagine more bitter and more tannic. That's what mm. I got. Like, I mean. And mind you, it had a much lower proof. It it, it literally just drank like. I feel like Andy, Andy, uh, Sandy, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Couldn't agree. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just like that. Um, this one's 123.1234. Are you sure? One. No, yours is a pick then, Joe. Because because the, my, the one I got was 100 proof. It was a, it was a 100 proofer. The 25th anniversary. Yeah. Are you? Okay, no. Mine's not a pick. I, I think yours is a pick because the picks don't tell you their picks. They don't? No, they don't. They don't think they I don't I'm think they're saying no. I don't think I bought so. it from a store that doesn't do picks. Well, the, the, the thing is, those picks started floating around. And mind you, that was a long time ago. Oh, okay. I think I think you had a pick because I'm pretty sure the regulars were 100 proof. If I could find another one of these, I would. I, I mean, I would pay what I paid for the 18 year I just bought. I would buy another one of these. Hmm. I, I'm pretty sure that's a pick because I'm I'm almost positive it was 100 proof for the standard one. Oh, there it is on the bottle. It says this is not a pick. It says that. Okay. No, I did. <laughs> I was just gonna say what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, I, I yeah, 100, 123.1234. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. Yeah, those are what like about those are about 15 year old bottles, I'm pretty sure. Uh this is a 2004 
what was it, 25th anniversary? So, no, okay, so what I'm reading is they range from 12 to 13 year generally. Yeah, this is a, this is 13, I think 13 years. Like I said, that was a weird one because like there were picks and there were non picks, and I don't remember how you kept them apart. Like they were just weird. <laughs> Old charter, what? An old yeah. charter for French oak for seventy bucks? That's right. That at your house, David. It should be. That's what retail <laughs> should be on those things. And by the way, they're not worth seventy bucks. Other yeah. than the fact that they are really cool to own. Yeah, I mean the fact that you can it those are hard to find, and when you find them, they people want ridiculous prices for them. Yeah, I and mean, you could find one for seventy bucks. What I really want to do is I know Mash and Drum has Oh no, one. he said he did get that one. He did get that one. Oh. I, I want I want him to come over to Mike's because I've got a Buffalo Trace um experimental French oak finish. And I want to compare the old charter to that. Yeah. Cause I and I mean, you've seen those little tiny experimentals. Like I bet you they taste real similar. I'd love to compare them though. The experimental what? Buffalo Trace Experimentals. You don't oh, have yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've yeah. seen those, but they want like $200 for them around here. And I'm like, for three point, what, 375 I was like, eh, it's, I, I mean, it's probably worth it. I don't know. I, I just will never know. I don't know. Uh, it, it's, it's Buffalo Trace with like a little bit of eight more age and a little bit of like some experimental oak. But I mean, it. it What's that other 375 they came out with that? People buy all the time the single oak project. No, it, it's Buffalo Trace, but it's um, oh, just a new make, the White Dogs. Or you know, I might be thinking of of Old Forester. Oh, the oh they series. did like the 175 anniversary deal. They also no, the 115 oh. series or 117 series. They did I those. Too, yeah. That's a 375 that I'd probably pay a little more for. I, I so Jason gave me a, a taste of one of those, like one of the sample, like the influencer bottle samples, and I enjoyed it. I would definitely not have bought one. Like it, it, it's very good, but the price on that stuff was just too high for what it was, in my opinion. It just they're not so it's not that it's not worth this the value versus the price isn't, isn't there. I, I, I thought, I mean. It wasn't like a terrible value, but to me, Old Forester just needs more age, and that's what King of Kentucky is. It's the only one where I'm just like, yeah, I'll pay a bunch of money for this. Um, well, otherwise, I'd, I'd rather spend the money for 1920 and 1910. Those like, are good. Like like the presidential, I tried that one, which is like a six, seven year old. Yeah, um, and it's one of those where like up front, you're like, yeah, this is amazing, and then the finish comes in, and you go, yeah. Presidential, presidential. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah, we had we had some of those available for a long time for like not an obscene amount of points, like fifteen hundred or so. And I mean, I was just like, yeah, I, that's obscene for me. Them. I wouldn't. Pay, I don't know if I pay it. I kept that. Which I, I'm, I I really can't say that because I do have uh, baccarat, a baccarat, which I don't know. I don't even know why I bought that thing. I just, I honestly don't know. You should have wanted it. That's all. You the just, thing yeah. that killed me about the Baccarat was the fact that they spent all that money on the packaging. And then when you open the box up, it's got that white styrofoam. Which yeah. looks cheap as hell. Yeah. And I'm like, but it's got like, it's it's this super expensive crystal glass. And then they put white, like they didn't like bother to like make it like a nice looking black foam or something. No, it's couldn't like, even afford the velvet. Yeah. That's like it. instead it's this cheap. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, but when your whole thing is buy this for packaging, all the packaging needs to look nice, and it doesn't. I honestly thought when I was when I saw it, and I saw like the bottle, and I and I did just very little research on it, and I was just like, okay, maybe it's something special. Then I get it home, and I do more research because I got to talk about it, and it's like, oh my god, this is this all this is 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 there normal? Their normal stuff just finished. Like the, it didn't even finish that long. No, you know, and it's like it's all about it's like forty six for years that. old, and 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 then they're and then they're normal distillate finished in. 
I can't. I can't even think right right now. I can't. Uh, <clears throat> cognac. It was some kind of cognac. It, it was something, and I was like, "There's. Why did I buy this thing? It, it's nothing. It's not a. It's. Why I'm not going to use it as a decanter. I'm not going to say, "Hey, everybody, check out my decanter." No. Yeah, and the, the crazy thing is, those are still <laughs> available everywhere. Like there are so many stores that still have those bottles. Yeah, and you know, uh, it's crazy to me that people. Like, I bought it, and I think it's crazy that anybody would buy it after knowing what it is. Like, I should have did more research, and I, you know, it was one of those. Yeah. I still can't believe that the um, Bob Dylan, those five hundred dollar Bob Dylan bottles, are sell, but like they're mostly gone here. Like, you can still find yeah. them if you really look, but they mostly have sold. And I'm like, yeah. if you read what's in it, you're like. That's Tennessee whiskey. That's not well. The first one was that old, but the rest have been Tennessee whiskey. Um, I think the old. one I got is a blend of different whiskeys. I, um, damn, I have it upstairs. But the, the it, first I, one was like 27, 28 years old. So that was okay, yeah. fair enough. But yeah, and well, the second one's like thirteen. Yeah, something like that. But it, it was like oh, Mizanara oak or something they used. Yeah, so probably just but for five hundred bucks. Come on. Cool packaging. It, yeah, it's all packaging, but that that's a decanter that I like. I, would I use it again and show everybody that, you know, hey, I'm, I got this is uh, from Heaven's Door and try to explain it and say, but but there's Buffalo Trace in it. <laughs> you know, I don't know what, you know, or Wild Turkey 101 in it, you know. Um, well, it's, it's what you put your infinity bottle in. Like, it's one of the, you do that with it. You don't like put regular stuff. You put in an infinity bottle. Yeah. There you go. Well, I mean, I you know, that like basically when that bottle what I used, about, like, used for the Baccarat one. Since you start adding other whiskeys to it, and you just kind of – it's an infinity bottle, but it has a lot of the original bottle still in it, maybe, possibly. Who knows? Donald Rance is back in the house. He is, too. Hey, Donald, hop on with us, buddy. Uh, even if you're not drinking, just hop on and hang out. Yeah. Joe's here. <laughs> I actually, I'd love to get your thoughts on that rum I almost bought yesterday. That uh, one that was finished in a Teeling's uh, cask. Teeling. Yeah, it was. So yeah, I'll, I'll show. You, I'll show you. Um, pull this up. Um, see here. So I was looking at some, uh, you know, some, some whiskeys, and I was like, well, you know, whatever. I will, but I wasn't impressed. And then I saw this. Um, pick of a plantation, and you're not gonna be able okay. to read that down there. But there was this plantation. I, I think uh, Cheech just bought, or the last time he did one of those, um, uh, it's not whiskey things with his wife. I think he he had one of those. Yeah. So here's the cool thing on this. So it's um, it it's it, this spent 13 years in a bourbon barrel. Then it spent one year in a Ferrand cask, which is a type of um, cognac, I believe. Yeah. And then they finished it for, and I can't read it on here because the thing's covering it up, but I think it was six months in a Teeling single malt whiskey cask. And um, sounds tasty. And you know, so the thing <laughs> is, I, I, I put this out there, and um, I asked um, Jason Coates, who knows a decent a bit about uh, rum, and then also. Um, message marshall who does um i can't think of what his channel is now i i feel bad um something spirits but he really really is a rum guy and both of them and he was marshall's like i guarantee you that's dosed and i was like okay and now dosing it means basically put sugar in it which nobody likes no um and so i was like all right let me take a look zero dosing right there there you go. No dose. And uh, so I was like, all right. And then they were both I will like, be right back. They're both <laughs> like, that might actually be worth picking up. So I was like, all right, cool. And then, um, so this is a big store. So I started talking to one of the, he's like, I don't know, he's probably 22 years old. Yeah. He knows his stuff on whiskey. He actually works for MGP as like an intern. And so we started chatting and he was telling me he, he'd had it. He gave me his thoughts. And uh, he kind of said, yeah, it's pretty good. But I, he's like, I don't know. Rough spirit collection. There we go. Thanks, Donald. He gave his, uh, his his opinion on it. And I said, all right, cool. Thanks. 
And then so I decided not to buy it because he wasn't super high on it. And then we were talking. He goes, oh, by the way, this is my last day at the store. And I'm like, oh, well, crap, man. I'll, I'll miss you here. What's next? And he goes, so he's like, I got a couple months left to finish up this semester of school. And then I'll uh, I'll be going by to uh, full time at uh, MGP. And uh, the guy who was a, the head of our uh, as the fermentation. Yeah. He goes, he just left. So it looks like I'll be taking over fermentation for MGP. Oh, wow. Cause I've been the guy learning under him for the last year and a half, you know, as an intern. And I was like, Holy crap, man. So I know the guy who's going to be, so basically any MGP mit that gets uh, distilled from about January of 2023 until about, uh, let's call it September of 2023. You probably want to pass on. <laughs> huh. So that's going to be his fault. Oh, Oh, you know, he, he's a smart guy. He's going to do a great job, but. I would probably prefer not to have anything he fermented for six months <laughs> while he's learning it. <laughs> Just in case. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, again, I, I, but that was pretty cool. I was like, that's awesome. And I mean, just, it, it's kind of fun. Like, you know, you, this is a guy who's been, you know, helping me buy whiskey and, yeah. you know, now we're talking, he's literally going to be one of the guys who decides if MGP whiskey's good for the next decade. Like, how cool is that? I forgot where I put my rum bottle at. It might be upstairs. I, I kind of wanted to taste this. I wanted to taste some rum right now since you brought it up. Yeah, I actually don't. I I don't have any rum right now. I uh, I finished my last bottle and I broke my bottle before that, which was a incredible plantations that I got for a steal that was twenty six years old. And unfortunately, I uh, had them in the uh, trunk of my car and I forgot that it was back there. And I uh, was taking some turns going 95 miles an hour. And I got home into a empty bottle. Have you, did you try any of these series for Woodford? Um, I had one of the, I had one for about three years ago. That was nice flavor up front, but was unpleasantly hot. Yeah. I've heard this year's is really good though. Like everybody's raving about this year's and I didn't see this year's for sale anywhere. I, 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 I didn't really I, I didn't have that feeling on it uh at first so and somebody that I know put it on their top they put it over Parker's heritage the oh, wow. world. so I'm curious because like this wasn't even gonna make the top 10 now I'm curious on how did it become number yeah. one I like I said I, I I've had them in the past and the problem was always that on the finish it just was it was kind of like those um uh, old Forester single barrels, like it's just hot and kind of like burnt corn husk or something that like comes so, in so there. So, what proof point do you like? That's that's maybe like where you can always depend on that proof point. Is there a certain proof point? No, yeah, because I mean, I generally like higher proof, all else equal. But you know, there's just some whiskeys don't do well at high proof because they're just yeah. too young. Like, and that's yeah. that's a, that's a brown foreman issue. Brown foreman whiskeys tend not to drink well at cast strength. With the exception, like King, yeah. of King of Kentucky. Well, and all, and also, um, well, I mean, Jack Daniels can be bad too at high proof, but they also have those amazing single barrels they put out. Yeah, I mean, now I'm confused. Uh, he, he won't see this, and I'm not talking bad. I won't say who it is, but it's just on um, for for me on this one right here. It's just like even for my God, maybe because these are batched. So, but it should be one batch, I thought, for this each year. It shouldn't be multiples. But yeah, but Woodford, Woodford's notorious. Like they won't even sell you a single barrel of Woodford. They don't make them. And I just get. I mean, I don't get any any like like solid notes of flavor or anything where I can say that's what it is. I get like an airy, almost soapy type smell to it. I hate to say that, but ooh, wow. No, the, the one I, I had people know. that really like that Woodford, and I just am like, eh. And with the price they want for it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I even now tasting it again, I just I couldn't put this in in the top ten. I, I mean, again, the, the only one I've had was just not that good. And I Woodford. cannot imagine this being better than a Parker's Heritage. I mean, I'm not saying Parker's Heritage is probably the best ever, but. 
they're pretty solid and they're pretty consistent in, in flavor and how good they they and and the attention to detail they put in the in those yeah that brand. i've never had a bad parker's uh but hey you know i mean maybe you need to put a little water on it i don't know yeah if, if a little bit of water helps how it. long have you had the bottle how long have i had it yeah um i don't know six months oh okay I didn't know if it was a recent thing and, you know, as I say, I'd give it some time. Well, shit, six months and it's still, eh. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's, um, I mean, it, and it has an alcohol, even on the nose, it has an alcohol spike. It kind of like spits you in the eyes when you, when you snort it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like, wait, wait, whoa. That, that's been my impression of all of the wood. That's why I quit buying the wood for bash proofs is the alcohol on that. It's weird because. They're not even that high proof, but man, they drink yeah. a lot. Well, but then again, I'm over here, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This is the one I did with Mash and Drum. Oh, cool. Beautiful whiskey. But I'll tell you this, I add water to this every time I drink it. And I'm not one of these guys who can't drink cast drink whiskey. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not putting any water in this thing if I don't need to. What, what is the, uh, it's not showing. What's yeah, the, uh, it's 61.6. .6. Oh, shoot. Nice. This, this is this is I'm telling you, and again, it it got that in Scotland, where again, it's Scotland. The proof actually goes down as it ages, not up, yeah. generally, because it's cooler. The proof, yeah, it still comes in at 122 eight. Yeah, with the condensation, I, I I'd assume that it would it would drop the proof point. Yeah, and is, I'm, I'm I'm telling you, man, this is just Joe. You will if you're a Heaven Hill fan, you're gonna love this thing, and you can actually buy it. You can, you can put an order right now. <laughs> and it's one of 237 bottles ever, 236 bottles ever made. Wait, how many? 236. That's all they made. Oh, really? Yeah, and you can buy it right now. It's single barrel. Which, by the way, Maybe you think about that. 236, 236, Joe. That's a high yield for a barrel. That's, that's because, again, they finished the aging in Scotland where it doesn't evaporate. Yeah. So. Hey. It, it, it's 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 honestly it's incredible 80 percent corn i i i like corn like like the uh most heaven hills are over 70 Arden's Creek. Corn. like people give it you know i mean it is over overpriced at 74 dollars whatever it is overpriced for a two-year-old <laughs> corn whiskey but i actually like the flavors that they i, I like whatever they did to it i really like it yeah, I mean, I should say, you know, Heaven Hill Standard Nashville, by the way, is 75% corn. So we're not talking about a big difference here. Literally, the difference in Heaven Hill being a bourbon and a corn whiskey is 5% corn. Yeah. So th that's I all. Understand. And I think the reason why they had to buy it is so you absolutely positively cannot take anything distilled in Scotland and age it elsewhere. It's illegal now. Oh, yeah. They can, just they, you can only buy now. scotch bottled. To leave the country bourbon has some like not as strict but they're kind of weird rules about that stuff so it's a weird looking cork oh yeah, yeah big old fat this thing's huge i mean you know, lightweight holy it's, smokes it's point. yeah is it, is it serves as a paperweight when you're done right well you know and it's it's it's, it's just solid wood so it's actually not that heavy but no. um yeah it, it's a good size cork um, and then it's got the giant lip, which makes pouring super easy. I know some people don't like the big neck because yeah. it doesn't glug, glug, glug and stuff. But from a pouring whiskey standpoint, I love it. Mm -hmm. And that's all that counts. For me personally, yes. Now, you know, if you're a collector of whiskey, maybe you you want something else. And that's fine. Well, I got to have something for my last pour of the night. So what am I going to have? What did you have last, day, Anthony? Uh, you know, I just had a moment, and that's why I was like, what did I have? You just had a movement? Close. Close. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm trying to think. Um, I just had a little bit of it. I'm like, what the heck? And that's why I'm looking. I said, I thought I had the bottle right here. Yeah, I mean, I know you. Last thing you showed us was Frey Ranch, but I don't think you poured any. No, I did not pour the fray ring. You know, I haven't opened that bottle since it's a new year. I'm going to open it with with on your on with you there, 
Which one? I haven't tried it. I might as well try it now. I'm not going to do a review on it or anything. What is it? I know nothing about oh, Logger Demon. Oh, shit. The new Log 12. The, the Phoenix ah. Log. So I'll let you know. Because uh, yeah. I, I also got a poor sample for Sugar Kitty, so. Uh, that's so not got, here I'll, yet. I'll try that one out. That is not here yet. It, it It's not selling well, Anthony, so I don't think you'll have any trouble getting one of those. Um, they're, they're very available. on. It is on very the, light, though, for a 12-year, huh? Well, they don't color it, uh, from what I understand, yeah. which is good. And, and and I mean, they generally use refilled casks, so Logable and Twelve should be light. It almost should be. It's actually kind of dark. Like it should almost be clear. It's 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 different. I think it's the lighting in here because here it looks like piss. <laughs> oh. like, I, I have a pretty good idea. I'm comparing it to your bourbon bottles, and I still think it's coming off like darker than it should. Like that should be almost water. Yeah. I'm telling you that that should be almost like there shouldn't be color based on what I've read. Well, other than the fact that six years old. <laughs> what were you gonna drink? I don't know. I'm trying to remember what I had, but I think if you're gonna pull that one, I, I would have poured Pete with you. No, don't I, you uh, got? Don't you got one of these? I don't have that. I have the lime <laughs> right, Just throw it around, Joe. Just throw it around. Yeah, it slipped slipped of the hands. I understand. So I I can have the lion's fire. Oof. Now you don't know, man. If you do that, I might go grab mine. <laughs> okay. I'll have to finish this bottle, this pour two, and then get that. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I'm I'm gonna go get some lag twelve myself. I'll go. I'll be right back. Looks like apple cider. Oh. Well, you know what. I have got this from earlier. What do you I'll got? drink this one with you. Oh, nice. Which one is it? The 2013. Oh, shit. Oh. I, uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the guys in uh, Bill's Discord, friend of the channel with uh, Mike and I, he uh, messaged me one day and he goes, hey, I can get the 2013 Lagavulin 12 for 150 And I said, well, then you should pick up two for me and Mike. <laughs> And he was like, no problem, buddy. So th this is, um, these corks are pretty, pretty terrible. They're usually great, man. They're, like they, they're hard. It feels to pull like off. I'm going to break it when I, when I pull oh, it Oh, no, no, they don't break, man. They're tough. Mm -mm. Diageo is famous for their tough corks. Mine is doing well. Yeah. Look how light, look, it's like very, oh. very light. Yeah, it should be. It's uh, it's it's. I mean, it should be mostly refilled oak. There you go, Joe. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, is I mean, that it, one uh the lions thing? Lions. Yeah, fire. that's like last year. Last so last year so last year's lions fire. It's a hundred percent refilled bourbon cask. So it's all bourbon ba barrels. They sent over to Scotland. They aged something in there beforehand, and then they sent it over. And then after they used it for for the first round, they then reused it for those twelve year lagavulins. Um, the ones we got, Joe, they claim it has some of their smokiest reserve, which is bullshit marketing. But it does also say they used virgin oak, meaning they actually used like essentially the same barrels that they use for um, a uh, a bourbon. So they either they charred it or toasted. Who knows what they did with it? But they put in. First use of the oak, which is very unusual. Scotch almost never uses a barrel the first time. They almost always want to find a wine barrel or a bourbon barrel to put their stuff in. So it's fifty-seven point three, I think. Yeah, it's it's got a nice proof. I mean, it's it has a smokiness to it. I don't. Scotch down under. Yeah, Cheers, I mean, if you, don't, if, you don't, if you haven't had other Lagavulin in like twelve year cast strength, Joe, I would just tell you, good or not, man, just just let us know if you like it or not. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't had any. I, I mean, this is probably not good, but I never had a Lagavulin. I've only had like Octomore or so Brooklotic. So the so Lagavulins, the the malt sweetness is they're famous for. Oh. Is that there? It's a richer sweetness. Um, Mike always calls it an aristocratic sweetness. Yes. Um, so it, it, it's just this 
rich sweetness, if you really nose and you really spend some time with it, what I always get on a good Lagavulin on the sweetness is a little bit of peach, which is uh -huh. very unique for um, I'll, I'll scotch. Look for that. So if you, if you start picking up that peach note, sometimes it takes 20, 30 minutes in the glass, but eventually it comes out, man. I'm telling you, I'd never noticed it before. I, I was drinking with Mike. The first time Richie. Mike and I ever got together, we were at a bar. And Mike just hands me his Lagavulin and 16 glass, and he goes, smell that. And I was like, that's an interesting fruit. And Mike goes, peaches. And I went back and I went, oh, my God, you are dead on. Like grilled peaches? I can get that. Uh, it, it becomes almost, once it's been in the glass for about 20 minutes, like fresh peach over top of grilled, smoked, uh, whatever. I mean, it it really gets peachy. It, but it takes a while. It did. Yes, Richie. We're all having a nightcap. We're having a little yeah. Lagavulin 12. Lagavulin. As we all know, Richie all goes to bed around different, three. Different different ones, different uh, yeah. port. Well, then, right then Richie's lady keeps him up until 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Independent Joe's got the latest release for 23 from Lagavulin. I'm drinking the Lion's Fire last year, and uh, Dustin's drinking the 2013, 13, right? 13. 13 release, yeah. Yep. 13. Look how release. dark that is, too, on his in his glass. Wow. Well, I, I mean, this is it's it's it's, it's very dark in here. If I uh, if I put some light against, well, it's it's it, reflecting it, off your hat and your your shirt, probably. Yeah. If I uh, see how see how light mine is too, Joe. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I um. Mm hmm. So I think yours and mine are about the same. Oh yeah, no, his is his. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yours is yours is the same. Yeah, once I once I put the flashlight here, man, this is pretty much clear. Yeah, barely has any color. Feel, feel like I just got pulled over. <laughs> sir, 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 have you been drinking? <laughs> no. I, I'm gonna I need. I'm gonna need some ID. Could... I'm gonna need to see some ID. I need your hands where I can see them at all times, sir. You're a large man. I'm a little nervous because I'm scared because I'm a small little cop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Until until he sees Derek. I tell you what, man. If you ever watch some of these police re um, interactions on uh, YouTube, it's amazing how like you'll see, I'll, I'll watch one where you see like just this the nicest, most professional officer ever, and you're like, man, you know that's. In my experience, I've always had really, you know, awesome police interactions. I mean, yeah, I get a ticket occasionally, but, I mean, they're usually really nice about it. And then I'll see some of these where these guys are just complete dicks. And I'm like, oh, my God. I might go – I might get killed. If, if a cop's that mean to me up front, I might just get really sassy with them. <laughs> and I've seen a few where a guy – I saw a dude literally was just a little difficult with the officer. He was just like – He's like, what do you mean a DUI? He's just like, and he's like, man, I'm just going to sit here for a second. And next thing, like not 12 seconds later, there's three officers punching him. And then he's <laughs> going, and then, then he's getting yelled at, put your hands down. And then the guy's like, and then you're thinking like, how would he put his hands down? The dude's punching him in the face. Your hands don't go down when they're protecting you from being killed. Yeah. I've, I've been, I've been pulled over a few times and just, um, and it, and, and I don't want to say, you know, cause I don't want to be one of those people who are disrespectful to our law enforcement, but at the same time, the reasons why he pulled me over was for bullshit stuff. I thought I was going to get shot after I, the way I talked to some of those, <laughs> the way I talked to some of them. So, well, so I mean, the only bad, well, the only time I've ever been pulled over were like, okay, I was in the wrong and all this. I, so I got, when I got my DUI, I was 21 years old. Yeah. I've been 21 for maybe a month. And from like 19 until about 21, I basically stopped drinking because yeah. I was focusing on weightlifting and other stuff. I mean, I was a freaking like alcoholic binge drinker my like freshman year of college. And every now and then I'd go out drinking, but I hadn't drank in so long. So I went out with a friend of mine and tried like, you know, I'm a big guy who can drink. I got destroyed so fast because I hadn't drank in forever. Uh, and then I stupidly drove home. Should have been pulled over. Totally right. 
I simply asked this police officer for his name, uh-huh. and he wouldn't give it to me. And and he made some bullshit about like maybe he just wasn't interested. He that's a possibility. I was simply <laughs> trying to know what the name. I simply wanted a name to 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 talk to this person who was putting me in handcuffs and throwing me in the back of his car. Yeah, Jim would have worked if he was cool. <laughs> and this guy literally goes, "I yeah, I don't got to give my name." And I'm like, "All right." He goes, "I you know people come looking us up trying to find us later." And I was like, "Dude, a first name works." And he's just like, "I don't do that." So then I'm like at the police station. He's putting me in, and I up on the screen. It's like officer um, whatever. And I'm like his name was just right there. And I'm like, "Nice to meet you." And I was basically like, "Nice to meet you, Jim." And he goes, "Oh, so you're a wise guy now." And I'm like. Yes, I can read. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, how big a deal was it for you just to be like a human being and give me your name? I didn't give him any trouble. I admitted I'd been drinking. I basically just got out of my car, said, here, just take me down. I'm good. He was like, no, we're going to go through the, you know, the DUI thing. I'm like, cool. I, I, <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I'm drunk. Take me yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. Please. Take like, my money. You know what? Honestly, I shouldn't be driving. Thank you. I was honestly kind of debating where I could pull over and just sleep in my car at that point. Yeah. I definitely shouldn't have been driving. Um, so that, that's the worst I've experienced I've had, but it was just like the dumbest thing ever. Like, really? You won't give me your name. Like just human being to human being. I You won't give me a name to call you. I just love this maltiness. I could just, I can just sit here and just, oh. Yeah. Compared to the one you've got, Anthony, this is so dirty and sooty. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I love the fact that this is dirty and sooty. Yours is like more clean and vanilla. They're both beautiful. Yours is probably a little better, but this is, this is the dirty side of Logville, and I like. Yours is the clean side. I'm fine with this. I, I honestly, I'm, I, I'm so new at, at anything peat or smoky that, um, I mean, for the most part, I just, I, I don't, I don't get the, the bandaid thing that people say they get. I don't get that, but uh, I, get lot, a lot nice, I get a nice smoky char with, I, I, you know, you threw peach in my head and I'm like, yeah, I could get a, like a grilled, you know, smoky peach on that but um well i mean at the end of the day i always ask the same simple question is it good still haven't tasted it yet i'm trying to let it air a little bit but i'm gonna put a little drop of down water down. in mine just um because i never do on this one and i can't remember if water helps or hurts yeah the maltiness on this is just Fabulous. And this is a natural, natural, natural cast strength. Hmm. Wait a minute. This is distilled and matured in Scotland. Yep. On a tiny ass island with like 2,000 people living on it. (laughs) You know, I'm going to say that I liked it better. I like this better than what I had when I was at at that, at that dinner. I mean, I, I think Lagavulin is a better malt in a lot of ways. So I mean, it doesn't shock me. Yes, I agree. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm an Octomore fan, but I haven't I haven't had this the 23rd I haven't had the I haven't had an Octomore since the the 10 series because I'll be honest their prices got so silly on those I'm just they are getting ridiculous just just because I will spend a thousand dollars on a bottle of whiskey doesn't mean I'm gonna buy every freaking two three hundred dollar bottle you put out just because yeah. other people like it and that that's where I'm at with Octomore it's like man your whiskeys are good they ain't that good. Cheers, Richie. Appreciate you. <clears throat> Richie, man, hardest, hardest, hardest drinking man in the whiskey world. 
<laughs> so what do you think of so far, Joe? Because my was my first logable, and I actually like it. You know, it's actually decent. Uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, it's I mean, it's different than than what I'm used to drinking. I have I have my own brand, of course. You know, Smoky Joe. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not my brand. I just but it, but I do have a bottle of Smoky Joe, and it is like a, a smoky type whiskey, kind of like what I'm getting here. This one is just a little bit more fuller in flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you, Lagavulin. and I mean, you can't. Uh, what, whatever, even when they do their uh, do a bad version, <laughs> it ain't lacking full flavor. Yeah. Um, especially the cast drink stuff. I mean, I mean, as I think you know, Anthony, you probably know. I mean, Mike and I probably have had 30, 40 different Lagavulin reviews out there. Um, I, I think. I think. Um... I think it could use a drop of water or something. And, but let it open up, you know, enjoy this one. Put a drop and of water. Then, I mean, nothing. Wrong yeah. With that. It's not going to hurt. If you got a little drop of water, drop it in there and give it a minute and yeah. it will change. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. That, that, that's probably not the way to go, but <laughs> yeah. I don't have a dropper. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm a, I'm a big believer that you had a, every bottle of whiskey you have, no matter what the proof is, you should try it with water. Yeah. That doesn't mean you drink it every time. I haven't. You try it. If you don't like it, cool. But yep. there are some whiskeys that that water just that water magic changes it. Monica. Anybody yeah. who tells you they don't put water in their whiskey ever under any circumstance, that's their right. I respect their opinion. That's me. I don't I don't um, want to hear them judge. Totally. It's one of those things like at some level, I kind of. I don't think you know that whiskey fully. Really, just try it once. <laughs> this is this is scotch. This is something different. So, I mean, again, like with bourbons, man. Like I, I mean, ninety nine percent of the time, I don't put water in my bourbon. But I'll tell you what, what? One of these Elijah Craig barrel proof picks. When I squirt tire, like when you go to a, a tire shop. Uh oh. Sometimes uh -oh. I put three. My uh, my wife's getting burnt tire, so I don't know. Maybe I, I'm getting smoky. But I'm not getting burnt tire or band aids or whatever. To me, it's you. It's too sweet. But, but she's not time. used to this. She this is this is also her first time tasting something that has any no. kind of smoke to it. No. And it's not her thing. Well, then you're, you're never wrong. You're just, uh... It reminds me when you go to the mechanic. I mean, I I I, I can see uh, the flavor in it. I can I can I can get the flavor in it. It's not her thing, obviously. But, well, you know what? It's not hers right now. And you know what? If he got her like a Highland Park 15 or a Highland Park 12, um, there is smoke in that, but it's nowhere near this level. It's more of a... Uh, I have the cash strength Highland. I don't have the the 15 or the 12. The 15 is something really cool that they did. Um, it, it's a whiskey that I'm, I think I'm at the point of my whiskey drinking where it's not one that I would want to own but i did get to try it and man that is if you're trying to get into scotch and especially one of those whiskeys to like yeah it's, it's one to own if you're getting into because it's just it's a man, it's unique <laughs> and the and it, it's a beautiful a, lovely unique do you, do you yeah. want me to pour you something yeah. different <laughs> she's mad at me now thanks well, well, well have, have her put some, have, her, have her try some water added to that one. See if it helps. Hey, it won't be the third time that she's been mad at you, Joe. No, it's the fourth time today. So. Oh, today, yeah, yeah exactly. Today, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, started... you know, every time I've ever heard somebody say, "Look, they have a perfect relationship; they never fight." You know what happens within ten years? <laughs> yeah, it's called divorce, and it's very well, expensive. Um. Because it turns out somebody wasn't sharing their real feelings. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I was in the, you know, uh, I don't know if I ever told anybody this, but I used to be in the military. No. And in the military, there is like a 80 something. I, I forgot what the exact number is, but an 80, 80 something percentage divorce rate. 
is like because so many people join the military they try to get out of the barracks and they try they try to marry and then you know try to get out of the barracks and stuff like that that's that's their whole goal and um <clears throat> that's why the high, the divorce rate so high is because they end up getting divorced because yeah. it's not out of love it's out of something else well also, no. not to discourage our, uh, our our wonderful military overlords, uh, I'm talking about the military <laughs> side, not the not our troops, but um, some dumbass decided that you should get paid more if you're a soldier who's married than a soldier who isn't married. Yeah. And uh, I had a couple of friends who uh, were in the military, and, well, it was like they got married very much because at the end of the day, well, it's it was like double their pay. It was, I mean, it was an idiotic number. I can't remember what it was now. I mean, it's that's been a while ago. Yeah, but I remember my buddy telling me that, and I was like, like what? They'll play that you're getting this a week, and they'll give you this a week if you get married. And he goes, and I was like, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is there's so many that I think there's the, the statistic is skewed and and not really truthful because they're they they do what's called contract marriages where somebody will get married and they'll say hey I, I'll give you a certain amount of money out of what I get J- just stay married to me you get free medical you get this yeah. you get that you know don't so. You know, we won't live together because I don't love you like that. <laughs> I don't like you like that. But and that's what they do. A lot of people do is. And well, so it ends up in, of course, it ends up in divorce because then the girl will find somebody and wants to marry somebody else. Well, my, my buddy, he um, I mean, he had a kid with this girl while he was, you know, back home or whatever. And then it was like he wasn't sure about marriage or not. And then, you know, the, the financial thing was there. And he's just like, well, I, of course, I'm going to get married. Like, it, I, basically, it's like I. It, Instantly, I can give. I forget what it's like. I was like, "Hey, I, basically, it's like I give two thousand dollars a month to my kid that I couldn't otherwise. Like, why wouldn't I do that?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, no shit." <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, it's it's. A- I, I wish you wouldn't have told me something about that burnt tire. Now that's sticking in my head. Burnt tire is not a smell or a tasting note I actually would dislike. So. <laughs> well, well, I don't either. But this this one right here is really rich. It is, it you know, is. and it's it it ha- it's full flavored, and I'm I'm not like saying it's bad what she you know what she put stuck in my head, but I was getting other things before that yeah. that happened. I'm getting so much dirty sooty ash on this one. It's, it's <laughs> so much. It's so much dirtier than the one Anthony's got. Like, it, and I'm loving it because it's just like I love this dirty sooty ash thing that's going on. Yeah, I like. I like dirty sooty ash too. <laughs> it depends on how you hear it <laughs> or hit it. I don't care. I just I just love this malt. You you love the smell of napalm in the morning too, though. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, bad. buddy. It does not make you bad. Yeah. Hey, I mean, I I remember the first time I got tear gassed. You know, mm. hmm. yeah. it was a good night. So I, I remember the first time I got pepper sprayed. Mm-hmm. I remember that too. Mm-hmm. That was the weirdest thing. We are getting kicked was, out of a club. And me and my can cousin. you believe she ended up marrying him though? <laughs> <laughs> now, me and my cousin were at a club, and bouncers swooped him up and were kicking us out. They didn't see the bottle in his hand and they pull us out there, me and another guy. But we were like, okay, we're leaving, whatever. I don't care. And um, my cousin still had his bottle and they were like, Hey, you can't leave with that. And he, he's like, well, I'm going to drink it. The security guard got in front of us and said, don't drink it. So my cousin starts drinking it. I'm standing right here. My cousin's standing right here and the other guy's standing right here. And he points this, pepper spray can up in the air like like just up in the air and i'm like okay uh, and so he my cousin starts drinking the, the the beer and he sprays it and i look up and this stream comes arching over down splits into three 
probably because we had been drinking that night, but it looked like it split into three and splashed all three of us in the face. I don't know how that's possible, but it, wow. it happened. <laughs> and all, all of us were like, what the hell <laughs> just happened? <laughs> that was, that was a crazy night. And that was, that sucked. So because yeah. pepper spray and mace are two different things and it, it, Not it doesn't the same. Do it. Yeah. So this was, so I was at an Applebee's and we're, uh, we're drinking, having, you know, dinner. Uh, we're the last, we're the last table in there. And, um, I'm with a bunch of coworkers. Yeah. And one of the girls reaches in her purse and does something and somehow unleashes her fucking pepper spray <laughs> and it just clouds up. And next thing I know, I'm over here coughing and like eyes are watering. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? My buddy next to me, who's with us, with me, yeah, he's literally like gagging. We all end up like just rushing out of there. Like, like we paid. Yeah. So we're like jettisoning out of there. We're like finishing our beers. We're going and like tearing up. My buddy gets out of the place and just turns and starts vomiting. Yeah. He goes, I don't know what he goes. I'm not that drunk, man. I'm telling you, it's the pepper spray. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll believe you. <laughs> hey, and, that, and I got that backwards. It was actually mace, not pepper spray. I'm pretty sure what we had was pepper spray. Uh, and that, that mace, well. mace is no joke at all. You know, I'm telling you, that, that stuff filled the room with the air. Like mace is outlawed now. Okay. It is? Pe pe they replaced it with pepper spray. Gotcha. I'm pretty sure this was pepper spray. I mean, I'm not 100. percent And then the, the next time I, uh, the next time I got hit with that stuff was uh, 2011. UK just won the national championship. Now, I was in my mid 20s. I was not a college age guy, but I was still living, you know, near campus. So I was partying it up with the college kids, watching this shit show. Yeah. We turned on this one street where the cops had decided, no, everybody get the fuck off this street. And they had literally like pepper sprayed the shit out of it, and the cloud hit us, and like we crossed. We we're just like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! And then the funny thing is, like, they knocked that street out, so we went like two streets over. Yeah. On that street, a bunch of dudes were flipping a car, and they couldn't get it to set on fire, so they took their shirts off, set their shirts on fire in the gas tank area to finally get it to like you know light up and then my favorite thing ever bless their hearts but again this is a street full of college students yeah they should be the best and brightest and they're wow. like oh my god the car's gonna explode and i'm like that's not how cars actually blow up <laughs> in the real world like you think like yeah. there's they a saw jerry bruckheimer movie and they thought that's how it happens yeah exactly i'm like there's a combustion engine there the explosions are happening cars are designed not to blow up like that yeah and so I'm just watching this, like, laughing my ass off, like, this is the funniest, dumbest shit I've ever seen. I love it. You go, you 18, 19, 20-year-old morons. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, me and my buddy are just, like, laughing. And then my one buddy just grabs me. He goes, she's going to flash. And I'm like, oh, oh where are we going? <laughs> yeah, the first time I smelled, smelled, well, I tried to smell it. That was the weird thing because I never knew. I didn't know what he was talking about. But my cousin used to be a security guard when I was like 18, 19 years old. And he pulled out his mace. He goes, man, this stuff is crazy. He goes, don't ever get sprayed by this. And he, and he goes, he goes, check this out. And he literally did like a little quick like that. And then, he, and then he backed up. He's like, oh, shoot. And he backed up. And I was like, I don't smell anything. He goes, it's right here, this area. And I'm like, and I went like this. And I went, and I went, whoa, and my face felt like it was melting. <laughs> it literally, it felt like it was melting. I had to run. I ran to the, like, the faucet and the, and the sink, and I was, like, trying to get it. I mean, I didn't even get sprayed with it. It yeah. was just a little aerosol thing in the air, and I was like, holy crap. Holy crap. Is yeah, right. that was crazy. Well, do, do you ever, like, uh, use, like, ammonia tabs or anything in the gym? A what? Ammonia tabs or like the ammonia salt. Uh, my son does. So I was a, uh, so I was at the gym one day and like one of the guys just like left like what they what they called them, um, it was like nose torque was what they called it. Yeah. And uh, it's just like powder. And I mean you kind of do like one of these like, and like you're like, 
Oh, yeah. kind of like what they call smelling salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it was just like, you, you do this. Yeah. So, buddy of mine, I mean, this dude's in the gym six days a week. He's got like 19 inch arms. He's like 5'7, 190 with like, you know, six pack abs and 19 inch arms. I mean, he's jack, dude. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, man, here's some nose torque for you. And we always had this like little running joke about this one guy we knew who like was at the gym, an old gym we used to work out at like seven days a week. He was always, you know, doing ammonia caps and tanning. We never really saw him actually lifting any real weights, but he's always like in a sleeveless shirt. Guy was like a parody, man. It was hilarious. Anyway. Yeah. So we made a, I made a joke about that guy. I was like, hey, man, here you go. Apparently he'd never used ammonia cat tabs or any of this stuff. He didn't know what it was like. So he went and took that thing. And, you know, again, this is how you do it. You go, you like, you open it up and you go, and you go. He opens it up, and I watched that jack dude literally fall down (laughs) to the ground, caught himself, and, like, I watched, like, tears come out of his eyes, and he could not move for, like, two minutes. And I was like, oh, my God, dude, what did you just do? And he just, like, can't move, can't speak. Five minutes later, he just looks at me and he goes, and I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. He goes, I I should have known. <laughs> That's all I should say to him. It was like, I guess I should have known. I was like, you've never smelled that before. He goes, nah, this is first. I was like, oh my God. I mean, this guy literally had this look like, I think I'm gonna die and vomit. <laughs> I just don't want I just don't want anybody to see it. Oh man, I I didn't throw up because of uh, any of that, but man, it it's pretty bad. It it you can't control your tears, you can't control your mucus. It's, oh, dude, it's like a spigot. Yeah, yeah, you, you just start. Yeah, you start bleeding. Well, yeah, I mean, again, I've only had the well, I've had with the pepper spray that one time. Then I don't know what the police were firing off, but whatever it was was not pleasant. So. Matt, who was on earlier, his brother, I bet him a hundred bucks he'd wash out a basic the first time, you know, and get recycled. <laughs> and uh, he actually made That's it. That's a crazy bet. <laughs> well, hey, you didn't know his brother at the time, and it yeah. had been a store bet, and I'd have taken his hundred bucks and not had a problem, put it next to the twenty dollar bill I got from him when he was still in high school, and. He told me, he says, yep, I'm not going to get anything lower in the sea. I said, really? Yeah. I said, I'll bet you 20 bucks. He says, so you're going to bet me 20 bucks that if if I don't get anything lower in the sea, you're going to give me 20 bucks. I said, yeah, yeah. But I said, you won't do it. Yeah, I'm, you're going to owe me. So long short of it is, is he didn't know I was in town. I had just flown into to Pennsylvania. And I'm talking to him on the phone. And I asked him, I says, hey. I hear uh, your report card wasn't so good. Yeah. I said, so you owe me 20 bucks, right? Yep. I said, so you have 20 bucks on you? Oh, yeah, I got it. I said, so you can put it in an envelope right now and put a stamp on it. And I'm, I'm just leading him on. I have it. I have it. I have it. I have it. So I'm keeping him on the phone as I get to the door. His mom opens the door and I just you know tell her, Shh. I walk in and he's, look, I have your money. If you walk through this door. I will give you 20 bucks. So I said, well, then give me my 20 bucks. I mean, I was right there. Yeah. You had to go to the ATM. He didn't have any money on him. I said, so you <laughs> why? Uh, and I still have that $20 bill. And God, that's 15 years ago. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I think he's E6 now. Or okay. E7. Something like yeah. that. I'll and never he's forget the Air, Nas- Air National Guard. And he got into um, cybersecurity. Oh, that was way off. Yeah. I'll never forget one of my... <laughs> well, he's an one SP. So. One, of my, one of my friends from high school, um, he was a couple years younger, but we got I got to know him through some other stuff. But he was one of those guys who had, like, just the most just genetically gifted, like, dude I'd have ever seen. He was a soccer player and a wrestler who, like, carried about six foot about 180, 190, just shredded in high school, which is just unheard of, especially for like a 16-year-old dude. 
So it's like Joe now. <laughs> no, I'm I'm short. I'm five seven. So so Cheech said to... Cheech says he's five ten, but he's he's not five ten. We've taken a picture <laughs> together. He... <laughs> he's not five <laughs> ten. Uh, so uh so anyway, um, so yeah, he was like two years younger than me. So we, we kept, you know, semi in touch. He actually dated one of my sisters for a little bit, which was weird, but whatever. Um, so we were talking like we, we met up like probably uh, I think he was like two years into the military or something, or it was a year in the military or something. But uh, he got into the military and then he made like the dumbest decision of his life. And instead of like he could have taken like the officer route and then gone and like he was explaining the whole details, and I don't understand all of this stuff, but basically. He insisted that he go and be a SEAL from day one, where he had like a better path where he could have like tried to like done something and then gone back to being a SEAL and it would have protected him, like to put him in a better like level and all that stuff. And I mean, again, this is a genetic freak, you know, he kind of guy you expect to succeed. And he freaking went in 100% hard as hell. And, you know, he was killing it in the SEAL training. And he got to like the final, like whatever challenge it was. Yeah. And of course, like everybody who tries to be a SEAL and doesn't get there, what happened? He had pneumonia. Oh, damn. yeah. I uh, mean, you, you spend a lot of time in the water. <clears throat> yeah. And so, you, you do, don't you, Joe? Yeah. yeah. And he, he ultimately failed on the uh, whole, you know, drowning, te- drowning test, basically, because he couldn't hold his breath because oh, he could He didn't drown, did he? Okay. No, no, but because he couldn't hold, he couldn't hold the air. I got, I got he, could, he just couldn't hold his air. And so, you know, so and he was just like, and he was just gone. I, don't, I haven't actually, I haven't talked to him since then. Cause I, we just, I haven't, we just never ran into each other again, but he was going to go back and like, try to, you know, redo it and try to be a seal again. But it was just like, man, that I just, I can't imagine the disappointment. Like, cause I mean, that was hundred percent. That dude actually had to stop lifting weights, had to stop doing all kinds of stuff. Cause he literally couldn't look at weights and not gain weight. And he had to lose tons of weight to be like skinny enough to not be like sink basically. Yeah. Cause he's one of those guys who just like naturally holds 4% body fat and wants to be like 250. Just like he was built to be a bodybuilder. Yeah. And that is not what you want to be for a seal. But it was just, I mean, can't even imagine like the, the disappointment, the work that goes into that kind of crazy shit. Yeah. You have to have, a lot of endurance, uh, not just strength, mostly endurance, because you're put through you're a lot of a lot of different uh, challenges, and it that's I would not want, like when I first was going to join, I was going to um, go recon. Uh, they were trying to get me recon, but I had already signed up for um, for uh, well, it was supposed to be firefighter. But then they were going to try to change my MOS to recon and um, which I would have to have done. And, you know, it didn't work out because they said my allocation that for, for my job was needed. So they didn't care about because there's, there's no guarantees you're going to get through those schools. So the guarantee was that I was going to get, of course, you know, to get through that school and it was going to be easy or whatever, not easy, but I mean, it would, it's, it's less of a challenge and it's less of a risk on, on their part because when they need certain people in certain jobs, they're going to put you where they, where they want you. Yeah. But uh, So they, they didn't let him, ch- they didn't let the uh, guy, cause he was recon. So he was trying to tell me, Oh, you, you know, you can do this. You can do that. It's so fun. You get to go to different places. And it's like, I was like, hell yeah, sign me up. But no, nope, I didn't get to do it. They, well, they didn't let him change my job because I was signing up for a certain job. And then um, mm. so that happened. But now thinking about it, it's like, man, you have to always, always endure. You have to always be exercising. You have to always. I mean, it was it's, it's a tough life. Those guys have to lead in the environments they have to be in. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. I went through the martial arts course um, and we got, we, we got bunked with snipers and, you know, snipers is not, is, is pretty tough in itself because they're kind of doing what recon is doing, but just in a different, 
type of job. Recon is more about going out and getting dropped off and then trying to, you know, kind of look at environments and seeing what's going on in certain areas without being noticed. Whereas uh, snipers are going in, getting dropped off, going to, to, to do something different, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say what it is, you know, of course, well, uh, but snipers so got to have that mental force. Yeah. You, you like, have to see the face of the person you're going to snipe. Yeah. Like that's, you know? that, that ain't nothing, man. And it's funny. Cause like I was, we were in, cause it was like half of the room was martial arts instructors the, the other half was um, snipers and I'm getting, you know, I, I get out of, the, I get out of the rack and I head to the showers. All the lights are on. All the lights are on. People are talking, playing cards. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to go take a shower real quick, but go to bed, go over there, come back lights out. And I'm like, damn, I was like, what the heck? This? Like I just left. And I was like, so I went, didn't want to wake anybody up, disturb anybody, because I don't know how fast people fall asleep. I didn't even know how long I was gone. It seemed like it wasn't gone that long. So I go in my locker, I grab my blanket that I normally do, and I go to my edge of my blanket or, or the edge of the rack, and I always shake it out because I, I hate the spiders. <laughs> so I shake it, you know, I started, I, I, went, I went, bam. When I did it, I accidentally snapped it where it, it sounded like a snap. It went, psh, it went, psh. So I did that, and all of a sudden I hear an alarm clock, like off in the distance, <laughs> just going, and I'm like, what the heck? I was like, they're going to wake everybody up. And I'm looking to see who it was. I didn't see anybody. I didn't see no light or anything. So I'm like, oh, okay, because it finally stopped. And I'm like, okay. So I went, whoosh, whoosh, <laughs> and I looked down right there by my feet are is a rattlesnake. And so I wrapped oh. myself, I wrapped myself in the in the blanket I had. I wrapped myself, put it down to my legs, and then I scurry off to the side because I didn't want that thing to bite me. No. So before I go off, go to turn on the lights because I got to let people know, hey, you know, there's a freaking snake. It takes off the in the other direction underneath somebody else's rack. And I said, and I was trying to tell him, hey, I'm gonna go turn on lights, go get a broom, I'm gonna sweep it out. Do not move. Do not get off your rack. There's a rattlesnake under your rack. He starts like freaking out. I go turn on the lights and the snipers are um, like, like, Hey, why are you turn on the lights? And I'm like, Oh, there's a rattlesnake on the bed. I'm going to sweep it out. They run over there like in freaking briefs, mm -hmm. not even boxer briefs in, in the underwear they sleep in, run over there barefoot naked with just briefs on with a boot squat right next to it and just go psh, 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 like nothing. It's like, okay, it's dead. And then they walk away and they said, turn off the lights. <laughs> Those guys are crazy. You know, like this, this, <laughs> just the mentality. Like I was nervous going you know, to push it out of the, 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 the room with a broom. You know, it was going to be away from me and I was going to try to get out of the room, not kill it. Not that I didn't want to kill it. I just, but you know, I mean, of course, if it starts striking me, I got to, I got to hit it with the broom, but there's no way I'm going to squat down right next to it and hit it with a boot. Like, like right, looking at its face. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, it's amazing. Like you got the guys who are good with mentality. Things. It takes a certain. I mean, that's one of the craziest things. And recon snipers, all that, all that, all those people who have to go in there and hide themselves from sight and have mm -hmm. to deal with that stuff is just. Well, and they they, they can't get scared when the rattlesnake yeah. is right next to them and they're and yeah they're hiding. Yeah, and they'll they, just like, oh yeah, because yeah, they, they can't reveal their position. More than likely, they yeah, they just do what they got to do to to survive. And yeah, I mean, I and and I I firsthand saw it with them running naked to a snake. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they had underwear on, but you know, it's just it's still it's yeah, a yeah, visual yeah. that will never leave yeah. you. You know, just 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 watching that, I'm like scurrying over in 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 flip flops and getting ready for bed and trying to grab a broom and, and running, I'm running fast and they're running faster to go <laughs> stand right, like squat right next to a rattlesnake. That was just a, a weird, yeah. weird thing. I'll, I'll never, I mean, so like my, my, my buddy, I was talking to him that night and we were, we were 
we were pretty drunk and he we, he was talking to me and he just goes he looks at me and he goes you know man he goes you, know, you and i we knew each other before but i went to military so you're part of like kind of he kind of like you know you're kind of family kind of this thing he goes but i can't meet new people who weren't in the military he goes i just i i can't relate i can't i don't get them he goes anytime i've got you know free time you know he, he had like two weeks off or something where he was back at home yeah because i just i can't relate to like the normal person anymore man and he's just like it's this this conditioning and it's just like all this stuff and it's like you know and this is kind of part of what seal training did for him it was like he goes i don't know how when i get back you know to the out of military like how i'm even gonna like you know relate to people yeah and you know so you talk about like you know these different groups and the craziest thing for me is like i had a i had a buddy of mine who um was part of like the early early like drone stuff and so you know we're all thinking like man he's just playing video games basically you know flying this stuff yeah that guy was just absolutely effed up post military hmm. cuz you know you don't think about it but you don't just I fly, do. you don't just see the camera of the drone while you're flying it to the destination you see that drone all the way to the point of where it blows up and you know what you're doing yeah and mm -hmm. you know i again i i didn't I, I didn't get that and you know my buddy like you know he kind of like you know he kind of came back and he was just like he he wouldn't write man you just tell and uh it, it's crazy like the the mental like stuff you have to go through when you're like in these things where like you're part of that specialization where you're ending someone's life and you know, it just people don't get it. I, th I feel like in, in, until you, well, I, mean, I, I, I don't I, get it. I'm gonna be be honest. Before I found this community, I, I didn't, I didn't think I couldn't relate to people. I couldn't, do, you know, do anything. I haven't worked, you know, in a while, and, you know, making friends on the internet was the last thing I thought was gonna happen. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and look who you're stuck with, Joe. And, Here we are, and I just. Um, I honestly, I, I, you know, I, cause I've been to the different meetings and the different, you know, tr you know, I, I just couldn't, uh, it was hard to like open up and talk to people. And I think this right here, it's, you know, this, the community and stuff and the things mm -hmm. that people come together for all the charities, all that, all that stuff. I think it's just, I don't know. It just, it feels like you're a part of something again. And I, you know, uh, I, I, something yeah. bigger than you, yeah, yeah, and I don't oh, think yeah. it has to be. To me, because to me, to, it's not about drinking. No, you know, to me, it's more about just getting to know just the different people. Because for me, I, you know, being in the military, you you meet people nationwide, you know, mm -hmm. worldwide, you know, yeah, worldwide, yeah, definitely. And um, that's what I was used to. And being in a town where, you know, I, I really did, I didn't grow up here. I didn't know anybody and stuff. So, I mean, I had, you know, I have neighbors across the street that are were former military. I could talk to anytime and stuff like that. But it just felt like, you know, like here, you know, I just click on and I can watch, you know, friends review whiskey or I can see mm -hmm. people do you know, talk about certain things, you know, and, and it sometimes it gives, it goes off of whiskey, you know, they talk yeah. about different things and it, but you know, you, you still relate uh, on the common thing. And it, it, I think that's kind of like, I won't say it's military like or anything like that, but I will say that it's, it's, there's still that sense of camaraderie and, and friendship, yes. stuff like that. It's community. Then, community. Yeah. yeah. You it know, is. and a lot of us, who get out of the military after 20 plus years, you know, don't, don't see that, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, I think I, I would recommend this community to, to anybody, even if they don't drink, especially if they have a problem drinking, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend them to come here to drink, but still to be, to talk about things and just to, I'd say we're a great community for anybody who 
doesn't have a problem drinking. We might be a yeah. bit of an issue if you have a, <laughs> a pre-existing drinking issue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, I, I, in, in the past couple of videos, I, you know, I, I put, I said something about, you know, like, make sure, you know, don't, don't forget to drink water or something like that. You know, it's because I think that's important too. It to is also talk about that because uh, I don't know if you saw, and I, I was pretty enlightened on, on kind of the thoughts of where this community is going and how, you know, with YouTube and, you know, monetization and all that stuff that people look for, but at some point that, just like cigarettes, you know, and, and tobacco and stuff like that, you know, it might take a turn where you're not going to be able to get monetized for this type of content. And, um, you know, but, and I thought about, you know, like, I think, I think it would turn to that point if you're not, if you're, if, if you're, if you're doing this, you should also promote some type of like, Hey, be responsible type thing to it then it doesn't become all about the whiskey. You know, not a lot of people probably would like to talk about that, but I, I think it's an important thing. And I think it's necessary so that, because some people do have that issue where they can't, they, they pick up a drink and they can't stop. You know, like I can stop right now if I wanted to, you know, yep. and and be happy with that and just, just be happy with the conversation. Hey, yeah, if this was a work night, I guarantee you there wouldn't be whiskey in my glass right now. <laughs> yeah, it's not. So yeah, yeah whiskey exactly. in my glass. Exactly. And that doesn't mean I wouldn't be still talking with you guys. It just means there'd be no whiskey in my glass. It's 4 a.m. Yeah. I gotta get up in four hours. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'm done drinking. <laughs> exactly. Then I'm gonna have another pour or two. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I mean you're you're right. And um I think Ralphie actually uh was one of the you know, the OGs, he spent a lot of time talking about, like, here's how much I actually drank last week. You know, here's how you keep it under control. I mean, he's, he's talked about it a ton. I mean, it's I mean, real you don't have to make, you don't have, I don't feel that you have to make that your, I'm not to say that he's doing that, but you don't have, I'm just saying in general, you don't have to make that your thing. But I think that if, when it comes to that point and where they start saying, you know what, we don't want to pay these YouTubers for, for you know, drinking on on screen and shit like that, just like we don't, you know, like smoking cigars and all that. I mean, I don't know what that is, how that is in that community. Well, I, the real I, thing, I think, it's, I think it's just something that people can it easily just adapt or, you know, say to it so that so it doesn't get to that point where we're. Yeah. You know, well, where the where the tobacco community got in trouble was that they were promoting places to buy tobacco. Um, oh, gotcha. And and because that was a thing, because the tobacco sellers were sponsoring the thing with whiskey is you really can't do that because it's impossible. Because let's, let's be let's be real. There's two things you got to everybody got to remember. America dominates the internet. Yeah. Um, we're, we're the big money place. Like you know, I mean, there's 300. 30 million people here we have the highest per capita income so you know well i mean our laws are so bullshit that you, you can buy cigars and have them shipped to your door you can't buy whiskey and have it shipped to your door in lots of places here in the states well that's the thing is now there's a channel there's a few channels you know that that are able to do that now yeah but they don't promote it really truly through their channel they promote it through their patreon mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, so they, there's well, it's still said on Facebook, though, it's still talked about on Facebook. So. Well, then they can do it on Facebook. It's it's on YouTube. No, no, no I'm not. I'm sorry. YouTube. They, they do talk well, about and, it. And you can talk. It's it's the links that get you in trouble. So okay. it's, it's, it's posting links to sellers. So that, that said, like when we do like these, when we do a stream and we do, hey, it's a raffle for a sample that potentially could get your channel nuked down the road. Yeah. Um, so you have to be careful. And that's why, that's why the bourbon junkies stopped doing that. And then they, like, they, then they took for a second there, they tried to pull the high and mighty. We don't do that. Our channel's big because we're just great. And then they went like six months later into doing picks with stuff. And Hey, by the way, if you're not on this tier, you don't get our picks. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm not criticizing them for that. It's just kind of, it's, it's just funny. Well, I mean, that's every, that's, I mean, 
that's any bigger channel that does picks. I mean, you have to be a certain tier, right? You ain't going to see it. Well, yeah. I mean, well, they, they were the first, I think they were the first to do it, which is why I point them out. It's oh, you know, gotcha. Jason does it. Yeah. Mash, um, um, ADHD whiskey. Uh, Matt does it. I'm like, mash. Well, no, it's an M. It's an M. I swear it's an M. <laughs> yeah. Matt, he does it. Um, it's bourbon night. Everybody's yeah. going to do it. It makes, it, it makes sense to do it that way. Yeah, it's tear driven. I mean, that's fine. Well, I mean, um, how else do you do it? I honestly, I, 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 I buy locally for picks because I, I know the people locally and I trust their their palates and stuff. Well, and not that I don't trust anybody on YouTube yeah. or anything like that. You have access. You have so much more access. It's, it's just so much easier, you know. And well, you, you not that I wouldn't want to buy their picks. It's just, it's just, I, I don't know if I. I can't afford to pay a, 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 you know, a certain amount of money to be able to get access to those picks when I have access to those same picks at home, you know, well, you, you, you live in a great place to be in into whiskey, man. Like I, I tell this to anybody, like if you're, if you want to into whiskey, California is the best place in the country to live. Just, just facts. We see a lot. Um, I think we see a lot. I think, um, I, I don't know how happen, you have less drinkers and you have more access. Win -win. Oh, I don't know. We have a lot of clinics here for, <laughs> for, for that. So <laughs> but, when, um, per capita, you guys drink way less bourbon and really? whiskey than, uh, yeah. I mean, you, th you think you guys per capita drink more than well, no, because we have so many people, though. We have a crazy amount of people. Well, I, I said per capita. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that, that's why I'm agreeing with you now that I think about it. Yeah, I, I guess not per capita. Because you, you've got way more health, like people who are health conscious. You got more places where it's like, man, I don't even eat red meat. I only eat, you know, fish. Like, well, if they if they if they actually read on whiskey, whiskey actually in, in moderation is actually healthy. Sure, but <laughs> you got probably. I, I bet you California. Per capita has the most like non-religious non-drinkers. Yeah, like you've got a lot of like very religious people who don't drink. But I mean, in terms of California, California's got people who are atheists who don't drink. The most religious people are in the South, or claim to be claim to be the most religious. Well, uh, yeah, but let me tell you, there, there's a lot. Of I don't think they're very religious, religious but I, you know, I, you know, that's just neither I'll, here I'll, nor I'll there. But they they're in the they're in those areas. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget. So I mean. My, my family's got a lot of Baptists and, you know, a lot of preachers and other stuff in the, in the family. And I'll never forget my, uh, so my Kirk grandmother, Capita, we have the most atheists, but my, my mom's <laughs> grandmother, my great grandmother, she didn't drink. And she wasn't somebody who was super judgmental about it, but it was one of those things that nobody really thought they should ever like let her know they drank. Yeah. Well, my grand, like my great grandfather, Apparently, you know, my mom and others had, you know, noticed he used to drink in his car, you know, in the garage or whatever, fairly often. And so one day my mom was doing something or other, and she went to go pick something up. And I don't know, something it came up. And my great grandmother looks at her and she goes, well, you didn't just say you're Roy's uh, granddaughter. He, hell, he kept that store in business. I'm sure they'd have taken care of you. And my mom's like, you knew he drank? <laughs> and she's looking at him her like. Not a moron, of course. That's what he. That's why I just he just uh, he just respected me enough to not do it in front of me. Yeah. She goes, "You didn't think I'd, I'd notice a drunk man coming into my bed?" <laughs> <laughs> now you think I can't smell? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Four hours and Anthony, Anthony you got minutes one there. Anthony, have yep. you got one of these yet? Or are you still without this? I can't no, I see it. Which which Glen Scotia is it? I can't see. Oh, fifteen years. No, I don't have them yet. They're the they're just not floating around here. But I talked about that um, with I think it was JD. Okay. Yeah. But, um, that the, the, it's it, it's one of the this is this this one this is a newer bottling. Depends on the store, Richie. <laughs> and um, it, it's definitely it's different than I remember it last time I bought one of these, but it's. Seriously, one of the best damn whiskeys on the planet. Still, it's just so good. The, the, yeah. the stores I go to, I can try before I buy. Most of the stores that I go to, on a good bit of the stuff, I can too. 
So that's where I'm lucky. We used it used to be that before COVID. Post COVID, nobody's letting you try before you buy unless you go to really small stores anymore. It's uh, it it it, it sucks. It really does. Now, now when I go to some of the small stores, the couple that I do know, and then, you know, they know me. I'm not gonna lie, I probably shouldn't drive when I leave some of those stores these days. <laughs> me and me and the owner will just, or like the manager, or whoever, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, I'll have way too many, but he'll have a. Like, he's like, I don't drink when I work. Next thing I know, he's he's four deep. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, same. I you know, like if I stop at a certain store. I, if I buy something from there and he hasn't tried it, I, I pop it right there and yeah, we'll I, try I, it. I jokingly, or if I'm driving through and I just take a look and I have something in my car from another store and I say, hey, have you tried this? And he's like, nope. I said, I go get it from my car and we try it. I, I jokingly made the comment to one of my guys like, hey, man, so how much is the uh, Joseph Magnus uh, if I open it uh, while we're here? And he goes, it's still 280 And I was like, I guess not opening it. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I... I learned after I bought that bottle that Joseph Bagnus is no longer a cigar blend is no longer worth buying. So no that sucks. Why not? Yeah. Um, so starting with um, batch 99, it is now. Um, so from batch 42 through batch 99 or 98, the predominant bourbon in that was Barton. Um, now it is MGP again. It's also not age dated MGP. Really? It's substantially younger MGP that's in those now. And um, it sucks. Like, it, it, it's not a bad bourbon, but at those $300 price points. Nope. Which one you got there? This one's 50 I was going to drink a 90, 96 or 93, something like I got 93. So those are the youngest whiskey in it. I think it's 13 or 14 years on the 93, 94-ish. Uh, 20, well, the oldest is 21 in that 93, I believe. No, I'm talking yeah. the youngest whiskey in that is 13 or 14. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, batch, so I don't know if she's put out a new master batch list, but like the oldest batches she has on her web, on the website is 99 through I think 110. And it's the first batch... I've ever seen where she doesn't tell you the age. Well, I heard she's, she's, she's not like as of, I don't know how long ago, but she's not, um, she's more of a consultant now. She's always been a consultant actually. Well, she was, well, from, so she wasn't the, the blender. She was the blender, but it was it. it, it she's she's a contractor. Uh, she's yeah. not an actual employee. That's why she does so many different works for so many different companies uh, at once. But I, I do think she did for a brief period. I thought she left them and then came back. But I, I know the current ones are hers because Nancy and I discussed that blend. But she was a little. It was the most coy she's ever been. Yeah. And also the most honest she's ever been because she straight up told me that like she used to never say that the Kentucky was Barton. We all knew yeah. it was Barton, but she wouldn't say it. She straight up told me it was Barton. Like, and mind you, we were messaging each other on a public platform that everybody can read. Yeah. Like I can send you a link and you can go read <laughs> Nancy and I chatting about this whiskey. Yeah. Um, so uh, she, she confirmed it was Barton, which of course we all knew. Uh, but yeah, she was telling me like this, that, and the other about like the components, the mash bill. But and I, I pushed her a little bit on the age, and she didn't. Well, even... I, I thought that these are a blend of Kentucky and Indiana. Uh, yeah, so the first Kentucky Indiana blend was batch fifteen. She told me. Now that said, I've got like a twenty-seven or something that's all MGP. Mm -hmm. so they weren't like she. They weren't didn't all be. They weren't all that, but. Um, the new ones, they've been in Indiana MG, and, um, Kentucky for a long time now, Yeah, they were, but they were, she was using 13, 14 year old, 36% rye, um, MGP. The only time she used the 21% rye MGP was for the 20 plus year old stuff. So if anything, she had over 20 years old, that was 21% rye MGP. Um, these new ones are 
predominantly the majority of the whiskey is it MGP again. Yeah. And it's 36% rye MGP. But it's not age dated. My gut feeling is it's six year old MGP. And if it's not, it drinks it. Man, I'm telling you. And, and the thing is, it's still got that incredible like Armagnac cigar blend stuff she's doing. Like she's still blending something pretty good. Let me tell you, I'm I'm a little I'm pretty mad. I paid th- almost three hundred. I paid three hundred bucks after tax. What, what batch was it? I got uh, batch one ten. One ten. Yeah, but so they're all the way up to like one nineteen, one twenty, or something like that, right? Oh, they're in the one forties. I've heard from some people. What? Yeah, I've heard a few people say they got like one forty two. And none of that's well, because they're using younger whiskey now. Then, well, they must also be just they, because there's no way they can they can pump those out like that at being 21 year old whiskey being inside of it. Uh, yeah, I, I, exactly. My favorite, and I, I'll I'll say it, um, is that impressed me, and I said it earlier. I'm sticking with my still Austin. Really. Um, for the whiskey, yep. Of the year, and my most surprising one for the year, right there. Most surprising, but yep. is that your favorite of the year? Right now, because I know say, you've got you've got some Elijah Craig, some barrel picks. Well, I do, but I'll be honest with you, that is the one that really caused me to go, wow. So that's better it, than the Freight Ranch uh, one thirty. You know, let me just say this. In its own right, yeah. For what it is, no, I'm not saying you're wrong. Yes. I'm, I'm just, yeah. I'm just asking for what, for what it is. Yes, and if if I were picking a few right now, I'd probably put that Corey's pick in there. I would probably put the uh, Russells from uh, uh, South Carolina. And I would probably put I'd put that in there, but um, right now I'm I'm really amazed and happy with the Still Austin. Cool, really I am. Now I did have something here just a little bit ago was another barrel product that was a pick that it was very very very. Very close, very close, but that's the whiskey that turned me back to Texas whiskey. That was it. That's the one that turned me back to it. So, so that's, you, what, that's what he's drinking. Well, you you told me well, you've got a top ten video coming up. So what are uh, yeah. Give us like well, the give us the top three of that list that you think are going to win before you do it. Just kind of let your that's bias. A tough one because I'm going to do it blind, but I'll tell you. Batch, yeah, what, what do you think the favorites are for you? Batch ninety three cigar blend. Um, I two XO for me. Wow, Heaven I, Hill Heaven Hill seventeen. Okay, that, uh, that's a, that's one everybody loved. I hated two XO for the price. Really? Yeah. Um, I didn't like it either. I, I've been mixing it in Coke, man, and I, I, I'm actually not even liking it in Coke. I, I need to find a better mixer for it. It's just um, this eight year. Will it really? You like it? I, I saw that and just didn't buy it. So I, I actually had it in my hand and um, gave it to another person. I saw and just, I mean, the price just seemed too high. So now, now you- there's probably better, but hey. And it, it's in the top 10, and I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to blind them. But the Booker's, um, the little book to the finish is going to be in there. Hmm. Um, that was not loved by a lot of people. So it's good still to Austin's like going to be in there right now. Of course, if I had to pick, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be Heaven Hill 17. But just, just because of what I'm thinking of when I think Heaven Hill 17. Um I don't know. I have to go back into this one to see whether or not it's going to make it in the top 10. I have to go back over a few because I can't just go off my first impressions with I I just yes. actually You're right. put out the video a little while ago. So that's cool. Um, while we were talking, I, I put it out um, on this. I wasn't going to put it out because of me. I, I, I started talking shit about other channels, talking shit about other channels. <laughs> 
Hey, uh, man, you know what? Talk a little shit, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, Jack Daniels. The most surprising one for me is Jack Daniels, the double barrel. Oh, man, you got a hold of that thing, man. We, I, I'm telling you, Joe. That is. The stores by me literally get one bottle of those lemon releases total. They're impossible to get. They're, they're at the point where, like, either the store debates if they want to sell it, put it on display. So, like, we have we still have a Koi Hill I can pick up. I just have to spend $6,000 at the store <laughs> and then pay $150 for the bottle. That's that's not even MSRP. No, no, there's 3X MSRP. It's ridiculous. Oh, I forgot about Hardin's Creek is in there. Uh, uh, Jacob's Well is in the I top. I had Hardin's Creek, man. That was like the best 10. bourbon I'd ever had on my first sip. And then by the time I finished my glass, I was like, eh, you know, I don't need this. It's a good, I mean, if I got one for MSRP, I'd buy in a second. Really good. But it's uh, not. Pinhook pin 10 years in that 10. Okay, cool. Um, I know I got a few other ones that I still got to add to it. I'm still thinking. I'm still, I got to revisit that Frey Ranch, that, that, um, uh, that Frey Ranch. Oh, uh, you Californians and your prices, Richie. <laughs> huh? I paid a hundred for my two XO, and I'm so mad I paid a hundred bucks for that thing. It's just not. Let's see. That, that was a two XO was bottle. good, but underwhelming. Well, for me, I I don't know. It, it's one of those ones when I popped the bottle. If if it made an impression when I popped the bottle, that's where I. That's. I, I like first impression bottles. And uh, that's one of the bottles. Like, like this one is definitely not a first impression bottle. I think I'm gonna have to go back and and try it again, and and just sit with it, let it air out. And that's the same thing with like Knob Creek 18. Like Knob Creek 18 isn't in the 10 right now, but I I still gotta go back to it because I know a lot of people were like, "All right, Joe, let's just do this. Gun to head. <laughs> Top three. <laughs> have to just spit them out. Go." That's just go, cool. man. Go. Top it's three. Yeah. That, that Jack, Dan scene. Jack Daniels. Get that gun out of my mouth. Uh, Jack Daniels. It's going in your butthole if he doesn't go in your mouth, man. Either way, you're not going to like it. Heaven Hill. And um, I'm going uh, I'm going with Old Faithful, which this ain't oh, it, but it's up there. 93. Nice. Okay. <laughs> well, if I had to pick right now. Yeah. yeah I, 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 well, you know, you got a video coming up. I just wanted yeah. to know who the, who the favorites were. Who yeah, if I had to pick those, well, those would be the ones. But I know there's, I, I, I would like to do a blind on them and and just which one stands out more. I, I can't wait for that video, man. I'll I'll be watching that for sure. If you do, oh, I'll and I forgot about my my Russell's pick, my Jurassic. This is in the, definitely in there. Well, that's my a Jurassic cool, that's turtle bigger, cool. man. A lot of people don't like to put picks, but I'm like. It's it's my top ten. Well, but if, it, if I, it, I, I don't see anything wrong with putting picks. I, here's the thing: if if you tell me, hey, here's what my favorite bottles are this year, I want to hear it. Now you could also put out a video and say, hey, here are the ten most you know best commercial releases. And and believe it or not, this this might be in there too. This is pretty dang good. I don't know if you've had it. Old elks are great, man. And Richie, I've had a 2022 George T. Stag in my hand. The this problem is the, was the price on it was enough where I wasn't leaving leaving the store with it. Trust me, I, it was it was stupid expensive. Um, so to answer the question, man, I'll be honest. This is probably the the year I've had the least special epic whiskeys in terms of like bourbons and stuff. Yeah. Um, and in terms of this year's releases, I've had probably again the least. I've had. I just. I mean, most of what I had this year that was epic was dusty old scotches from like back in the day so we're talking 2022 releases um for a bourbon i i think the 48 four by four is up there the um new riff sherry malt is up there um, i didn't get to taste that one i heard a lot about it well we can make sure that happens at some point, Joe. That that's that that's one that there's enough around, or we can definitely get you some a taste of that. It's it's delicious. Um, it, I don't think it's going to win over some of those other bottles you just listed because it doesn't quite have the 
age that it needs. Well, that's to a rye, isn't it? It's a well, so it's a it's a six year old malted rye. So it's not just a rye; it's a malted rye. So it's like essentially it's a malt whiskey. Yeah. And then they aged it in um, special custom made Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez um, cask that they had custom built to be the same size as a bourbon barrel. Okay. Because usually sherry or casks are much bigger. And um, it it's it, it's it's like having a scotch with rye influence with American aging and with new riffs kind of character. It's, it's really good. Um, so I, I, that's up there for me. That, that's a good one, Richie. The only problem with that is I got another heaven's door, which was a store pick. And it's actually, it's actually George Dickel. Oof. It doesn't taste like it. And I would know because I drink a lot of it. Um, but it and I put it in a I put it in somebody else's blind. They they couldn't tell that it was George Dickel. Interesting. And um I really like that one. And it's a cast cash strength. It's from it's a total wine pick. Yeah. So if, if I'm talking like stuff I reviewed this year, the 2021 Spring Bank 25 is in terms of like sort of 2022 releases, um, that that wins hands down. There's no other. Which, which one? The 2021 release, Spring Bank 25. Oh, gotcha. Um, let's just put it this way: it's the only bottle of whiskey I've ever bought two of that cost more than 600 bucks. It was 900, and I bought two. Which turns out, I actually bought the entire state of Kentucky's allocation. That's all <laughs> the state got. I got both. <laughs> well, I, I see one of those here, and it's a lot more than that. It was a it was a fair price, and then um, but the twenty I've also bought a twenty twenty two. I paid a thousand and fifty four. Yeah, I actually drank some earlier today um, in a kind of a blind flight, and it's really good, but it's not anywhere close to that twenty twenty one. So if have, we're talking twenty twenty two bottlings, it's. Have, it's, have you tried anything with Amberana that was finished in Amberana barrels? No, I've not had one yet. No, I've I've been hearing about it. And I well, let me put it this way: unless I had one over at Jeffrey Wax House, and I don't remember it was finished in that. Yeah, um, he loves it. He 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 loves that shit. And me, I'm like total opposite. Yeah. So it's like the worst thing I've ever tasted in uh, my life. So Jeff, myself, and Blake Benson were over at Jeff's house one night, and um, we had a pretty pretty good night of drinking. Um, let me let me tell you, Blake uh, brings. Oh yeah. Oh, I bottles. know. I know. Uh, I was there. I was there in Michigan. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I have photos from that. <laughs> you weren't in the photos, but I saw the, his selection. Oh man. Crazy. Well, let, let me tell you. So this was just, so Blake actually that day, he'd just gone to Louisville and just picked some stuff up. So it wasn't like he brought us like a Blake Benson, like special selection. Yeah. This was just what he picked up that day. Yeah, he is. Um, he has a he has a, a a vast collection, and I mean, oh yeah, I think the only one that might rival his would be Greg McDonald's. Um, and, I, and I don't know. Well, I don't you, know. I, I I I've seen so. It was crazy walking in that room and just like he's like, do you you know, there's Glens over there. Drink what you want, and it was like, wow. Um, I mean, I appreciate it so much. I had brought a bottle and I was going to take it to a friend of mine and all the th stuff that I drank, which for me, I, I was, I was hiding it in a one uh, fiftieth um, old Forester bottle container. And I was like, I was going to joke with my friend. I was going to give him a, um, what is that called? Blue spot. I was going to give him a blue spot. And so I was like the next day when I went back to Blake's, um, I brought him the bottle and I said, Hey man, I just want to say, I appreciate, I appreciate you sharing with everybody. I mean, you're just like, that's just crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. That, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's from that night. Yeah. And that's, I mean, there was actually more than that on that table. 
I don't know. I mean, that they must have barely been setting up at the time because there was it was full even in the back of that. It wasn't one row. Oh, there was more gates. Um, yeah, I'm not done. And so, yeah, this is so this is what Joe's talking about it by the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I brought him, I brought him the blue run, and he was like so surprised. Not blue run, um, blue, blue spot. Blue spot. And he was like, he's like, wow, that, this is for me. And I'm like, dude, you've been sharing your whiskey with everybody. Like anybody who walks through the door, you don't even, you don't even say, hey, don't drink that. You know, it's like, I'd probably be nervous thinking like, oh shit, all my whiskey's gone. But he didn't care. He was like, so giving. So, I mean, I was like, man, this is the, this is the least I can do, man. Yeah. 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 Blake, 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 Blake's he, an amazing I asked person. his friend because he had a friend with him and he was like, I, I was like, wow, he was pretty he was pretty surprised or pretty happy about the bottle. It's just a bottle, you know, one bottle. And he was like, he's like, you don't understand. We were at a store today and somebody and he was like, man, I want to buy that bottle. And he's like, he, and they were like, well, why don't we wait? Just wait till tomorrow or something. And he said he was going to buy that bottle that day for five hundred dollars. But he, he ended up saying he was going to buy it the next day. I gave, I came and, and gave him that bottle that night. So yeah, no, so no. it was surprised. I, I was trying to figure out why is he so surprised over this bottle of whiskey, and he it was just the fact, I guess, that he was gonna. Well, was gonna I mean, it. Mike's the kind of guy who just he's a generous yeah person. He he does very well for himself, and yeah. uh, you know, so and he likes to share that. But he also, you know, he's also one of these guys who does well for himself, who understands that, you know, giving a hundred dollar bottle of whiskey to somebody is a meaningful act to normal people. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, that's and, why I, you know, I was like, it's a hundred bucks. <laughs> like, like, like he, he's one of those guys who, again, he, he's successful, but he also understands the humility of like most people can't do what I can do. I'm so happy I can do what I can do. So he loves sharing, and he also understands that when others do it for share back, it's a good thing. I mean, it's just that, that I, I can't say more. I mean, he's just a nice guy. We've gotten to know each other over the last uh, year or so, and you know, he's just he's somebody I really enjoy. I mean, I found the bottle of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for, um, you know, I, I texted him. I was like, "Hey, man, I got a bottle for you," and I was like, "Hey, man, I know, I know you don't need me to, but you've been so good to me. I want to give this to you." And he's just like. I won't, I won't tell you not to. And then the next bottle I found for him, he like, <laughs> dude, like paid me like 20 bucks extra. I'm like, you have to do that. He's like, ah, you know, you have to do gas. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> He's just such a good guy. Yeah. Um, it was, it says distilled in Tennessee, uh, Richie. And this is the, this is the actual 10 year, but the only difference, it does say that it, it, uh, doesn't go through the, uh, Lake County, County County process. Well, the, and there, that's unusual. There, there is another Tennessee distillery that is now has ten year old whiskey that doesn't do Lincoln County, and I can't think of their name. But there is another ten year plus source of Tennessee whiskey that is not Dickel, and it's not. Um, you know, I just and, I just did a sample of that from. Um, I can't think of what they're called. Fantasies. There is another distillery down there. Yeah. I know what I know what distillery you're talking about, and I don't think they use that process, but I don't think they have. Um, the, they are just now, from my understanding, putting out ten year old stuff. Um, yeah, nothing older. And, but I think, I think they are around. Actually, yes, you can, Richie. I, you just have to check with the airline to see how much they allow, because when my wife came home from Florida this year, she packed a couple of bottles with her and brought. Back was it, was it carry on Anthony or was it in the um storage the, down below? I, I, it might be, it might be packed because I know you, you I know you for sure you can pack. I, I feel like it's a little shaky on if you can do carry on. Yeah, you have to check with them. It might be, it might be packed. You have to pack it and they, they stow it. But yes, you can bring so much on a plane. The four gate, four square. Sorry, four square. That's Here's the rum. Yeah, it was right in front of me. <laughs> I was telling uh, Dustin earlier, I was like, man, I can't find the, the rum. I thought it was here, and I was looking right at it. So That's what happens when we get older. So I was um, – <laughs> so I, I showed you earlier. So, so this right here, 
don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, but um, I'll, I'll Cause, zoom in. Because these are bourbon barrel too. So if, I don't know if you can read this here, but this. 12 years old. Nine-year-old, which Barbados, and you see here, it's four square distillery bottle in Indiana. This is actually a single barrel um, four square we have locally. Oh, really? Yeah. And so I was asking my guy there who is now an MGP employee exclusively. And he was kind of like, he just kind of paused and he goes, so I, my understanding is those guys, they don't have the best four square barrels. He goes, the guy who runs four square, I don't think he likes them. <laughs> and I was like, fair enough. So I didn't buy it. Cause that was, it was 80 bucks for a four square single barrel, which four square doesn't do single barrels. So I was kind of excited, but he kind of convinced me that I probably wasn't going to be excited about it. This is X, X bourbon cast, uh, distillation is port and something. Well, I can't even read that. Never mind. It doesn't say port. I don't know what the heck it says. Yeah. I, I just, I had my first four square sample sent to me about two weeks ago and it's, so I, I, I get samples, and the only samples I ever jump to drinking right away are ones that somebody sends me, and they just say, drink me. This or, is Barbados you know, rum. Yeah. So my, my buddy oh, literally yeah. just sent I me, it, and it now. literally just, he wrote on the thing, drink me. So I literally sent him a message, and I said, all right, let's get on, let's, let's get on a call, and let's, I'm going to pour your whiskey. And he's like, all right, cool, or, or whatever it is, your, your sample. And the funny thing is, this is hilarious because I did I, I, this guy like this guy sends me like random weird shit. Like he'll send me freaking Armagnac. He'll send me like um, wine stuff like that's like 30 percent alcohol. Like he'll just send me random shit. So I get this thing for it. And I'm nosing it. And I'm like, this is a very fruity rum. <clears throat> And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm nosing it and I'm going, you gave me some kind of weird ass arm and yak. I know what you did. <laughs> and I, I'm nosing it and I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm like, there's something different here. Like, I'm like, there's something. And he's like, uh-huh. Okay. So I, then I taste it. I'm just like, all right, it's a rum. <laughs> I'm just like, and he goes, I thought you'd get that once you taste it. I'm like, and then I was like, we've talked about four square. You threw in a four square, didn't you? And he goes, yeah. But then I'm like, damn, this is incredible. And he goes, so this is their like regular kind of entry level bourbon finish one. He goes, you can't get this that this year bottle, but they're all kind of similar. He goes, what you've got essentially there, there, Joe. He goes, yeah, you can get those. And I'm like, for 80 to 100 bucks, this is really damn good. So I'm, I'm I might start buying some of those, man. I, I tell you what, it's it's good. They they are. I mean, I'm hearing some decent things about that. I don't own any, but people that I've talked to and uh, a couple of places I go, they go, you you need to look into this particular one. And they, they go to the Foursquare. I don't remember. There's a couple of them they have up there. So but that, I don't that remember said, exactly. Foursquare is at the extreme end in today's market in terms of pricing for rum, which for us whiskey drinkers is like cheap as hell. But um <laughs> In the rum world, the plantation stuff is really where you're going to get like value for money, but you have to know what you're doing. So you got to find yourself a uh, rum Yoda. And so uh, that's kind of why I've got a couple people in my, uh, you know, um, friend list to know enough about rums where I'll be like, hey, man, what do you think? And when those guys tell me to buy it for them, I'm buying for me. <laughs> Uh, Richie, it's it's very nice, very fruity. Um, I get the ex bourbon cast. I I know I can I can taste the influence in there. It's 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 a nice. It's a definitely a nice pour. Nice. Mm. And now that's. Like oh, said, oh yeah, you know what I forgot to mention, guys. No. Um, in terms of whiskey of the year. For the money, oh, this your year, gas strength, yeah. The twenty twenty two, not the twenty twenty one, the twenty twenty two Buna twelve year. Oh, nice. I bought three of these, seventy five bucks a piece. 
Um, it's not my style of sherry generally, but oh my god, the quality to value. So as far as sherry, what is your favorite? So I like my I like my sherry whiskeys a little on the sweeter side, whereas this is yeah. more on the oaky side. Okay. Um, so I mean, for for me, I mean, when going twenty five year. Which is, I mean, it's an oaky whiskey, but it, the sherry notes on that whiskey are sweet. They also impart oak. It, it, I don't know how to separate the two, but this is like the oak and the sherry on this thing are together. Whereas that one, they're, it's the oak from the barrel. This to me just like drinks like there's like, I don't know, like it's like the sherry would have tasted oaky if they bottled just the sherry by itself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, th this is incredible. It tastes like there's 18 to 20 year old whiskey in here, and it's 75 bucks and it's cash strength. And let me tell you, you put about four or five, you put a, put a spoonful or two of water in this thing, it sweetens up, and the whiskey turns to the cloudiest, dirtiest, dankest looking thing you've ever had in your glass. It gets all that whiskey, that scotch mist. Oh my God. It's just everything about that bottle is just quality. And for and the price, you're not getting a whiskey that well made for under a hundred bucks anywhere else. Look at that! Ten more minutes, and you'll be at five hours there. That's when right? I'm gonna. That's when I'm gonna cut it off and call it a night because the dog's pacing, so I'm gonna have to take her out. But so that's fine. Yeah, but anyway, that, that that's in terms of like value. That that's my freaking whiskey of the year. I mean, admittedly, the um, the the the, um, the new riff um, sherry rye thing was. 60 70 bucks yeah but it's, it's also distillery only basically this joe you're gonna find this in your neighborhood for maybe 100 bucks here in the next oh, month wow. or so. you'll see it available so you, you know i i got a um old elk finished in sherry a store pick and they were good they were expensive and um i think i like the um sagamore sherry right better oh i saw you put a video where you compared those two didn't you yeah i, I saw that video I, I meant to go watch that one um i mean putting a, a rye against a bourbon you know it it just de it depends on or i don't know if it was weeded but um i i think that's probably not ideal but they were the only two like recently sh sherry well i mean it it's it's a good review for somebody who really wants a sherry cask whiskey. And, and, you know, one of the things I keep looking at with the American stuff, where I think we want to we need to have more conversation about, is like for example, Fourgate. Yeah. Fourgate likes to do finished whiskeys that are not overwhelmed by the cask finishing. Other companies like to overwhelm it, and I'd like to know what's the best heavy sherry. And then what's the best subtle sherry? Do you like these hibikis? Um, I mean, I've had a couple. I've had the 12. I've had like the Harmony. Yeah. Stuff. yeah this is the Harmony, I think, too, right? Yeah. Um, Harmony. yeah my Harmony was long ago. It didn't have a nice box. But yeah, it was. A, I thought it was nice. You tried it? I haven't tried it. Uh, I mean, again, like I had, the one I had was many years ago. Oh, um, gotcha. I remember it was just very nice, sweet, like orchard fruit kind of stuff yeah i think anthony's falling asleep in front of us here i actually i'm i'm sitting he's here trying, i'm like he's trying he's trying to he's trying to last the eight minutes or he's tasting something and he's really trying to well out. i had a little i had a sip of this and i was like that tasted funky what, what are you drinking on uh, now anthony? i'm still sipping i got a little bit of that lion's fire left and i'm like what in the heck was that? Sometimes when you have a drop left in your glass, it kind of gets sour and weird. It's not much in there, but I was like, what was that? And I'm thinking, was this something that I had left over? I'm like, no, I don't have any other things yeah. in front of me. So everything Sometimes else when you've like, got whiskey is over. It's been sitting there for hours, which I just realized here when we poured that theological and I, I put this CBP to the side. I wonder what the CCBP is tasting like now. Tastes like Elijah Craig. <laughs> Probably. But, yeah. It was just the weirdest thing. And I'm like, I'm sitting here like, oh my gosh, what hmm. is that? 
I don't know. Maybe it was a piece of onion from dinner. I don't know. So sometimes again, when you get to the very little last drops in a whiskey, it gets funky. What do you got there, Joe? Uh, this is something uh, I, I got off of um, um, Silverback. Shane. Shane was. I've heard that's pretty good. I I haven't tried it. I I've been trying to open it. It's a signed bottle. I don't know if he signed it or not. <laughs> I don't know who signed this, but he sent it. Well, hopefully you can read an S versus a non-S. If it's Shoot, I might there. as well try it right now since I've already... Go for it. Let's try this out. Oh, man. So, so today Mike and I did our first video of the year, which was uh, Spring Bank 25 2022. And it's jumped to number three on our list. Man, I'm telling you what, man. We've had a... We've had a December of just really awesome views, man. I I don't know what's going on, but it's it's been it, it it's been really encouraging. It makes us want to do videos, you know, when people are just watching everything we put out lately. So, cheers to anybody who's been watching, man. I really appreciate it because you know there, there's times you kind of think, man, it's a lot of work. This costs money. It is point. Yeah. Um. So it's always great when people actually watch and comment. I mean, it's just yeah. I feel like I need to comment more. I sometimes forget to comment because I watch a video like halfway through and then I'll pause because I want to like finish it and then I don't finish it. And then of course I never leave a comment and I feel like a dick. I'm like, ah oh, man, I watched like half the video. I should have. So, so then other times I'm like, I comment like on like the first thing that's worth commenting on. And then of course, whatever I said, they answer later. And I'm like, ah, that was a dumb comment. <laughs> but it's like, it's one of those things like people like to see that someone's watching, you know? You're not the only one. Richie. Uh, there you go. Whiskey iron. The, the tin is amazing whiskey. Some batches are epic. Some are just really, really good. Hey, hey Sierra's in the house. Look at that. Yeah, yeah well, she's I mean, been working. She's probably getting ready for work. Oh, she's getting ready for work. Oh, I'm just I'm, I'm guessing because, I mean, no, with she, RNs, man, they're always they, – they work crazy. Well, she's you know. at work because she works, unfortunately, graveyard if oh, she's there you not go. off. Because I know she finished a 60-hour week, she said. Yeah, I mean, again, they, they work all the time. They work weird hours. I, I respect I respect the, the – I, I respect doctors. I really respect nurses because, you know, they aren't getting paid that crazy, stupid money. They, I they, was like – I took a drink, and I'm like, what the hell? Is this a rye? And it's a rye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's – I like, wasn't expecting that. I thought yeah. – I, I don't know why. I didn't even read it. It's a rye. But – isn't that the thing when you don't expect something, you're thinking something totally different, like something comes out and hits you from left field? I, I don't know why I thought this was a bourbon. So I, I didn't read that's, it really. That's exactly. I took a sip of that and I'm like, what the heck? Oh, you got one too? No, no he's drinking no, no. Lagavulin, but this Lagavulin. I, I think I actually, of... I tried something with that label on it um, with, I, I want to say with Blake, but I don't think it was one of Shane's picks. Um uh, well, I mean, he Shane probably gave him one of these bottles because he had a bunch of them. He was trying to dump off on people, and he he got me to get one from him. Um, yeah, I'm going to say no. That's probably not what happened there with uh, with Blake. This is this is like a weird spearmint spearmint mint mixed together with gum. No, nah, the Ooh. thing I had, I think, was actually bourbon. I think it, but it had a similar label, like. It's eight yeah, seven it. years model A1. So I guess there's an A2 <laughs> somewhere or A3. Yeah. It tells you the barrel number. It's 121 proof. 375 mil. I had like a hazmat or something. It was crazy. It says rule your nest. Be an alpha with high proof rye whiskey. From a limited alpha series, handpicked from our finest barrels. I hate that whole alpha stuff. Be an alpha. Like, whatever. <laughs> Any dude well, who tells me he's an alpha, I just kind of want to walk away. Like, yeah. You're, since you're... this is distilled in, in Pennsylvania. Really? Okay. Some of the best bourbon ever made is from Pennsylvania. That's the H. Hirsch well, stuff, man. From back in the Dad's day. hat. Old Overholt. Well, we're getting A.H. Yeah. Hirsch, the original, like the, the stuff that people pay $7,000 for a bottle. Oh, right yeah. Now. That's from there, which I did try a sample of that at uh, Justin's House of Bourbon. And um, 
Knob Creek originated in Pennsylvania. It was cast strength. Oh my god. Knob Creek wasn't always owned by um, Jim Bean. Cool. I did. I did not know we, that. We got like two minutes, Chris, and we're done. Yeah. Anthony is like the after party tonight's gonna be Anthony going peace. Yeah, I mean, no after party. <laughs> get, that's it. I'm gonna yeah. take the dog out and get ready, jump in the shower, and call it a night. Maybe Same. Joe and I are just gonna like just throw back shots for the next six hours. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually got stuff to do today because I was gonna say tomorrow, but it's it is tomorrow already. We we, we are two and a half today. hours away from Ken starting another Lego build. By the way. Basically. Oh, that's right. I, I actually just saw that Ken put up the, uh, the the notification a couple hours ago. So. I, was like, yeah, I will say this is different. This is different than what I've I've tasted. It's a little. It, it might take some getting used to, but I don't think I could do get used to it in 375 mils. I was gonna say that that looked like a small bottle. Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, very small. Silverback straight rye, and it has a picture of a gorilla on it. Well, mm -hmm. you know what's cool that I saw. Um, I saw this on the New Year's. It's gonna find different. It. Yeah, so this is one of the bottles, but I just yeah, I show you I think, so if I can get the glare to kind of cut back here. Unicorn. But, yeah. Oh my god, why is it being so freaking glary? Is there a bottle called Unicorn Tears? Anyway, so I, I it's just not going to want to show the video here, but so this is um in this really cool presentation box. 168.99 and then they've got another bottle that's 135.99 it's from the first distillery in korea putting out a single malt and it's a 200 millimeter bottle oh wow <laughs> yeah i saw that and i was like that's kind of cool and then i saw the so then i started opening up the box i couldn't find like the size on it and i got it open and i'm like 200 millimeters? Nah. We ain't paying for that. Like, no. You guys are insane. Not at all. But anyway, we are going to shut this thing down. I'm going to take my dog out, and we're going to call it a night. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody in chat and uh, on the stream. Joe, thank you for popping on, brother. It was great to see you. Great to see you, too. Great to see you, Dustin. Nice to see you all in chat. Appreciate Always you. looking great. Appreciate you all. And we will be 